Oh my god, you're late! What are we gonna do? <laughs> hello, hello, good morning, and well, good morning from my side of the world. Good morning, afternoon, evening. Uh, welcome to another chit chat for part 5 volume 7, the long awaited volume. Oh my gosh, gang, uh, are you here? Uh, are you excited? Are you caffeinated? <laughs> they may have already heard me, so I'm here. Hello, yeah. hello, welcome, welcome, welcome. And hello. honestly, it, we are, we're, I'm so excited, you guys. And I know you guys were running bets in the background, like how long we're gonna go for. I believe, can you, can somebody tell me like how crazy it, it, like the bets are like... Oh, uh, right now we have... Is nine hours. Nine hours. Yeah, we're uh, there's a 16 uh, we're hour one. Any, from three <laughs> hours oh, wow, to eight that. hours. Okay, <laughs> well, um, we'll see. Oh yeah, no, dude, it's we'll crazy. See. Uh, so here's if the thing. I think the five, average... I'm gonna have the to average... start highlighting the pre-pub. <laughs> yeah, here's oh, yeah, the thing no, though. The average... Um, oh mm -hmm. yeah. Done. The average was nine uh, nine hours when I calculated. <laughs> Dang. Okay. So here's the thing that's gonna happen. Cause somebody said a 24 hour live stream. <laughs> I'm like, heck no. <laughs> uh, that is not. Gonna that's happen. not gonna happen. Cause first off, no, and second off, no. Um, but <laughs> but yes, we have to pick up to read today. <laughs> yeah. So yes. we, I have to. We're gonna we're gonna do this. Okay. Um, we have. There's uh, like the Bermuda Triangle of Bookworm today because today, unbeknownst to me, <laughs> I only found out this yesterday, but Trash released his latest video. So you guys, we have Trash Tears new deep dive video. We have yep. well, today's uh, chit chat and I'm not, I'm not surprised. it's mine day. <laughs> I'm not surprised. I'm not it's surprised. Mine day. He's on mine day. Yeah. No. I, I, you know, I never accounted for it, like for uh, for other people to release it, but this one's like, oh dang, I, I wish we could have scheduled it another time, but Part 5 Volume 8 releases like in two days, and we just finished reading the book, right? So mm -hmm. there's nothing really much we can do about the timing. So everybody just feel blessed that uh, there's so much bookworm for you guys this week, and... I'm just excited, and uh, yeah, let's see. <clears throat> so everybody, um, let's see. I know we are waiting for some people, but I think we got a good number today, and we are set to go. So people on the chat on YouTube, welcome, welcome, welcome. And also, I would like to remind you that I have posted the outline for this volume it's found in the description. So voice chat. The link. Yeah. So and for us. Yeah. For Discord folks, it's in voice chat. For YouTube folks, it's I put it on the description. So I know I made you guys wait a little, but it was for a reason, just because I needed to um, do stuff. <laughs> uh, very vague stuff, but yeah. Mm, let's see. What else do we have to say? Oh, yes. Today, before we start, we just want to talk about a little bit of just reminders. Um, again, uh, this is a purely light novel uh, chit chat, so all web novel uh, discussion uh, is going to be banned. Uh, please do not uh, talk about uh, include web novel stuff or uh, pre-pub stuff, especially pre-pub stuff. I know we're all ch uh, like super eager to get to uh, the stuff that happens after this volume, but just let's just respect um, all our viewers and uh, light novel people. We want to, uh, we want to, what's it called? <laughs> we want to uh, keep their their ears safe. Um, uh, just just to make it more fun on everybody and safe um, also uh, just just a general thing that I asked I requested during the live reads and the chit chats is uh, when we talk about uh, gramps let's just avoid the term uh, treesus and also what else was there also uh, don't forget that if you want to join us on on this discussion, you can always join my Kofi page. 
um, and you can just hop on in the server and talk to us and share the things that you want to talk about. Um, and finally, I am going to, this is a discussion that's going to go pretty long, but I am also going to um, make, try to put it so that it's on the, because lives usually don't show up on the front page. They show up on, um, on the live. You have to click on the live tab in order to find it. So I'm going to do a little bit of finagling with this, do with this video. So if for some reason you don't see it for a day or an hour, it just, it just don't, don't panic. Okay. <laughs> don't panic. It's all in good hands. Um, all right. So I think that's, that's the most of this information we needed to am i forgetting anything gang anything reminders or i feel like that yes. was pretty much all of it okay well, okay all right crazy and once the favorite good. part comes up we have to mention when when it happens that way we don't have to summarize that at the end oh yes, yes. oh yes yeah that way at the end we don't go like okay what was this what was this and yeah um and it's actually good for discussion it's actually really good for discussion all right. I don't know which one to choose. <laughs> you can say that's one of my favorite ones. You can also say that. <laughs> okay. Uh, I mean... It's stopping you from having one favorite. That's right. There's absolutely no rule in the Magpie universe that you can't do that. Um, so, all right. Let me see. <clears throat> Let's see. One more thing. One more and more thing that I want to make sure is to just uh, remind you guys that uh, the people that make this possible are the Kofi members. Again, I'm pushing it because I can, <laughs> because I hardly ever do it. But if you want to support this channel, support me and just join a, just a gang of really, really awesome folks, um, join us on Kofi. And thank you to everybody on the screen uh, right now uh, for, their, uh, for being a member. All right. I think that covers it, right? I feel like we've covered all of it. I think we've covered everything. And with that, we can totally, totally delve into this uh, discussion. Um, yeah, I am. I'm, I'm excited. So uh, a big, huge thank you to big, huge thank you to the who was it crazy and Liz Slepper who did the yeah. outline for this volume. So here it is. Woo! Check it out. <laughs> so the Google Docs has 16 pages. 16, 16 pages. 16 pages, you guys. So let's... And let's, my one line my was deleted. <laughs> I had one line on that uh, I, quote, to, on I that probably document, had to clean it up gone. a little. I'm so sorry. I had to clean it up a little. And so like just check for typos. I don't think I got all the typos, but we do what we can. And I'm sorry. You can bring up your line. How's that? I, you can bring up your line when it comes up. <laughs> 16 pages we'll and it's super dense. I know. But we really, really. No, crazy. Crazy deleted my line before you could see it. Oh, I see. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> then, um, <laughs> crazy also knows. Crazy is the arch scholar of the outlining. So he, he has. After, after me, crazy has a say. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> All right, so shall we get started? Um, a Sentence of a Bookworm, Part 5, Volume 7. Ferdinand senses danger on the horizon. Dark clouds hang over him, twisting and turning into a dense miasma of anise. Meanwhile, Rosamine prepares for winter, conscious that her move to the sovereignty is fast approaching. Her fourth term at the Royal Academy begins. She meets new faces at the fellowship gathering. Then something strange happens. Rosamine goes somewhere unexpected where she finds something even more unexpected. And that's only the beginning. How will the saint respond when an incident in Ansbach leaves everyone else feeling defeated? No matter what happens, I'll protect you. All right, that's the blurb for this book. I don't know if the wiki people cleaned it up, but I feel like it's spoilery, but also not spoilery. So they did a really it's good not job. That it's not that spoilery, you guys. I am excited. Compared to Ooh. other ones, mm -hmm. it's, it's enough uh, foreshadowing it's quite that tame. It, it's enough foreshadowing that it gets people excited without really spoiling. Where yes, it mm -hmm. goodness too. 
think it's basically the other spoilers ones... without context. <laughs> oh yeah, Those but the other fun. ones were super In spoilery. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. Just and... the best kind of spoilers because you are just wondering how the hell we get to that point. <laughs> For the real, right? Yeah. Because going somewhere could imply anything, you know. Oh my goodness. Yeah. 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 Uh, and so uh, thankful for uh, J Noble Club that did this. I, I love that she's like she goes somewhere and she sees something. <laughs> like I've never read a blurb that has that. <laughs> They're trying to avoid mentioning uh, Gramps in uh -huh. any situation mm -hmm. possible. <laughs> yeah. Um, also, uh, what else? So we have the the. the um, the description and it's actually a fairly short one too so with that let's just get started on this so the prologue i bet this guy's is gonna take like 40 minutes but let's let's keep it to 20 <laughs> the prologue one hour <laughs> <laughs> you guys i'm gonna try but it's a Ferdinand point of view you guys it's a uh, no it's not it's an hour it's I know. Already, like 12 minutes in i know but I, you know what i'm doing i'm doing my best best possible and i'm sorry early gang i will totally call you like say hello to you guys because i totally skipped over yeah. early gang reading early gang i love you <laughs> i see you i was reading your comments like i was reading your comments i know tangent i was like i would go to sleep i was like oh man i only have four hours of sleep i would wake up i'm like there's people waiting no they couldn't be waiting have they has the early gang started chatting the early gang has started chatting when i looked at my <laughs> phone at two in the morning <laughs> I know, right? Uh, so I, I'm it was excited. so chaotic. <laughs> I'm excited. I was so tired and I was still there watching Early Gang and Attack. So, <laughs> Early Gang, I love you and thank you for joining us earlier. All right, let's talk about the prologue. Uh, Ferdinand's point of view. So, Ferdinand has received gifts from Aaronfest in the form of Aaron's back season food uh, with Aaronfest ingredients and sweets uh, for Lady Letizia. And Ferdinand wonders if the loop of sending gifts can be escaped. Uh, no, it cannot be escaped because you give stuff to Rosamine and she'll return it and better. So, <laughs> Ro Rosamine is stuck. one of those people who you give something to her and she's gonna give you back like tenfold. Mm -hmm. And the thing yeah. is, he's also the same too. So. He's stuck for life. <laughs> it's a uh, feedback loop. Mm -hmm, I love it. I love it. And then we have Ferdinand. And Rosemond mm -hmm. loves it. Oh, yes, for sure. <laughs> now, Ferdinand charges his retainer Strahl with the duty of checking the delivery of goods. As a former Knight Commander, he did not have experience doing this. Now, remember that uh, Eustace and Eckhart, they have experience doing, like, both attendant and uh, attendant and scholar and soldier work. So this guy, he's not, he has no experience, but he has to learn. Let's get this started. Um, so he he learns oh, how yeah. to check Ferdinand's, this stuff. Ruthless. Ferdinand's retainers have to be extremely versatile. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, for sure. And then, um, so Ferdinand thinks about Detlin's decision to relieve Strahl from his duties for being too annoying and critical and how she has been removing attendants from her service who do not conform to her every whim. This is a terrible decision, but also I'm imagining a strategical one because uh, she probably doesn't want any, uh, any spies reporting on her. So um, based on basically the stupid excuse that they do she's just weeding them out and unfortunately that means that okay i'm sorry i've got to stop you there what's up that was not detlin's choice mm -hmm. that was all georgine De detlin's just like oh whatever they're they're mean so i don't want them here <laughs> georgine was the one yeah, who put I was in her head to say the same thing strategical and detlin doesn't mix yeah <laughs> she's being puppeted good point good point this is the lulu we're talking the lulu for sure yeah, good yeah. point. So uh, it's she just provided a very convenient uh, excuse by just saying like they're annoying. So everybody, who, how can you argue with somebody who just who doesn't use reason, right? So hmm. Although, I'm asking her, betrayal her, and incompetence. Yeah, her incompetence is very advantageous to us. So <laughs> yes, it's almost uh, like he's using her incompetence to mask her betrayal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so we don't know whether to love or hate her incompetence. Uh, at some points, like this volume just ca causes us ultimate headaches, so 
there's the Lulu for you. <laughs> well, the Lulu is such a funny character, honestly. Mm. <laughs> She's so delusional, but also just super stupid. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and she's like, oh, I'm protecting my purity, oh, but my at goodness. the same time, like, everyone around her is like, oh, no, yeah. you're not. I think even no, Gordon calls her, like, <laughs> he called her, the like, a harlot or something like that because she's been so shameless. Yeah. <laughs> no, she's so shameless. I and know. in her head, like, she, first of all, let's, the irony of, I will not give Ferdinand a hidden room because it implies that I am giving him a room close to mine. And like that's not gonna be good for my purity. But I am willing to go to another man's place uh -huh. with him, hold his hand, do all of these things. <laughs> just oh. oh my god, Deadlin! <laughs> as <laughs> much as <sighs> yeah, I know. She might as well be sitting on his lap. I know. Okay, <laughs> let's, let's, let's continue that talking in, about Jurgen Schmidt. Yeah. Oh god, finish oh, that. Mind. Yeah, go, go ahead. ahead. No, because I, I wanted, I I wanted to save the Detlin talk for later, but that's okay, like, uh, for the... Yeah. But we might not that's get the there. the very last chapter. <laughs> yeah, I know. So, but finish oh, yeah, your thought, finish your chapter. thought by all means. Please finish your thought by all means. All right, all right. I, I was just saying these are things that in Jurgen Schmidt are just extreme faux pas, like... Yeah. Socially, mm -hmm. you're committing suicide. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. That, it's, you're committing the fact that you are in a relationship with that person at that point. Mm -hmm. now, but Ferdinand she's engaged and a fiancé to Ferdinand. Mm. Now, Ferdinand invites Letizia to dinner, both because, the, because of the letter that Rosamine sent, instructed as such, and he also wants to probe Letizia for any information about Detland and Leonzio's actions. Because remember... Detlin is like, I don't like you, you can't be with the... Like, she just basically uh, doesn't want them to interact. Um, so and also she mm -hmm. says that if they do meet up, mm -hmm. they will fight for her hand. <laughs> oh, jeez. Now, Ferdinand... <laughs> like, <laughs> what the fuck? Yeah, She's the Lulu. <laughs> Ferdinand has not been able to gather much information due to him moving to the Western building in order to for him to get a hidden room. So yeah, he got like he got his own place. He now gets a hidden room, but at what cost? He it's harder to gather intelligence on Georgine and other stuff. So on top of that, they have like all this movement going on: the Lansing of envoys, the the uh, funeral of the op. So it's just been crazy chaotic time. Uh, so the only person he has to rely on for information is uh, Letizia, but Letizia is a child, so she doesn't go into those interactions with the mentality of these are people I want to get info on and just get some dirt on. So it's just like, well, they give me candy and they treat me well, so this is gonna come back later, unfortunately. But um... Yeah, that's that's what ends up happening. Now, during their dinner, Ferdinand tries to coax Letizia into purchasing Rosamine's recipes so that he has an excuse to go to the Interduchy tournament. And so she does, because those are also really delicious recipes. Uh, <laughs> and it's also mentioned how she changes the recipes to such a large degree mm -hmm. that they're unrecognizable, but yeah. they're still tasty. Yep. <laughs> yeah. They're unrecognizable from Ahrensbach food. Mm -hmm. That's so funny, actually. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's uh, it shows the true potential of what the food, uh, the spices, the fish, if you put it in like somebody yeah. who actually knows how to cook, <laughs> this is the reason. Oh. Who has experience combining spices from different places like mm -hmm. she does in her. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Also, a lot of people, a lot of nobles just aren't willing to experiment with their own comforts. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. For um sure. also i'm pretty sure ferdinand mentions the fact that this would be a um great thing to buy just because um it's more palatable for the odds of other duchy compared mm. to their lands and they've oriented food mm, true mm. true yeah that is true because lands and they food is just basically spicy spicy um spicy oh, and sour too true oh, that sounds tasty <laughs> Now, Thomas70 in the chat says, Magpie, I wondered here that if Rosamine hadn't insisted on Ferdinand getting his hidden room, would the loser and the mother's plans have been able to move ahead as quickly as it did next volume? You know what? We don't know. There's so many times that, uh, like, as we see in this volume, so many times that just her 
something something like derails the plans and the timing so possibly yeah Leon, Leon so was was uh, mentioning in the, the POV that Georgine is one to have plots within plots and be able to move pieces ahead when mm -hmm. one falls through mm -hmm. yeah so she probably had a plan mm -hmm. on like if this then if that. Ferdinand mm -hmm. doesn't get like before her Ferdinand got the hidden room she probably had a whole plan that we just never know because yeah. the circumstances weren't there. Yeah, so we basically saw plan C or plan B. Mm -hmm. Now, Ferdinand yeah. asks Leticia about what's going on in the Lantanib estate, and Leticia confirms that Raublut, the sovereign knight commander, and Leonzio have some sort of connection. Ferdinand believes that Raublut has ulterior motives for following Detlin's orders to immediately execute the knights who went berserk during the funeral without gathering information. Letizia also reveals that there is a door in the Lansonaver state that leads to the uh, to the Adelgisa villa, but it can only be opened by the Ob, so it would have been a scandal if Detlin would have tried to open it before completely dying the foundation. Now, Ferdinand, uh huh, go on. In this part, I was kind of shocked of the uh, irony. That uh, first Raublut was looking suspicious of Ferdinand, and now Ferdinand looking suspicious of uh, Raublut um, that they have ulterior motive. Oh yeah, <laughs> I'm pretty sure Ferdinand's always been like Raublut is weird, Raublut is suspicious. Mm -hmm. But those two men are quick to see everyone as enemies. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah true. initially but when we first met, it is his job to be paranoid, to be protecting the king, but. It turns out it's not so. Okay. I saw Ferdinand is kind of standoffish with Roblet, but he didn't really suspect him until Roblet really started reeling to have Ferdinand re removed from Aaronfest. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, Roblet has been acting in the shadows. Like, as much as, like, Georgine has been acting in the shadows, we have no idea what is going on in Roblet's head. And what he's thinking, what is he going to do, what are his plans and everything. Mm -hmm. Especially you since the last idea live later stream. on in the Leoncio POV. And um, Mike Pye, something's going on with the live stream. The, our, um, our box uh, for the for uh, our, our little icons is uh, weird. Oh, 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 okay. Thank you. I will try to fix it. Um, yeah, I'll fix it. <clears throat> Technical difference. <laughs> Discord having issues. I like the comments just like, oh no, Discord's having issues. Yeah, for a second I got <laughs> kicked out of my, out of the computer chat and into my phone chat because of reasons. But don't worry. Uh, uh, let's keep going. I'll fine. fix it. I'll fix it. Don't worry. It's an easy fix. Um, all right. So, Rablut being Rablut and all Rablut things is so happening weird. in the back. I know. He's so gross too. So let's continue reading. Um, okay. What's he gonna do to poor baby Hildebrand? I know, I know. Ferdinand decides... Hildebrand's in his little <laughs> pocket right now. What's gonna happen? I know. Okay. You're, you're getting close to spoilers. Yeah, Ferdinand decides this is a perfect time for him to start offering mana to the Foundation and to start teaching Letizia the same. Letizia, however, she's like, uh, she doesn't want to, or it's very hesitant because Ferdinand is, well, Ferdinand and Letizia is just not Rosamine, so she's still a child, so she uses the opportunity to ask for sweets in return. Ferdinand compares Letizia to Rosamine in his mind, pointing out how Letizia learns more slowly and wants more breaks. Honestly though, uh, Rosamine was an adult, so <laughs> you can't really compare them. Uh, and also her mind. rewards was more education material. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Rosamine was all for uh, educational, so, like reading was a reward in itself. So it was just a cycle of learning over and over again. You want to, if you want to read, you gotta learn. If you want, if you, <laughs> so, and how do you learn? By yeah. reading. Um, <laughs> so. Feedback loop. Yeah, it's <laughs> awesome. Again, the feedback loop strikes again. Yeah, and being an adult yeah, doesn't mean you want to learn. I'm an adult and sometimes I simply want to watch stupid videos on YouTube. <laughs> Who doesn't want to watch stupid videos on YouTube? <laughs> Ferdinand has unrealistic expectations of children now because mm -hmm. he raised Rosemine. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. yeah. And um, basically, he now 
compares every child he meets to Rosemine, mm -hmm. which let's all acknowledge Rosemine is a no an anomaly amongst children mm -hmm. herself. Like, yeah. she has Did the you... brain of an adult. Mm -hmm. How can you? Um, and and how Rosemine can you do that? is literally the yeah, Rosemine but Ferdinand's is literally too the ignorant. one person. Yeah, didn't like Rosamine previously call out Ferdinand for just comparing every child to her, mm -hmm. including Wolfie? Yeah, yeah, say that. Yeah. Yeah, that happened back when, like, Wilfried was still a spoiled brat. Mm -hmm. But it's yeah. more than that, though. Like, Ferdinand was isolated during his entire childhood. He never got to interact with any other child. So it was just this box and adults. And then when he finally grew up to interact with other children, you can't because they're all, like, kept away until they're seven. So he was just like, cool, you're you're uh, baptized now. Get out of my face. That's his only interaction with children. And so it's like, as long as they were quiet, that was a good in his book. So his first time interacting with a child is like a 22 year old adult in a child's body. And it's like, okay, apart from being like carried away by your emotions, you're an adult. I can converse with you. So then he just expects everyone else to like talk like an adult. Cause he's just never interacted with an actual child until Wilfried. And it's just like, Oh, I'm going to tie you to a chair. <laughs> That just sounds like a step away from normal nobility in general. <laughs> Honestly, normal nobility just doesn't understand how to raise children properly in a safe, sane, mentally healthy household. Um, children, the fact, just the fact that children are being kept away from their parents and they yeah, have to hold meetings to meet their siblings and their parents and it's like... That's just so messed up mm -hmm. on so many levels, but hey, like, yeah, that's, that's what life. they do. I, I like how Letizia is all like, uh, I, because, you know, uh, you going to the Manor Room Platform Hall isn't something that children do. Usually they yep. do, at least at the Royal Academy. Mm -hmm. uh, so she's like, I needed an adult, and Ferdinand is like, I am an adult. <laughs> yeah, the meme. <laughs> <laughs> the meme, I am an adult. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, uh, but, uh, yeah. yeah. So, but here's also, the thing. Mm -hmm. yeah. Go, Magpie. Oh, no, go ahead, because I'm going to move on to the next one. So, uh, yeah, okay, so, um, yeah, so what I was going to say is uh, that um, Letizia is like more smart than Wilfried, but also like acts like a typical child. So, like, she's really cute and everything, like, oh, she's yeah. so precious, she and is. she did not deserve what happened to her. Oh, no. Poor baby. Now- As much as I laughed when it happened. <laughs> no! Uh, <laughs> uh, settle down. Now, um, so, Ferdinand in exchange received some candy and the uh, interesting toy, you know? And he tries the toy, I mean, he tries it, he tries the candy and he hates it. He's just like, oh, I have to eat it as fast as I can because it's so gross. But he's also intrigued at how the toy uses absolutely no manner to expel its contents. But, you know, points out that the toy could be used for, you know, malicious purposes. Oh, yes. Did we ever find Epic. out how the we? toy actually works? Is it a spring or Probably something? I think it's one of those Gun like powder. Japanese uh, popper thingies that they That's use. Like a Japanese popper. Yeah. Yeah, but that would imply that they have something similar to gunpowder. Maybe they do have gunpowder. So we don't know. We no. don't know the technology that Lanzanav has. So I know. Like, I'm always so things. desperate for that any scraps of information. All oh, right. Uh, I know you're desperate for scraps of information. Then Patrick, what did you say? Uh. Rosamund actually said when when she got one of her own that uh Jap that Japan pretty much has that already. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. Ferdinand mm -hmm. examines the letter sent by Rosamund and is concerned that she did not answer as the question, "Who is your geduld? Who is her geduld?" Now, but we finally understand the context that he asked it of, and it's basically wants to know, "Are you are you still like?" like working on behalf of Aramfest? Are you still protecting Aramfest? Are you st are, or are you being like, like distracted away by other people? Like, I just need to understand what's going on. And if we're still good with the promise that you made that you were going to stay in Aramfest and can protect it in your way. Oh now, shit, Ferdinand, you should have said that then. <laughs> Basically, yeah. where are your loyalties? I know. And if he's using, <laughs> and if he's using shiny, shiny ink, he could have like just, just done it like plain out. Be blunt. Yeah, he says, like, Rosamund should have known the meaning behind it, but she didn't. 
You are but also the like, the amount of times he asked this question to Rosemine is astonishing. Like I think like at least three times he he's asked Ooh. What is your good old Rosemine? And all three times Rosemine's like, What do you mean? Like I think at some point he should catch on that. Rosemine does just does not understand the good old question. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, it just doesn't understand it. In, uh, the, in her mind, it's apparent that she's doing everything to protect her interest. Yeah. Yes. Okay. No, I was just gonna say, like, she views the gods in, like, in a very literal sense, you know, and, like, she's always had to, like, you know, do arithmetic trying to just figure out what noble euphemisms mean, and it's just like, you should know that, you know, like... You've been living in society for so long, you should at some point catch on. Yeah. Now, Ferdinand believes that something big is happening in Aaronfest. <laughs> you'd be you'd be right. Maybe the royal you'd family right. <laughs> is pressuring Rosamine similarly to what happened to him. Ferdinand has no choice but to wait until the interdutchy tournament for answers. Oh, poor Ferdy. Ferdinand. Oh my god, the fact that he was so on the nose about the fact that the royal family was asking something unreasonable of Aaron Fest. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like he knew. God. <laughs> From experience. From experience, he knows that when the royal family is involved, mm -hmm. it's something unreasonable. <laughs> um, I don't know how he would have reacted if he knew what Rosemine did to Sigiswald. <laughs> in the merchant saint, merchant because saint. that one um, was something. Like she talked about again. I'm still full on on the team that the royal family messed up by not letting Anastasius taking care take care of her and listening to his suggestion of locking her up in a book room. Yeah. Like, well, you're what right. What else do you well, do with her? That's all right. she wants. Fergie? But I, it's I a blessing it's in disguise, though, because it that like fundamental misunderstanding allows like later you know wilfried to get away with also insulting him and he's just like oh is this just how Aaron Fett people do this okay whatever <laughs> oh yeah i i think if if ferdinand actually knew what rosemine did i think every gremlin rampage that we've witnessed so far would pale in comparison to what he would do mm -hmm. oh, oh yeah yeah who who knows what this little punk was doing during that time uh, oh, during the Royal Academy? Like, no. oh my goodness, no, no. from the very no, I mean, little we know. No, I mean, let us not stray into that territory. <laughs> Web novel people. We know very little. Web novel people. <laughs> Uh, let us stop. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> Next chapter. <laughs> Next chapter. This is the first chapter of uh, Rosamine POV. So we have Dirk what and Bertram's baptisms. The temple is undergoing preparations for the winter. Rosamine decides that her attendants have everything under control and focuses on brewing more fey paper. During this brewing, an ordinance from Grisha arrives telling Rosamine that they need to start fitting Dirk. Bertram and the apprentice blue priest for baptism. Now, this is interesting because the, the Dirk is like the only commoner who is going to become like a noble. So for him, like everything he receives is like amazing, like wonderful. And whereas the other ones are like, yeah, these are cast off, secondhand, no good, because they're all come from totally different uh, perspectives. Um, so we get a little bit of that, uh, of a glimpse of how the kids are doing. Um, Grisha is insulted, however, by the fact that uh, nobles, particularly Bertram, is really vocal about like, just like, oh, this is like so old, oh, like I've had bad, like I was like a really like, like this is like, ah, uh, I don't like it. Um, so she tells him that, you know, he doesn't have to, he does not deserve better treatment. And please remember that his position is very precarious and that the office need incompetent people. Honestly, <laughs> Dang, Grisha, like, Grisha, she's a quiet girl, but do not, do not set her up. Uh, <laughs> there's yeah, certainly... No. Quiet, but brutal. Mm -hmm, yeah. Essentially, she's a menace. She's acting a lot like uh, Wilfried. I know. And we have a, a illustration of the... Uh, of Grisha in this chapter, like, just look at those eyes, man. Grisha, she's... Uh, oh my god, she, she is so menacing in this chapter. She like, has she, to. Mm -hmm. But she's, she's she a has menace. The, she has the pathetic meme. Oh yeah, the pathetic face <laughs> meme. Pathetic. <laughs> oh, oh, no, but like, Bertram's, 
<laughs> yeah, Bertram it, had uh, in his mind the fact. Oh, uh, yeah, go ahead. I said it was reality check time. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yeah. And one of the things that it's it's not just it's not just about him insulting Grisha and Rosamond's attendants who prepared all these things for the kids, but that's that's like the least of her concerns. The biggest of the concerns is if this Bertram Punk is acting out, that's gonna affect every other one of the name sworn and they're gonna go down uh, if if he's like found to be like bad you know so yeah he, he affects everybody um so it's like lawrence has to give have a talk with him too yeah oh yeah no like uh, bertram had a unreasonable expectations of what would happen to him mm -hmm. and he needed to be put on uh, like ever since he was placed in the orphanage he always had this superiority complex of wanting to Hey, I used to be such a great noble with such a great family. I don't deserve to be here. I don't deserve this. All of this should never have happened oh, to yeah. me. Mm -hmm. And uh, now that he's living through it and being like, Oh no, I have to live with the consequences of my father's actions and I have to be here. Mm -hmm. And um, once I'm adopted, I'm not going to get everything I want. Mm -hmm anymore i'm going to be mistreated i'm not going to be treated like i was before mm -hmm. yeah and like I mean, he's, he understands that in his brain he he now understands because grisha said this to him before he got adopted that this is a life or death situation if you do not act up if you act up and don't act correctly you will understand how much everything will hurt and you will not have a good life in the future and you could even end up killing your sibling mm. by doing this mm -hmm. you can kill everyone even her mm -hmm. if you do this so he yeah. had to realize that he um basically his actions weren't just about him anymore it's about everyone else's lives play on his actions and dirk's actions mm -hmm. Yeah. And he just needed to hear that he's just seven year old boy, so Grisha here actually gave done him a favor. Yeah. A reality check from an actual noble. Mm hmm Yeah. So uh Rosamine is stunned by Grisha's actions, but when Rosamine starts to say something, Grisha explains, you know, all that no Nomi just said that he has to remember that he'll be baptized as a ward. And now, on the day of the baptism ceremony, uh, oh, and by the way, before I go on, uh, I hope you enjoyed the different colorings that we got from all our bookworm artists. Thank you to... Yeah, we got three. Yeah, we They're got, so pretty. Yeah, David, we all have different inspirations. Yeah, David, it's really Ray, cool. and Noemi, really great. And then for the comics, of course, we have a little of something who unfortunately is sick and can't make it. But Alos, you're loved, you're missed, and thank you so much for your your beautiful uh, coloring. All the artists, thank you so much. Um, I wish to talk to you soon, Alos. You're so cool. <laughs> <laughs> now, um, on the day of the baptism ceremony, let's see outline. Okay, there you go. <laughs> On the day of the baptism ceremony, Rosamine discusses her future plans with her retainers. There are going to be redos of the dedication rituals early on in the Royal Academy, with Charlotte doing the lay noble ceremony and Wilfrid doing the med noble one. Rosamine is doing the arch nobles and archduke candidate ceremony and will be accompanied by her blue robe priest, so she will have plenty of guard knights at the ceremony. Now, during the baptism, Rosamine is shocked by the open display of disgust toward Bertram and Dick and Dirk. Aw. Well, because remember, like, all these nobles, they absolutely know um, that these kids are, like, adopted their wards. So they're basically, <laughs> they're basically, like, the sons of, you know, uh, what's it called? Criminals. Criminals. Yeah, criminals. criminals. They're lower than lay nobles. Mm -hmm. Yeah, in mm -hmm. their heads, they're basic. They should have been dead mm -hmm. in the heads of every nobles around them. Mm -hmm. These children should not even be alive right now. Yeah, they are lower than gray priests in mm -hmm. their eyes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> well, yeah, it's kind of, kind of. It's a sad reality. It's kind of like they're they're 
the recipients of something that they were not uh, they did not deserve but this is the ob's will and they can't do anything about it they just have to stew in their own frustrations and these poor children they have to live with that for the rest of their lives and have to prove themselves so all the best for them now dirk dirk is is i feel sorry for dirk but you know the trade-off is you become a noble and get the life you want bertram he's just gonna have to eat a slice or two or a whole pie of humble pie so um oh yeah yeah now this is mm -hmm. the the whole story bakery. this entire part of the story is somewhat perverted version of uh sins of the father oh yes yeah yeah mm -hmm. it would be really interesting if sylvester started a the culture of just like adopting devouring children in order to like boost the population of nobility yeah it would be good as that would if, be very interesting if they can if they the can problem find is a that's, a, that's a fits mm -hmm. that's a fits for a temporary problem as ferdinand pointed out yeah mm -hmm. it would be a very temporary fix in the long in the long run it's not if he continues that tradition it's actually going to be bad mm -hmm. in yeah. the row the long run, we already saw what well, not all children done. just like a above a certain level. <laughs> Hold on, don't interrupt each other, you guys. <laughs> um, Plamen? In the long run, we already saw what Rosman plans in the previous books for the devouring children to make them use their mana to teleport books. So, yeah, we'll see. Yep. Um, now, when Dirk has his baptism, uh, there's his metal barely shows any elements, which is, which is in, in, in well, it barely shows any elements, with only wind being a noticeable color. And as it is, it's kind of faint, a little faint. Uh, and Bertram's metal shows water and fire. Now, we will get a more discussion about why this happens later on, but basically it's because he is a devouring kid. So as a devouring kid, he did not get colors from his parents, so he has to, he only has like a slight bias uh, because he's a devouring. It will all be explained It will soon. all be explained, of course. Um, oh, yeah. Now, Bertram shows how grateful he is to Sylvester, by putting Sylvester's hand on his forehead, which we know is the highest form of gratitude and respect that uh, nobles can do in this world. So, at, yes. yeah, that silenced people for a time. Hopefully he continues on in that road and proves himself and not get everybody else murdered. <laughs> yeah, that was a very <laughs> smart move from him. Mm -hmm the fact that he decided to do that mm -hmm. because it probably like it's not just probably it got it showed all the noble population hey i'm not here to be against to god you guys i'm here to support the ob and do what and because he saved me i am very grateful for it mm -hmm. like he's expressing that and it's probably going to get him a lot, a slightly better treatment in the future because he did this. Yeah. I hope he's so. basically announcing he's not an enemy or competition. He is just supporting someone we're all supposed to support together. Mm -hmm. Yep. Uh, after the ceremony, Rosamine has to socialize and is bombarded by the constant rumors of her leaving Erinfus to become the Sovereign High Bishop. Oh boy. Wilfried steps oh up, however, and shuts everyone down. Now, Dirk tries to thank Rosamine, but is stopped by Bertram because they are in a social setting. Dirk is basically like bottom of the tier now. Like all those kids are bottom of the tier and they don't have like the same access that they, they had in the temple. They're in a different world. But luckily, Bertram is there to like remind him like this is not how it's done. So in a way, you know, they Bertram is, is kind of gonna help Dirk navigate this world that they're in which is good yeah as he promised Bertram, as he, yeah he might be like yeah, a, Bertram. <laughs> so he might be like a like a little snot-nosed kid who's like all like wah, wah, wah. but he I think he he's gonna be okay like he has he's yeah. looking out for Dirk and that's good that's a good so, sign yeah so great uh, lesson same thing uh, yeah. Patrick I think he had some misconceptions at first, but I think he's still a good kid. Mm -hmm. And even though he tried to reject Rosemine's uh, suggestion at first, I think he will be a, a good friend and mentor to uh, Dirk. Yes, we definitely hope yeah. so. 
I feel like Ber- Bertram and Dirk are going to stick together for a long time. Yeah. And they're going to support one another because they're the only two kids who uh, who had been adopted like this. So bas- I feel like all these uh, children who are uh, baptized under the OBS protection are just going to stick together a lot mm-hmm. and support one another mm-hmm. because the rest of the noble population is kind of mm-hmm. already against them. And yeah. doesn't think they should be alive. Hmm. So like, it's really cute how Bertram having noble etiquette and knowing how noble uh, nobility works and all of that is like being like, Dirk, no, you can't do this. This is against the rules. Like, please don't get us killed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Because like that's <laughs> that's now, how I interpreted it. I I do get it though, because when Rosamine Rosamine tells him like, hey, like. Bertram, can you help Dirk navigate the world? And he's like, no, this is too great of a task. But you know, <laughs> there, I think I think he they'll be okay. They'll be okay. Um, uh, people in the chat are saying uh, Bertram, Red Tempest, Red Tempest uh, says Bertram will be like an older bro to Dirk, and Akihana says Bertram and Dirk will be will kind of balance each other out. Yeah, this is my hope. I certainly do do hope so. Cute. And then they're such a cute. <laughs> And Cute then little pair Patrick together. on the chat, on, on our chat, the Discord chat, put uh, from Step Brothers. <laughs> uh, oh my just god! Become best friends. Uh, I can't post it because I don't have anything set up to show it, but uh, just know that it, it exists. Yeah. <laughs> um, all right. So next chapter: the Winter Playroom and other and another new term. Now. <laughs> Um, Rosamine spends some time in the Winter Playroom and is relieved to see the former Veronica faction children are still being treated fairly. The new blue priests and priestesses are also getting along well with their attendants. Now, Rosamine is informed that the crest that Charlotte wanted is ready. I remember from the last book, Charlotte wanted something uh, like a little jewelry or a pendant or something that would tie her to Rosamine even after Rosamine left, so it's ready. And when they hear this, Melchior and Wilfried both say they want one as well. They want to continue to keep their ties to a Rosamine, which surprises her. And it's heartwarming because even though she'll, she'll be so far away, like she can still think of um, her noble uh, step siblings as, you know, still close to her. Because remember, in this world, like once, like for example, when Ferdinand left for Aaron's back, basically everybody said like, well, he's gone, like he's no longer a priority. We're just like, so she she kind of felt hurt when people did that to Ferdinand. So knowing that somebody else is like these kids, like are not going to be like that because they, they asked specifically for like something to like, for their relationship to still continue even when they're apart. apart I think that's so sweet. And I think that gives her like some kind of comfort. I mean, they're so cute. Yeah. <laughs> now it is true. Also, and, and, and I, I, love, and I love like. Okay. Hmm? Uh, okay. First, uh, one at a time. Yeah, one at a time. So first, I think I heard, I saw um, Patrick, and then, uh, so Patrick first. Me. Yeah. I, I was just Patrick saying, I, I I love how uh, Wilfried goes a little secondary at this. Oh yeah, a little <laughs> jealous. Yeah. Oh my God, same. <laughs> Kadir. Yeah, I was going to say, it's like, I love how Wilfried is like, I don't love you in that way, but I still love you as a sister. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, Wilfried just goes on to, like, really ir- iterate to Rosemine. Yeah, us siblings, it works. Beyonce, <laughs> like, we would have never worked. I just can't <laughs> deal with you like that. <laughs> and also... Keep up. <laughs> Yeah, no, he can't keep up with Hurler. Like, he doesn't understand... Um, like, Rosemann just did not understand the implications of being engaged to Wilfried, while Wilfried, since he gained mana sensing oh last, se- has, last session, has grown up understand, <laughs> yeah, he understands now what the implications mm-hmm. of... Forget um, implications. <laughs> she doesn't understand at all, you know? She's just like, yeah. okay... Like, this is just how our relationship is now. And then it's like, when it changed, she didn't, like, try to change with it. She just kept it the same, and everyone else was just like, okay, you're the one acting weird. Mm. She didn't yeah. even acknowledge the change. <laughs> she didn't even acknowledge it. Yeah. She she literally thought they were still going to act like siblings. Yeah. Mm. And speaking when Wolfried, of Wolfried was not... putting in. Yeah. Oh. And speaking of Wolfried not keeping up with Rosamine, Ferdinand could barely even do that. 
<laughs> oh, Ferdinand is just dense. Whoa, Ferdinand and Rosamine are dense. Yeah, like, Ferdinand can barely no. keep up with Rosamine in general. Well, also, Rosamine yeah. just kind of viewed everyone else. It's just like, well, I can't view them as a romantic partner because they're just children, you know? Mm -hmm. To her, everyone's just children. <laughs> Whereas, yeah, and, no, and, she doesn't and the see funniest them like thing that. is, like, Wilfrey sees her as a child just because she hasn't gotten mana sensing. So, honestly, like, this was all set up for failure, you guys. This was all yeah. going to fail spectacularly. I remember in, and it I remember in part two, mm -hmm. I remember in part two, Rosamine talked down, like, well, in her in her monologue, talked down to Daniel like he's a child. Like, oh, he's like the little child that always gets bullied in school. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, Rosemine always there's absolutely uh, nothing. Yeah, there's absolutely nothing uh, false about that. Go on, Naomi. Sorry. <laughs> oh, yeah. Rosemine never saw people in a romantic light because in her head, she's still that like 22 year old mm -hmm. who oh, yeah. loves books, mm -hmm. but yeah. her body's like a child. So when people like romantically, it makes no sense to her to date like someone that is younger than 22 in her brain like now Fergie you brought I, up Damiel bro right what do you think about yeah. that no no I had to look it up when he first debuted he was 16, 16 which yeah. means he was younger than Urano when she like got mm -hmm. transported so it's just like yo I can like socialize and interact with this person on like a normal like conversational level where everyone else is just like why, why is this child infant talking to this adult <laughs> right exactly <laughs> No, even even when Rosamine was Orano, she had no romantic interest in anyone. She never even developed that back when she in her previous life. Yeah. Oh, I'm not yeah, talking romantic. I'm just talking like conversational. Like, like she was able to like oh. relate and hang out and more with Daniel up. as a character than he yeah. would be able to will for someone her same age technically. Dude, the fact yeah. that she could keep up with Ferdinand like when she just started going to the to the temple like honestly, I don't oh, know. She was turning she, heads even. Then. It was and, it was so really love, freaky that a and, child could do yeah. that. I love how yeah. the entire noble society understand Ferd enough, like enough to know that it's like, oh god, what Ferdinand. is this child that was raised by him? <laughs> oh yeah, like Rose. We can see it with every single relationship that Rosemine has ever had with adults. She is much more comfortable talking to them than she ever is talking to her. To uh, anyone that's a child, and it's really yeah, that funny. Had some, some huge implications with Lutz. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. it's really yeah, that was the thing when she was a commoner with Benno and everything. They they were all like, she knows way too much for a commoner child, but I'm not gonna look into it because I profit, profit mm -hmm. off of it. Yeah, <laughs> and some people even, even say like, sometimes I forget she's a child. Yeah. yeah. Well, at least, at least they forget she's a child and not like Florencia, who sometimes forgets that she exists. Oh my gosh, Florencia. <laughs> Francing, <laughs> Florencia. <laughs> Florencia has her hands full, okay? She's, I know. Yeah, I know. She, she's got her hands, hands full with all, with all kinds of politics. So all right, let's so, like, return back to the topic. I, I, li I, like how, I like how Florencia is all like, Oh, Elvira is taking care of her as her I mother, know. and Elvira and Elvira is like, oh, Florence is taking care of her mm -hmm. as her mother. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, Rosamine is but about in, to go to school. To... <laughs> yeah. Now, Rosamine is about to go to school, and I found this hilarious meme. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Ah, I forgot it. Come okay. on, Max, you huh. can find it. I'm looking for the meme, you guys. I am doing my best. I have a thousand windows we open. We interrupt <laughs> while she's doing this. Let's All right. Let's rant There's about the meme. how bad Florencia <laughs> is as a mother to Rosemine. Now, uh, Rosemine is about to head back into school. <laughs> <laughs> and we don't know what kind of chaos well when we read this part we didn't know what kind of chaos was gonna she was gonna be unleashed oh into the world but there we go um the gremlin is about to gremlin at school uh one more thing mm -hmm. we, we we need the meme of uh the arnold schwarzenegger having a handshake with uh this other dude <laughs> uh from commando uh, and, and it's it's florencia and elvira and and at the handshake it says not taking care of Rosemine. It's yeah. it's probably in the yeah. in the last chit chat because we talked about Florencia and Elvira a lot. So in uh, Florencia's let's... defense, that's because she is Sylvester's only wife instead of first wife. A second wife is supposed to yeah yeah yeah. But we talked about yeah. that last volume. So let's move on to talk about stuff for this volume. How's that? <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm just trying to gently guide you guys. 
<laughs> Come on, where's the meme, that guy? <laughs> I put the meme already. It's there. The, oh, I haven't put it. Oh, yeah, I see it. Never mind. <laughs> Sorry, you guys. Um, there's a yeah, meme. Yeah, it takes YouTube a little while to catch no, up. No, 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 no. Yeah, it's, I'm a done. There we go. <clears throat> but a 40 second delay. All right. So. A pile of second, yeah. Rosamine prepares for the Royal Academy and the dedication at the Royal Academy. Uh, upon arriving there, Lizalita is assigned as her adult attendant in place of Riarda, both so that, uh, let's see, both so that she can learn to socialize with sovereign nobles and to let Brunhild focus on dealing with the royal family. Now, once the second year students arrive, Rosamine takes them to the gathering spot in order for them to gather materials and allow the students to replenish the gathering spot in order to get more divine protection. So they have to learn how to pour blessings and mana into the ground. She's not going to be around next time to do this for them, so they have to learn. Plus, it's going to help them get more divine protections. Um, now, as they are flying in their high beasts, Rosamine notices the, um, the magic circle that only she can see see right and yep. she uh she decides to fly up all the way up with uh, judith and she's like well how would how could one activate this or how can we do this to like how can i use this because she really really wants to get the the gutter side but she can't find a way like she doesn't know what the next step the instructions were too vague um well, but yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Bum it away. <laughs> yeah, right. She, her plan. <laughs> yeah, her so. plan was to throw a face stone at it. <laughs> throw like, like yeah, a bunch of face stones. A bit at later. It. Mm -hmm. Let's. <laughs> <laughs> now, throw Rosamine's... face stones at it. That's so <laughs> funny. I know. Now, Rosamine's blue blue robe priests and priestesses arrive, and Hartmut takes control of the scholars, allowing Rosamine time to read. Good old Hartmut. Thank you for helping our baby get some reading time. Okay. Oh, yeah. uh, what's up uh, i forgot uh, if it was um i think it's judith that was in the um, in inside the, the high beast with yep. brother's mind mm -hmm. yeah doesn't like rosemine at some point ask you judith hey what do you think i should do to yeah, activate a magic circle <laughs> that is and she's like uh, i don't know pray yeah <laughs> like, <laughs> and, it, and no that's no the, no the question like how did the question was this She's the one that's known for like prayers and stuff at the Royal Academy. Crazy. Which is like, I don't know, maybe I'll throw <laughs> face stones at it. But no, <laughs> then just do that for retainers. It's like, you know what? You should probably go and pray hmm. to the. And then that's when she was like, oh, I should probably contact the royal family. I know. To Crazy. warn them something Didn't might Rosamine... happen. Crazy? Wasn't Rosamine's question like, where is a good place to pray? Wasn't that yeah. a question? Yeah, something like that. Yeah, that's that, that was what she said. Sorry, yeah. Crazy. Uh, I know you were trying to talk earlier. Oh, yeah. I was going to say the same. Oh, okay, okay. Oh, sorry, Crazy. Yeah. J Judith said, uh, the farthest hall. Yeah. Mm hmm Yeah. And since the the, the ceremonies for Mana is going to happen in farthest hall, she had to contact the royal family to mm -hmm. be like, hey! Just a little warning. Something weird might Something happen. Something might happen. <laughs> yeah. I also love how just like Rosamine just like triggered you this fear of height, which you think a knight would be resistant to. Well, maybe it was just that insanely high. Nobody has ever had like the need to fly like into the stratosphere or something, which is which is something that I oh believe Rosamine had to go all the way up there. It might Although be something related to the fact that her Sorry. high beast is huh? enclosed. And all of the other high beasts are rideable, so you have to deal with the feeling mm -hmm. air. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now let's talk about the fellowship gatherings for the fourth year. Um, so Bertil starts serving Rosamine during their stay at the Royal Academy. The advancement ceremony concludes without any issues and all the Archduke candidates move to the fellowship gathering. During their greeting with Hildebrand, the prince expresses his eagerness to participate in the dedication ritual which Rosamine sees as commendable. Rosamine meets a Klassenberg first year uh, candidate named Jean Tianen, uh, and Hanalor agrees to engage exchange books again, while Ortwind wants to have more joint research with Ehrenfest. There are a lot of new Archduke candidates this year due to findings related to obtaining more divine protections. A lot of the new candidates uh, were adoptions from the Archduke's extended families. 
Now, rumors about Rosamine joining the Sovereign Temple are flying around. Uh, now, this is a part I really, really found super funny because like some really impertinent girls from Lower Duchies, they were like saying things like, oh, like you're going to become the, the temple like high priest or a high bishop. Um, but Rosamine quashed them and says that if she were to join the temple, then the candidates from all of the other duchies would also participate. <laughs> and even says, like, I look forward to the time when you and I can participate in the temple together. <laughs> oh my god, she freaked them out. Mm -hmm. She put them in their place. Yes, yes. There's some things here that I don't understand. Mm. First is... Yeah. Why is that low, those lower duchies can speak so negatively in front of higher duchy, in this case Erenfest, when uh, Rosemine cannot do the same with other higher duchies like Dungo Felger and uh, Klassenberg and so on. It's oh, like Rosemine definitely a does. strange duality mm -hmm. to me. And the second thing is, why do they think that this is even remotely okay to go and spread those rumors um probably because they're already so low ranked and so disgraced that a little more disgrace wouldn't even change anything <laughs> or even be noticed <laughs> honestly they're using noble euphemism that is translated by rosemind so it's technically seen as a jab just the same way as rosemind every time she talks to anyone above her station yeah. And is like, I'm gonna be a little snarky, and she jabs harder than they did there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And like, also, just like how Detlin was insulting Wolfried to his face, and he didn't even realize it. And, yeah, yeah and... but then Richard <laughs> wouldn't uh, scold Ron's mind when uh, in the interrogation after the Ternish Befallen, uh, she used euphemism to tell everybody that they are idiots. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but, but but yeah, but also it's like their reputation is like a negative thousand. So what's an extra minus five? <laughs> so honestly, it probably I, I, as the, oh. I'm sorry. I I, I oh, saw it I, as uh, you okay? Oh yeah, go. I, I'm sorry. I, I saw it as uh, all the rumors coming from the Archduke conference where Aaronfest kept getting called into talk to the royal family and some nefarious people were saying, oh yeah, Rosemine's going to join the, the Sovereign Temple. That's why people were thinking, oh yeah, she's going to be the high, the high bishop. And they thought, well, the temple's such in such low standing, we can make fun of her for this. And that's why Rosemine had to do a little bit of bullying herself to be like, listen, you, <laughs> this is what's going to happen if that actually happens. Aaron Spock. <laughs> oh yeah oh dang Fergie says I went to the washroom and discovered I forgot to turn off the burner on the stove could have burned the house down ah be careful oh my <laughs> Ooh, that would have been bad that would have been bad Oof. oh thank goodness for a break um stay safe Fergie okay so it's fine there's only just a bunch of smoke in the house <laughs> <laughs> only just a oh, bunch goodness. of smoke Oh, man. Oh, goodness, Fergie. <laughs> Fergie. Just an explosion. <laughs> no big deal. Oh, what the frick? Speaking of explosions, <laughs> Rosamine has made uh, quite a splash in the gathering for this year. Um, so afterwards, after the gathering, Rosamine is informed of the order in which the dedication rituals will take place, with her leading the candidates and archnobles on the first Earth Days, and the med, med nobles and lay nobles happening on the next Earth Days. Now, here's a funny thing though, because this she was informed of the order because it wasn't she that went to the meetings, it was other people. <laughs> um, yeah, it was... Mm -hmm. Hartmut Damuel, basically all uh, Hartmut Damuel and Jellica did go, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and Cornelius. All her adult retainers mm -hmm. went, yeah. basically, is, is what I understood. Yep. And um, Rose find, finds out that uh, Damuel and Hartmut fought in front of the well, royal it's Cornelius. Cornelius. Cornelius and Hartmut. Oh no, Cornelius! Mm -hmm. Cornelius and Hartmut fought in front of the royal family. Mm -hmm. basically on different fronts to protect Rosemite's interests. Mm -hmm. And it was very funny because <laughs> they aren't even apologetic about it. <laughs> <laughs> Those kids. Oh my uh, gosh. And again, uh, we have illustrations I saw that for so these. Adorable. Yeah. 
And again, we have illustrations for these. Thank you for the um, for the beautiful artworks, peoples. Also, uh, one of the things that I found really funny is that, like you said, like neither of them was apologetic about their their uh, their attitudes. Um, but you know it makes sense like like cornelius looking out for her as his as the older brother and hartmut as like her trusted retainer you know so the, neither of them was were able to, and they did this scene in front of royalty which is the worst thing that could happen like they were fighting and bickering in front of royalty you guys <laughs> oh yeah yeah i yeah. love a galantine's reaction to that oh yeah yeah <laughs> So we have. Oh, it was so funny. Mm -hmm. In front of royalty. In front of like, royalty. It's good thing the royal family is so used to the insubordinates of these, uh, uh, specifically <laughs> Aaron Fest, because otherwise this could have gone so bad for everyone. For real. <laughs> also, there's also Sigiswald and um, not no, actually no, Anastasius's retainers kind of went rogue recently. Mm -hmm. In order to like make him the new next king, oh. so it's like they're a bit used to like zealot like subordinates, so they're like, okay, this yeah. is normal. It's it might yeah, but you don't want to you don't want to be the outlier. You just these kids they were just being troublemakers for their lady, unfortunately. Now let's talk about the first week of classes, and again we have illustrations for that one. I'll I'll show them in a little bit, but let's first read the outline. Rosamund's retainers help everyone study before classes. Meanwhile, she decides to return to her room to send a message to Eglantine, warning that something unexpected might happen during the dedication ritual. Because remember, thanks to Judith, she realized that, hey, if you pray at the furthest hall, the circle might be activated, some craziness might happen, so I'll just warn Eglantine that something might happen. Um, yeah. Meanwhile, Rosamine manages to pass her classes effortlessly, of course. What do you all expect? Uh, with Hanelor mentioning how skilled she is at brewing, and Wilfried pointing out that normal candidates don't do their own brewing. That's why you have scholars. Uh, which is like, ah, uh, really? Again, noble misunderstandings here, because all she knows is what she learned from Ferdinand, and he used to just brew for himself. It was his hobby, his passion, his love, and <laughs> so that's just a natural result of, um, of being taught by Ferdinand. She doesn't know what scholars are for. They're there to do your brewing for you. <laughs> Ferdinand was never allowed to delegate. Oh, that's true. That is true. Rosemind, in her head, she, I think in her head, she thinks scholars is only for information and making mm -hmm. her books. <laughs> yeah, information gathering <laughs> and book making. <laughs> She's never using her scholars for the right. But that's also not true because Engl not Eglantine, um, uh, uh, what was the RGD candidate from uh, Drainwich that oh, married uh, Prince Prince? Uh, yeah, Adolphine. She does. She Adolphine, also yeah. Does Adolphine her. also uh, likes to brew for herself. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But again, this is well, the, that's your Dutchies culture. Yeah, this is that's a Dutchies yeah. culture. But because they are all scientists, so they they love that stuff. It's it's their hobby too. That, all, that actually points out to another problem with Aaron. Like all right. Um, yeah. Um, I'm sorry. So I'm just... I think. Uh, <laughs> I I think. Who was it that said it? Crazy. I think Crazy said it, but it was a really cool, really really cool insight where Ferdinand couldn't delegate, and Rosemine did didn't have a choice but to delegate. Mm. Yeah, I said that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, sorry, Kadir. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, so, let's see, <clears throat> where were we at? Who needs to mute? Ah? So, I, I heard some noises, unfortunately, you guys, if you're not talking, um, mute yourself. I had to mute somebody on my end just because I got some noises, so, um, yeah, if, yeah. <laughs> All right. What's wrong, my thing? I got it. I, well, I, I don't hear it anymore because I muted it on my my own on my end. So, 
Oh, right. yeah. That, that, that was a good comparison between Rosamine and Ferdinand. Ferdinand was forced to never delegate, and Rosamine is forced to delegate. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. The trust That's issues. That's because their workloads are so different. Mm -hmm. No wonder Rosamine is so good at dinner. anything secret. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> that is true. Now, oh my goodness, where am I? <laughs> Alright, so Rosamine Man passes her classes, then she takes the first years to have them registered at the library. There, she is informed that Hortensia has not been seen, seen since last year under the excuse that she has fallen ill. Ooh. So, it's been since last autumn. I think that was when they heard that she was... Um, she took ill and since then she hasn't been able to return so we don't know what's happened it's so it's weird. sus we don't know but we it's we so like sus, especially yeah. we oh. theorize that that something might bad might have happened to uh hortensia back in part five volume five and we don't get a confirmation whether she's turned into a face stone or not but we haven't seen or seen her since we and in this whole book we don't hear about her again so we can only assume the worst has happened now yeah especially when healing magic and drives are yeah and also yeah also with the way that the her chapter ended mm -hmm. when she asked about the the um the flowers mm -hmm. yeah it's also so, who um she was uh, yeah. with her husband. Tried and basically. Being... Like it ended. Hold on a second. Don't um the muse, please. <laughs> oh, do you want me to talk or yeah. her, her the to muse? Finish? Go ahead. Oh, okay. Sorry. Yeah. Um, it's just even what she the last person she was seen with was was with her husband Raul Boot, but he's been very suspicious lately. Mm hmm. For real. Yeah. Like, they, it ended so suddenly after she said that to Raubla mm -hmm. that we don't know what happened to her, but we know that she's not in a good place. Or if she, if she is still alive, in grave danger. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, um, Rosamine is troubled by the fact that uh, the Harspiel instructor expected her to give, give a blessing because she has to pass a music class. Uh, and the only way that she will pass is if she gives a blessing. Other kids, they don't have to give a blessing when they play, but she does. Uh, her retainers point out that having her perform blessings might be a way for her to be viewed as special and to give credence to why the royal family will choose to adopt her. Uh, also, Rosamine receives a letter from Raymond that is from Ferdinand. Letizia wants to purchase the recipes for the food that she sent, and Rosamine responds that she's looking forward to the interduchy tournament. She's surprised that there is no secret message and that he did not ask about her scheduled again, but expects that she will be asked directly during the tournament. Oh boy. Well, uh, well. Oh gosh. <laughs> now, the next day, Rosamine oh, goes no. to her brewing class. <laughs> Oh, no. uh, the, and she has to make know. a synchronization potion. Now the other oh, students, <laughs> they're weirded out when she does not know the purpose of the potion other than to view the memories of criminals. Hersher gets fed up with her lack of knowledge and tells Rosamine to ask her mother for more details about the synchronization potion, while the other students ask her where she has experienced mana mixing and with who. Oh <laughs> and she responds that she what? has mixed mana with Hanalor, causing everyone Lady to be surprised before she's quickly corrected on what happened. Oh my gosh, you can Oh my and god. Starts. <laughs> mm. All the misunderstandings, you guys. <laughs> the misunderstandings. Oh my gosh, Rosemine, this just shows the failure of Florencia and Elvira and the her nobly educating Rosemine because in their head, Rosemine's such a little pure child. <laughs> no way does she know that this happens. Like, there is no way um, Sylvester will not learn of this happening. I, I want to hear oh like their Florentia's and Elvira's reaction to the reports. 
Oh my god. <laughs> because They're dropping yeah. dead. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Especially because she did this in the presence of all her fellow Archduke candidates of her year. <laughs> like they now Wait, know. It was No, it was more than Archduke candidates. It was like the entire grade year. Uh no, I think this was uh or was this the entire <laughs> Oh gosh, this was a this whole was scholar her, course her of her yes, year. Yes, this was the oh whole. Gosh, no, it was so more than. <laughs> it was more than the whole scholar course because Hanalor was there, and she's not taking the scholar course. Oh, that's true. So no, this the is entire a grade. Class. This is the, her grade. Oh yeah. my goodness. Yeah. Oh my oh, goodness. Yeah, there, there were a few. Uh, this is worse than I thought. <laughs> it's that's why like, it was oh, taking so out It's like um, uh, Rosemine was taught by James Main from the old Top Gear when he was starting to explain that he used tampons to clear the uh, cylinders of his motorcycle mm -hmm. and not knowing that there can be used other uses for them. <laughs> oh shit, here we go. Yep. <laughs> now, now, now we need another, we need a meme of Florencia and, and uh, Elvira saying like, oh, I think I forgot something. <laughs> and he's like, if you, oh, if, yeah. well, if you forgot something, like, it must not be important. By the way. <laughs> I'm missing. Oh, that, that it must not be important. And then oh, we cut to no. a picture of forgetting to teach Rosemine set said. Oh so, shit. So I'm just sitting uh, in the my absolute <laughs> Okay okay, fine, you go first. Mike Pat, you accidentally skipped to a wrong image. Oh yeah, I did. Uh sorry, go on. So I've just sent in the voice chat my absolute favorite meme from that week of the pre pubs. Oh yeah! It, oh I, yeah! I'm putting it on the on. I'm putting it on right now. <laughs> yes, I remember that. <laughs> <laughs> oh oh yeah. no! Like, very fitting. Everything about this is perfect. <laughs> <laughs> the Sylvester oh, kid, Lord. all right. <laughs> I remember, I remember voicing <laughs> Wilfried for this part. Oh yes, you guys. Lady, hear the Lord. I know, you guys. If you if you haven't I been at the read alongs, you guys, you're missing out. We've had some beautiful jewels <laughs> and gems here of reading out loud these chapters. <laughs> oh think? hell yeah! This chapter was split in two because it was so long. Mm. Actually, if I remember correctly, yeah. <laughs> 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 I, I I had to walk away from my computer when I was reading that. <laughs> it was so awkward. Yeah. It was so <laughs> I had to read it. Oh my god. The, Me and Patrick were dying. The like, we were all dying embarrassment. inside. The second hand embarrassment, oh, yeah. you guys. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and I remember the comparison I made. That's just like the I said it's like that's like mistaken like a condom for like just like a blow a balloon. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> Uh, and no me oh my shit, as I, usual. I wasn't, I wasn't there that for that like, read along. Oh, so I, was, oh, wow. I, I had a fantastic time uh, catching up on it when I was at work. <laughs> was so oh my gosh, yeah. <laughs> oh no, the long was quite something when we read it. It was uh, my secondhand embarrassment as I was reading the lines was <laughs> super funny. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh right. yeah, you were the one that had to read them. Oh yeah. Yeah, I have to read Rosemite's responses to oh, this. Oh yes, like, yes, yes. So <laughs> it's... I could hear you blushing. <laughs> <laughs> now, Rosamine, after finish all, finishing all this and realizing that there's a lot about mana and being died that she doesn't understand, because she's also worried, like, oh my gosh, like, did Ferdinand die me? What does that mean? And so Herschel has to like explain to her like no usually when people die each other like they return to their normal color so she's like oh I'm so glad I'm so relieved I'm not died <laughs> only to <laughs> later oh, <it's> <laughs> oh my machine. god <laughs> and I kept thinking out loud during the entire in front of the entire grade yeah, oh, well, yeah. <laughs> I think, I think the, the, the died by Ferdinand part is, is internal. Otherwise, I would have been too much, you guys. I would have been too much. But the oh, fact yeah. that she was oh, visibly God. relieved. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It looked visibly like everyone had to like in their head be like, <sighs> what did Ferdinand do to her? And also, um, Hanalor just is getting more and more material for her uh, eventual fanfic <laughs> about them. You know something Kimchi in the chat says? The fact that Hanalor forgave her for embarrassing her like that, that's just so wonderful. Hanalor is too good for Rosamine. Yeah. <laughs> Honestly, she oh, is. Yeah, surely, oh, my surely God. Surely it will come later. Yeah. 
Also, one of the yeah, things Rosamind is most familiar. known for is romance novels. So everyone sees everything Rosamind does in a romantic light. <laughs> oh yeah, like, Patrick. It's not oh, even a romance thing. novels. Right. <laughs> Patrick. I was just saying, revenge comes later. <laughs> revenge yeah. comes later. Yeah. I, uh, oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> Amazing revenge. Amazing revenge. Wait, what do you mean? Wait, if... wait revenge on what? Uh, as, as future Halloween 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 Halloween. Don't worry, future content, future Halloween. content, future content. Oh, wh wait, web novel? Mm, pre pub. No, no, no pre pub content, but it uh, gets in later. To, yeah, later. We'll Let's talk it. about that later. Yeah. All right. Uh, um. So we have that happening. One of our favorite parts, honestly, like that's one of my favorite parts about this. But there's like five favorite parts. Was, but this is one of them was my favorite part. This was it. Part oh, favorite part number was, one. Oh, yes. 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 Gold. Yeah. So there's at least this three of us. Funniest. This was at least three of us that found it our favorite. By the way, I should do a tally since... So... <laughs> three of us found this our favorite part. Um, Not my favorite, one of my favorites. One of your I favorites. Have, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Um, the class... Yeah, it's very hard to pin down one, a two, single three, favorite. Four. So, yeah. so far, four of us found that. Okay, so I'm going to tally add, the add, parts. Oh, add, 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 a, add a fifth to that. I don't know why you're putting this right, though. Yeah. All right, I'm add just, a sixth. Mine's way further in. Six. Okay, so six of them. Six people is one of their favorites. You don't have to have just one. You can have multiple. Yeah, yeah no. But Hannah this is like to objectively that. like figure out what is the favorite part, okay? <laughs> you should have about Hannah three favorite parts. Like yeah, probably. If you're a, a, a proper bookworm, you'll have a bunch. All right. <clears throat> oh, so yeah. after this, ha uh, Rosamine and Eglantine have a meeting, just themselves, just them two, to discuss the upcoming ritual um, and the warning that Rosamine gave uh, Eglantine that something weird might happen during the dedication ceremony and gives her a piece of her mind. Also, regarding the ritual that uh, um, and that Aaron Fest is obligated to do that stupid ritual year after year, with Klassenberg. But she says like, no, after I'm adopted to the royal family, when I'm a princess and I'm a royal, I will stop this nonsense. I will no longer have to withstand these unreasonable demands. And I was like, yes, yes, Rosamine, yes. After, put your foot down, girl. Roll some backbone. Right, after yeah. all the stuff that they put her through in part five, volume five. Five. Yeah. Like, we needed this. We needed Promise. this. If we are talking about favorite parts, this is my favorite part, especially after what happened in the, uh, part five, volume five. Because oh. when I was reading that part, when they were circling the uh, shrines, it was I was like, oh, okay, God. you do want make that girl do something mm -hmm. that she doesn't want but in the same time when she does it you want to make her someone if not on the same level as you the higher level in society than you how do you think it will work out and she just hit it here mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and i was so loving it <laughs> me too yeah. also um also, <laughs> for me the the best part about this is the fact that Rosemine was just like, no way am I gonna keep putting my duchy through this mm -hmm. stupid ritual mm -hmm. when there is no point to it. Mm -hmm. yeah. Like, this is only benefiting you. Yeah. We already have all the knowledge we need from this. Mm -hmm. We don't need this. Mm -hmm. You can find any, we can teach it to your duchy so they can keep going and researching it. But we're not continuing this after I become a royal. Oh, yeah. Because yeah. it's a burden on Aaron Fest, which is a very important thing to say. This is it. This whole thing in Eglantine's brain, this was a good thing for Aaron Fest. Like they were continuing to research this stuff, but Eglantine didn't realize that this wasn't a good thing for Aaron Fest. For Aaron Fest, this is a burden. This is taking away from their resources and their own. Um, duties that you have to do back home for winter and it's basically putting a lot of burden on everyone mm -hmm. else so i still strongly believe that uh, eglantine is a uh, a person that is fully traumatized and does not understand what is happening and how to deal with it properly or like and noodles she is a she right now in the chat uh, sorry to very, yeah go ahead uh, Plavin. I'm sorry that to interrupt you, but uh, for what you are saying, like Noodles Dumpsing Kinchi uh, right now is saying in the chat that uh, Eglantine is uh, from Bratty Upper Dutch. It's 
perfectly said. <laughs> no, I'm not. Not. <laughs> I, I guess I guess I'm gonna be contrarian here. Yeah, because I I honestly think I honestly uh, sided with uh, Eglantine on this one because Rosemine was constantly going out of her way to help Eg Eglantine when when they were still somewhat classmates, even even though they were senior and, and junior, but. Yeah. Rosemine went out of her way to be friendly with, with Eglantine, and Eglantine's like, oh, well, Rosemine's just gonna help me if, if I ask her, so, <laughs> hey, Rosemine, can you do this? <laughs> yeah, like, I, I can see where her misconception so, came from. So, honestly, you guys, we could go down this this debate again, <laughs> or this conversation. Honestly, we just have to agree to disagree. A lot of people, they're like, you know, we have to cut Eglantine some slack. A lot of people are like, no, like we don't. Um, hey, we, there's so much Rosamine... we have to take into account first. Yeah. Uh, isn't Rosamond required? Oh, so I was gonna say, isn't Rosamond required to like obey because Eglint is royalty? Yeah. So uh, yeah. there's yeah. A, so, like, there's even, even if it's like a play. gentle request, mm -hmm. she's yeah. she'll be yeah. compelled to obey yes. because she's from a lower duchy. And and yeah, the, thing, the thing is, oh, uh, uh, let me just say something before Kadir. The thing is, as a archduke candidate, you are made aware about these things. Like, you you don't make an, a request just like oh la di da. Like I just make a request. Like la di da. You know you're trained that you have to be careful what you say or when to say because anything you say will come as a like you really pushing for it like you're using your authority to steamroll into but, it so that's that's just something that that every person who's like trained in like nobility they know um like, however i really don't want to talk about like oh it's eglantine right eglantine wrong do we hate her or not because we've talked this about this so so much so i'll just for me it's like let's agree to disagree on this one mm. like there, I, I just want to put in that um, Eglantine and everyone in the royal family is used to Rosemine being like, uh-uh, nah, nah, I'm not doing this because I don't want to. Hmm. Because that's what she did when she they were classmates and everything. So Rosemine at first did understand the principle of like being like, okay, you are from a higher duchy, I will obey you. So that's how they're used to her acting. And now that she suddenly understands the power difference, they still haven't adapted to that point of like, oh, wait. She understands now the power difference and yeah. that she, they, in their head when she, um, they are, Rosemine is accepting is because she's like, oh, I'm fine with this. Yeah. Kadir. Because that's what she used to do. Yeah. Oh. Kadir? Yeah, and what I want to say is just like, them just like rushing to sh like adopt and like shove Rosemine into the royal family is pretty short-sighted because that means the only person that could really like hold her back or just like stop her as King Troacle. Mm -hmm. And I don't really see him like putting much effort into doing that. Oh uh, yeah. All right, let's do the Royal Academy Dedications Ritual. Thank you for sharing everybody. We have a lot to say, but uh, we're still in chapter five and we are an hour and a half into this chit chat. Oh, wow. All right. <clears throat> and we can continue with that part for an hour. Yes, we could for sure. Uh, all right. So let's talk about the Royal Academy dedication rituals. The next morning, everyone who will participate in the first ceremony departs. Hildebrand opens the furthest hall for everyone because he insists on doing it. He wants to be important and do something, uh, be involved. So Rosamine commends him for being there early. Klassenberg clarifies that they want to observe the rituals in order to try to revive their own ancient rituals. Rosamine suggests using the theme of revival in order to use the hastening of spring from Haldenzel as the research to cut down on work and Klassenberg agrees. So hooray for previous knowledge about uh, ancient bat. rituals. Now they can use the same ritual that Haldenzel used uh, for their own research. Also, this is a very clear circumstances where uh, Eglantine went back and told Alp Klassenberg, "Hey, you got. Um, we're not doing this again next year, so you guys need to learn. Chop chop." <laughs> <laughs> no, no so, like, this is Well, it's good on him. Good on her that she warned them. <laughs> no retries. They got one shot. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Got no retry. Learn it here, or it's done for. And yep. also, Hildebrand's such a precious little. 
mean? But and <laughs> I know. Also, you guys, uh, at least they don't have three tries because it's the Archducal, there's the, I mean, the Archduke Arch Noble, there's a Med Noble and the Lay Noble. So if they don't get it, if they're like still confused in the first one, they still have two other ones that they can witness. So they have plenty of opportunity. Yeah. yeah. Also, after that, they can still go ahead and ask questions to Aaron Fest. Being like, hey, like we didn't understand this part. Can uh, can we have a little bit of a elaboration on yeah. this? And, and be like, and Erinfus can comply this- and say like, yeah, but you do this for us. <laughs> Perfect. Everybody yeah. wins because <laughs> it's gonna be a transaction now, and it's mm-hmm. actually because because Eglantine went like, okay, you guys learn about this because you need to learn it because we're not redoing this again, and this is important for our Dutch our duchy to survive in the later on. We need to learn it, mm. and like this is a very proactive thing that they did, and I hoped, and I'm, I'm very proud of the new uh, Klassenberg Archduke candidate for taking it into her hands and be like, okay, I want to <laughs> learn, Tien, and yeah. I'm gonna do it. Mm-hmm. This, this yeah, does make me. I'm sorry. This does make me want to learn what's going on with uh, Klassenberg, as to why they're so insistent on learning this dedication ritual and other temple rituals maybe maybe their agricultural uh standing is suffering due to lack of mana as well like uh I, yeah. is. well they are I, snow I country no, they're snowy are, country yeah. and everybody's suffering they're a huge 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 duchy uh so they they need but all the help they can get i just assumed it was like lady Eglantine's deck. connections to like the saint of yeah Arifest. that's true mm-hmm. yeah yeah, they they do seem to want to be friendly with Rosemine, mm-hmm. and it's yeah. good. It's smart. They do want to be friends with Rosemine because Rosemine is a uh, a chip of money, according to their eyes. Like everyone wants to be friends with Rosemine just for her knowledge. <laughs> now and also, if she can do something as amazing as what she did during the ritual, I mean, check it out. During the ritual pillars, uh, during the ritual. Pillars shot, shot up from all the statues. They mix together, then they fly through the roof. Uh, it's crazy. She's never seen something like that, but that's certainly different and checks checks with the suspicion that Rosamine had that something was going to happen. Now, Rosamine requests afterwards, when everything is done, uh, that they use some of the mana uh, that would be given to the library. And Anastasia backs her up. The Zent agrees. I, I- <laughs> so, I do love that uh, that the royal family was like, wait, is that it? You said something weird was going to happen. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, wait a little oh, bit. Oh, 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 you have no happen. idea. You have no idea. Her, I know. It was kind of underwhelming. Has gone yes. to the, her surprise has gone to the point where a lack of a surprise is a surprise. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, it was a pretty, a pretty light show, but other than that, like, they're like, oh, well, we've seen other kinds of light shows. <laughs> mm-hmm. Now, but so they, they allow her to take some, uh, some of the mana once they get like with their face stones or whatever, they get the mana. Um, and she goes to refill the face stone. She goes with uh, Thugiswald. Uh, and their entourage, they go. Uh, they refill the sip, the face stone that is kind of like the library foundation, and also they also and she also goes to give some mana for the shoe mills and the shoe mill tools. Now, after pouring the mana into the library's main magic tool, Schwartz and Vice tell Rosamine that Gramps is calling and lead her to the statue of Miss Dionora on the second floor. Now. As, yeah, as soon as she touches the statue, guess what happens? Something happens. The first, of the, the first something <laughs> happens. It's yoinked into... Something weird happens. Something happens. Magical girl transformation. Oh, yeah. <laughs> she feels a massive amount of mana gets sucked out. Then she sees blinding flash before being teleported into a dark room. All right. Perfectly cut screams. <laughs> she just went poof. Yeah, <laughs> she and went like in uh, front of everyone. Like, it's so funny how she just like, oh, I'm going to do the same thing I've done for so many times mm-hmm, in my life, and mm-hmm. like, not there's any consequences to it. Touches, um, touches the uh, statue. Mm-hmm. Not even three seconds later, poof! I am in front of a wall <laughs> in the dark. <laughs> I am in darkness. Yeah, Ooh, where am I? 
Like the panic she is, she, she, right now. She is diving to the heart. Mm -hmm. Oh, so what? What first happens is like, uh, well, it, it has like a whole little sequence of what all the stuff that happens. Honestly. Uh, <laughs> But basically, she finds herself in the, you know, we have the cover art, the um, the stairways and all that stuff. Uh, she's like excited because she sees like after the, after she pours some mana, like basically you see like this whole image of a library, like an infinite library. And she praises the gods and she does this mana blessing only to find out that the books are fake. It's just like a, just like a painting almost. And she's so and angry. I I love that this is so hard. Oh, hold on a second. That's Don't already, interrupt each other. Don't interrupt each other, please. <laughs> All right. Who was talking? Was it Patrick first? Yeah. Okay. So I, I love that this ended up just being a, a test by the gods to be like, hey, uh, are you a seeker of knowledge or do you just want power? Uh huh. And she transformed it into a library. So yeah, I think she wants knowledge. <laughs> right. <laughs> All right. Who was next? I didn't. Uh, something I, I wanted to put. Go on. Yeah, something I wanted to point out on the previous chapter. I think we we moved on to meeting grabs right now. Uh, we are right no, now. No, we're still on the previous. Just uh, when she sucked in. That's where we're at. She just got sucked into uh, okay. the library, the projection. Right. Um, some a couple of things I did not write on this outline was uh, Solange was talking about having another uh, member of the. Uh, library committee mm -hmm. hold uh hortensia's key because you know hortensia's not there right now yeah yeah that makes sense and they also really i should uh, and was it were they gonna use gentian probably i wonder yes okay. they, they talked about lady gentian uh, inviting lady gentian to uh, the library yeah. committee Glassenberg. yeah that's gonna Glassenberg. be that's gonna come out oh, later though oh uh, by the way sorry you guys i have to make this 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 struck me as humorous the fact that um, Noemi is trying desperately to get us to men to <laughs> to pronounce Gentian's name properly, she must be feeling the no, same no, way no, that no, German no, speakers no, feel no, when they when we butcher their language and their and, and their names. So, how does it feel? Do you feel the burn, Noemi? <laughs> when we uh, no, <laughs> so used to it because like seriously, like um, it's not even a joke. Uh, most of the time, like if we're talking about my name and stuff like that you guys are not even pronouncing it correctly either but it's really? the English, I don't care. no emmy this pronunciation so yeah fine no emmy yeah <laughs> so yeah <laughs> I, like i'm just used to it because i talk to english people all the time and they can't pronounce french names any every single time kind of gets annoying when i keep correcting them <laughs> <laughs> i'm ignorant american i say how i want yeah it's jantianim yeah, I pronounce Lanzanov Luigi now. It's Lanzanov! <laughs> <laughs> I Lanzanov. had lingerie. Huh. Lingerie? <laughs> <laughs> that's, very that's a very um, creative um, license right there. <laughs> no, it's Lanzanov. <laughs> what, what about lingerie? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, we need to start I'm a right now. Right now. <laughs> um, okay, Navi, I hope back. you enjoyed this little shoot. tangent. This was just for you, Navi. <laughs> Love you guys. All right. I, I'm trying to steer us to have not as many tangents, but I, I just couldn't resist. Thank you, uh, Noemi, yeah, for we offering the opportunity. You couldn't resist the one tension to troll me. It was just to troll you. <laughs> Love you, of darling. Course. You need to troll French speaking people. <laughs> it's always okay to troll the French. Aww. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> that's not nice. That's, let's be nice, <laughs> Bookworms. Let's be nice. But you know, we can troll because we love you. Okay, no, of I mean. Of course. And I love it. Feel so I don't all our love. <laughs> I love you all too. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Don't worry. I'll catch you up on the next live stream. <laughs> you're going to get you're even, full, huh? You're not full body French, so it's all good. There's yeah. something you're gonna do this week that I'm gonna. I'm just gonna tell someone on the live stream next time. Can we Wait. get back on track? I want to say something before I have to leave. Oh, you're okay. leaving. Oh okay. yeah. What is it? Tell us. Oh, it's just like 
since this is like the last part of the story that's like in the school before we get off track and you know things just snowball out of control you know it's kind of unfortunate that we really didn't get a uh, headache report sort of thing because it was mentioned earlier but it's just like oh, yeah. not only like the, the issue from earlier but this too it's just like one of those other things that i'd like to be a fly on that wall listening to them get these reports it's like what did rosemine do not only did she like say a bunch of scandalous stuff but now she's gone like Oh, I, I oh yeah, it would have been so fun to get a fourth one. What? Fourth. Oh, wait, wait. We did have to report this in this book, but it was the entire book, not only one uh, chapter. Yeah, but huh? we didn't get it from their point of view. Yeah. 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 Like, I wanted right. to listen to Sylvester being like, what do you mean she disappeared? I Someone explain to, that to we me. We wanted to see Florencia yeah. faint again. <laughs> yeah. What do you mean Yuri is now a thing in this series? All right. Anyway, so, so with that, I probably have to head out. So you guys enjoy the rest of your chat. Thank you Thank for you giving you able to join us back because yes, we'll be yes. long. Yeah. <laughs> Bye. If I get back in time, I'll jump back in. Awesome. Sorry for the tension. <laughs> no worries. Thank you guys. See ya. So All right, where were we? So, uh, yes, there. where were we? Mm, you know, um, I don't know. Meeting Gramps. Um, all right. You should so, Oh, uh, oh like how was in the chat being like, we're not French, we just speak the language. <laughs> <laughs> That's for a clarification. I are American. <laughs> I speak American. Yeah, North speak American or South American? Yeah, that's yes. a difference. Which one? Yes. Don't forget the Mexican. Central They're all Mexicans. <laughs> <laughs> they should United feel so States proud. American. They should feel so proud to be all Mexican. <laughs> this is one like uh, right. no, where me keeps getting caught okay, by. Like right. Children, we were back Children, to talk for twenty seconds. Tribe, let's let's get back on track. <clears throat> Never. <laughs> we can talk more about this in other chats. Just trying to before keep we continue. Before. Mm. After the show, <laughs> another one. Continue. What? For this particular part, uh, mm. she went when she went to that room with painted books. Reminded me of uh, that library that had uh, big steps, and all of uh, on the steps were uh, books. I think it was somewhere in New York. I watched the video in oh. some. Oh, oh, hmm. have to look into that one. Thank you for sharing. It's like preserved libraries are so pretty. Mm. Yeah, I know, right? Mm -hmm. So big, so pretty, so interesting. Yeah. yeah. Now, unfortunately, those are just, like we said before, projections. They're not actual real books. But she is yeah. made to, like, That's right. chase it. She's you must never forget who ranks above you. Okay, okay there's, okay. there's, your, there's your one, one soundboard out of two, so I don't know why you used it. Okay, because I thought you guys were going to use it for the, oh no, he's hot, but oh well. Too bad. You wasted it. You wasted it. Whoever did it, you wasted it. You only have one left. <clears throat> now, uh, when Rosalind touches the dark floor, it begins to change into a library absolutely stuffed with books in the shape of a tower. She gives a blessing out of pure joy, but when she tries to touch one of the books, she notices that the entire room is actually flat and only gives the appearance of a library. A golden shoe mill appears and explains that the room takes the shape of the person's greatest desires. The shoe mill tells Rosamine to so follow it. Win you over. Win you books books tell? Tell? Okay, who's doing that? Oh, yeah, that one. Who was who's that? doing it? Go back and go back into the video. We'll see who who's the culprit is. Okay. Um, the culprit. Right, so you guys can do if it, but just don't, don't... The soundboard. Yeah. We're gonna lose it. So you guys like, I told you about this beforehand. No abuse. Do not abuse the soundboard. You, we will lose it. Backpipe will take it all down. Yeah. yeah. Um. Yeah. Just if you're gonna use it, just don't do it when I'm like trying to like, cause I I was speak like that. I get out of focus. So just ah, a little bit of courtesy there. Thank you. Um, no distract the magpie. Don't distract me. You guys know I have a bird brain, so don't distract me. All right. <laughs> now. Profile is a bird. Magpie title. The the door opens <laughs> when. Oh, man. The door opens when Rosamine touches it, and on the other side is a hall with an ivory stairway leading to the Garden of Beginnings, which is a place she had already been at. 
Uh, this, this place is familiar. There's the tree. But what happens is something that's not familiar to her is that the tree starts to transform into the shape of a person that tells her that she is late. And behold, here is Gramps, or as we later know him, he's Erwerman. Rosamine asks if, if the tree person is Gramps, to which he says that it has been a long time since he was called as such. Gramps says that her current vessel is smaller than when they had met, so he has Anwax bless her immediately. Like, he doesn't ask for, like, permission, he doesn't say. No, he's just like, huh, you're small, then you get cursed, oh well. You came to receive the rest of your wisdom, so here it is. But before that, let's just make you grow again. <laughs> and immediately goes about doing it. Um, and it was incredibly painful. Incredibly painful. I, I was laughing so hard. Oh my god, it's so painful. <laughs> it was incredibly painful and it took an incredibly long time. <laughs> yeah, it was a whole school year. Mm. Yeah, it's like your bones are just ripping your skin apart oh, just man. by growth. I oh, know. it's so painful. Also, the fact that like she she got so indecent in front of another person. <laughs> oh goodness gracious! In front of a man. In front of in a front man. Of a man. Like even oh my wait, even Scandal. I think even like her attendants when they heard the story, they were so angry for her sake. They were like, "How dare he? Like, how dare? Like, she had to like." Tear her clothes and strip herself like to like her undies and all this. This is shameful. How dare he? <laughs> so, but yeah, like it was insane. Like she had to like her hair was her scalp was like pulling on her. So she had to undo her hair, cast washing on her hair, cut her socks, slice off parts of her uh, her clothes just so she could garter have belt. yeah her garter mm. belt oh my goodness it was painful now to her this happened like almost i don't know if it was immediately but like this whole process took months um and also months? like of like on the on the exterior like to the people outside of this like her retainers and everything oh, oh yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. Like winter, the rest of the classes happened. The interdachi tournament happened. Uh, it was like the beginning of spring when the or like late, late winter. So it was uh, quite a while that all this took place. But for Rosamine, it was just like so sudden and so quick. Yeah, yeah it was something. Um, and also just the, mm -hmm. the ahead, feeling of your something. Soul. Just say. Hold on, hold on, Noemi. What was it? No, I was gonna say, it's just like, I can't imagine the feeling of your skull changing shape in real time. <laughs> For real, right? It just um, itches, don't worry guys, it's just scratching. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> so, we had we had this thing. Now, this, here's the interesting thing about this. Now, uh, Erwerman calls, says that she is late, so honestly he can't really figure out what's going on he doesn't understand to him he only sees mana signatures so um to them to him it's just like well it's basically the same the same people uh which is what started this confusion in the first place i love how it's just one huge case of mistaken identity mm -hmm. yes. oh my god Hey, so, Magpie, did you show the images? Because um, I didn't see them. Um, um, not yet, because she hasn't yet gotten to the part where she gets the book. Right now, I'm just showing like the... the uh, yeah. So right now, uh, I'm, I'm showing a meme <laughs> that I found that was really cool. It's basically from the office. Yeah. Like, corporate needs you to find a difference. So, <laughs> and Wax says, I mean, um, a woman says it's the same thing. <laughs> So we have that little bit yeah. of situation going on. Again, it's because of the mana. So it turns out that, um, yeah, she still died by, by Ferdinand. She was. She still died by Ferdinand. She and, was in fact died by <laughs> And to make you happy, here is the image of, where is it? Where are the images? Oh, <laughs> yes, of course. How could, I would be remiss if I didn't show the images. Here you go. There is the, the image mm -hmm. I spent way too much time on doing. Yes, dude, this image looked so hard to make. It's already like, whew. um. So yeah, there it is. There's there's your your uh, Rosamine, and we have others. But I'll show them. Just let me. I want go back to the. <laughs> let me go back to the outline. All right. So book oh, yes, yeah. Nora. <clears throat> Um, so Rosamine oh. immediately starts to grow, she has to loosen her clothing, blah blah blah. 
after her growth ends, she asks Gramps if he saw anything. He replies that he only sees mana. We already talked about that. But he says, like, immediately he tells her, okay, okay, now you have that. Take out your staff and pray some more. So as soon as she does, it glows and releases the tablets that were inside her, and they start to float around her. And also the words that she learned while she was doing the circling the the um the shrines that also came into into relevance so she prays to the supreme oh, yeah. gods How and the eternal five mm -hmm, in order to be granted the knowledge of Mercianora. what did you guys think about yep. this scene uh in general like uh it was interesting um and generally like the amount of like the fact that he was like oh pray to gain the knowledge but like after that rosemary's like oh oh i want to learn more about this and then just focuses on that and he's like mm -hmm. scolding her about like getting uh distracted and that she just needs to clear her mind and mm -hmm. just accept the knowledge mm -hmm. stop the amount thinking. of times she's just like, clear your happen. mind <laughs> yeah stop thinking let it happen just Don't... let it happen yeah because it's basically unorganized information so her initial reflex is just to try to like like organize it as it comes but it's that's not the way it works <laughs> that's not how it works mm -mm. like people need to like you can't organize this stuff you need to let it flow yeah we learned that this is the knowledge of so many people so many zans and just people who had the gutter's height at some point uh it's it's impossible to try to uh, arrange quickly because there's just so much from thousands and thousands of years, I imagine. Um, and we find out that Ferdinand is surprisingly incompetent in this, in this regard. <laughs> yeah, oh, there's, yeah, there's something about Ferdinand here. Uh, what, what, what about? Uh, can you elaborate on this, please, Patrick? <laughs> so apparently, Ferdinand couldn't just let it happen and empty his mind. He had to keep thinking, and he. He missed, what, 30? No, wait, he missed like 70% of, of the book. So, <laughs> yep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so he only took what he wanted and he was like, I don't need the rest, bye bye. Um, or he just tried to like sort it out and he didn't listen to um, to Air Women and he's, he lost out a lot of the, a lot of that. <laughs> um, knowledge or his vessel was too small <coughs> probably yeah now now Ferdinand was like i got what i wanted peace yeah so here's a meme i'm showing says gramps oh says, yeah he was right to too. the supreme gods and and so on so you can get missionary's wisdom and Ferdinand is like no thanks i choose life <laughs> um yeah pretty yeah. much also, <laughs> mm -hmm. and also oh my god Ferdinand. i know now, and also the hypocrisy, right? He had the freaking book all this time and he was like telling Rosamund, you can't get it, you shouldn't get it, don't get it. But he had it all this time when he was a teenage punk. He went and he took it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> he so, just... so so can, can we conclude that hmm. maybe Ferdinand is the big baddie because he could have solved all the mana issues as like... He already sacrificed enough in his life. That would be a huge political error if he ha had gone for that. But didn't the uh, current emperor say he is happy to hand it over to anybody? Heck, he was happy to hand it over to Deadland. <laughs> well, he that was at that point, point but... after they were at the end of the rope. Yeah. 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 So, so if he had done that at the end of the Civil War, Ooh. that would have been grounds to be uh, executed. Mm -hmm. He's got plenty of time to hand do it even now. I think I, I blame Ferdinand. This all would have been solved had <laughs> Ferdinand become Zent. Do not blame Ferdinand, but he's also, blameless. Like, I'll say this. <laughs> I'll I'll say this. Hold on a second. <laughs> hey! No, Abby. <Emmy. laughs> so I'll just say that um, they the king himself literally told Rosevine, yeah, no, this would have... I would. Uh, the only reason we sent him to um, Arnsbach is because we can't afford to have a iron fast noble become zent because that would cause chaos and they wouldn't have a support base to keep the power that is the main reason why ferdinand could not become the zent is because he 
did not have a support base to support him, he would have literally been overthrown within the le like not even that much time. No one would have supported a Zen from Aaronfest. Now, this is what Tarquil thinks, but he doesn't realize that Drowenshell and Dunkelfalger would have jumped <laughs> for joy. <laughs> I know, right? Mm -hmm. Both of them yeah, would have been so happy to support him. Mm -hmm. And it's like, you ain't gonna lose with those two on your side. Yeah, but oh, yeah. it wouldn't be a problem for that. someone to adopt uh, for that. Let's say someone from uh, Dunkelfelger. Adopt well, him. Uh, married he was almost married to Dunkelfelger. as a then. former Aaronfest. And also, he yeah, yeah, Magdalena was supposed to. Oh my. <laughs> And we're all excited <laughs> about this. Also, I don't even know. It's who kind does... of weird to adopt someone at 27 years old. I'm just gonna. <laughs> Why is he not 20... Okay, uh, this well. is a this is like a Japanese story, and it's like to continue the family business. Ad adoptions after they're like over 20 or 30 is normal. Oh yeah, mm. don't forget that Japanese is like that. Yeah. They do things differently. <laughs> Cultural context. Mm -hmm. Like, Cultural adoption context. is to, like, continue the family business while mm -hmm. still technically saying, mm -hmm. oh, we've been in the family this entire time. Mm -hmm. now yeah. Like, mind, like, mm -hmm. adoption once you've been in the family for a while and, like, even if you're an adult and, like, stuff prevented you to be adopted as a child and you get adopted as an adult. Yeah, fine. Mm -hmm. But, like, just you randomly getting adopted as an adult into a Darko Felger archduke family <laughs> that is so bizarre yeah. honestly though honestly, you guys rosemine's adoption by that. sylvester was written more like uh adopting a competent adult than it was just like adopting a child because she's an orphan yeah. but back to ferdinand you guys i think that that living life as a uh, like saying like oh i got the good side first off it would be dumb he already has like people poisoning him at home so imagine if he has that little support, he's like, what's going to happen if I say that I have the Gucci's heart? They're going to kill me. It's going to get even worse. I already have a target in my back. So honestly, like he's he was just better off, like hoping for the best. But it's 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 not in his best interest to to do anything like reveal himself. Uh. Wouldn't he? Yeah. I mean, wouldn't he actually have significantly more support than the current emperor? Because the church would support him. There's a lot of there's a, a lot of factions who don't support the current emperor because the they don't. Church believe is just a reach of dumping ground. <laughs> you say that, but like it feels like there's other political parties who are kind of be not truly behind the emperor because they don't really see him as a real one because he doesn't. Well, that's just because they lost. But also, that's because they lost. But also, no, they wouldn't see Ferdinand like that because of the stereo, because of the the taboo. Already, he's not seen well in Arnsbach just because of the taboo of the the temple and stuff. Like he's not seen well by most nobles because he was in the temple. Like this would not have ended well for him. Yeah. Well, he he did change a lot of opinions in Arnsbach after he uh, moved there because he pretty much took over all of their administrative functions and that's only because Arnspock was desperate enough to completely rely on him yeah <laughs> yeah basically they have nobody yeah, else I mean, when you when your ob is delulu <laughs> <laughs> exactly yeah. they needs to be a specific kind of suffering for ferdinand to even have an opportunity yeah yeah and I did also, not exist back then. and even after, even after his teenage years, like remember, his father told him on his deathbed, support and be in Aaronfest. Like I, I need you to that stay there. In the, in the light novel so far, hmm? but when he first got the thirty percent of the Guter Shrine, he was still courting Hildebrand's mother. Oh, Magdalena! I <laughs> was he. I don't think he was courting. I I don't. They weren't really they courting. Were, there were some more thoughts. like it was being uh, forced upon. Arranged. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but yeah, if he is we trying to get her them together, has, uh, the guitar shrine and can get the rest of it, she would have kind of agree. No, Magdalena was in it for love, and she loved the current Zent, and that's why she 
in that like this mm. that also and if he had he done this again this would not have ended well because he got the gushu site in the middle of a civil war <laughs> yeah that oh, is, that is the biggest that is the biggest factor you guys i really do think that's the biggest factor you don't want to throw yet another uh, no it would have been terrible like yeah. oh like i'm the th i'm gonna like a third I'm gonna weaker faction <laughs> <laughs> like this would have been a such a death sentence to him. Mm. Like, oh, hey, by the way, I got the Gucci site. Like, everyone would have been like, kill him. He's but not the, royalty. And then the the worst thing about this is that he also he doesn't have the Gucci site. He only has like a what we said before, like twenty five to thirty percent of it. So poor Rosamine, she is left like. <laughs> She is like, um, well, I see a lot of holes. It looks like it's redacted in some parts. Oh boy! Well, it just so happens that and Erwin, Erwin, Erwin's like, very fickle. The you know, i <laughs> so Erw Erwin's like, you know, I've never seen someone just be like, I'm dissatisfied with all this knowledge yes, I got. Yes, yes. He's like, you're yeah. the very first person who's ever been disappointed with it. Hey, I will oh, also grain this in. I get all of the ascendants of bookworm books, but some parts are missing. Mm. So no, that's kind of understandable. Yeah, true, true. I'm so, going to have to rain this in. We are two hours in. Oh yeah, I know, but I know. We're two hours in. Two okay, hours. and we're on <laughs> chapter seven out of like twenty-one. For everyone. So, uh, okay. Ooh, all right. Well. This book is very front heavy. <laughs> get on with it. It is yeah. a little. Though the, yes, there's some stories in the back. Clap okay, okay, everyone okay. for surviving until this point. <laughs> By the way, Magpie, are What's we going to take a break and like halfway through? Like, I feel I like. I don't know. I'm, I'm still good to go. go I'm, I'm eating hours, so chocolate, like a break halfway. chocolate covered walnuts as my sustenance because I didn't mm. have breakfast. Oh. So I am. Um, chocolate oh, and water right when i run out of water <laughs> i'll be in trouble all right let's get, let's get on with it let's get on with it fine i was eating pasta okay patrick fast, okay I mean, don't let's go wait. let's go patrick insists we move I just on love, i just love that my python meme <laughs> all right <laughs> continuing on so the book of mr nora she receives the information there's gaps in it and um air woman tells him tells her basically you want those holes to be filled then go and fill them go get the other guy that this respectful guy who just came in from above he didn't even follow procedures this is ferdinand or, and uh kill him and <laughs> and you can get the rest of the book he's like what and um now she finally understands that what does he mean by Who's he confusing her with? Well, after some back and forth, it is revealed that uh, someone else came through this room 10 years ago by blasting the magic circle in the sky with mana and flying through the ceiling. A uh, woman keeps confusing Rosamine with this man because they have exactly the same kind of mana, or nearly the exact same mana. It turns out that all of our, uh, Rosamine's near-death experiences gave her the mark of every glebe. Now, this is a whole bunch of lore and information that explains so much of what's been happening. Even like in this book, Dirk's almost colorless uh, medallion shining. Um, yep. Mm -hmm. Those, uh, basically, those with the mark of uh, every glebe had mana, despite being commoners, and uh, and of those that have come back from the brink, brink of death have hardened lumps of mana in, and in their bodies and they can be permanently dyed by another person's mana which is what happened with Rosamine so she was she almost died several times as a kid formed clumps inside her body then Ferdinand dyed her for the synchronization so he could read her mind and her body just the the stones inside her just re, like got that colored and stayed that color and Basically, this just resulted in her staying in that color. Even after she went through the jury, she's already been uh, re-dyed. So there we go. That's that's explains yeah. why she still died, even though that's it's been a long time. Mm -hmm. Was this because the st during her first jury, this, all the mana stones inside it did not melt away? I know there was still also that point. Maybe if she if all of them hadn't melted away, then she could have gotten her own colors. But yeah, I think that's a biggie because she still had 
mana until like mana clumps until part four volume nine when she had her final jureeb yeah yeah so I like sure quite a while mm-hmm yep also um I feel like uh, the fact, like earlier something. when we were like joking about Rosemine uh, uh, throwing a face stone at the at the magic circle, and then we find out that Ferdinand, <laughs> Ferdinand did, did, exa- that, <laughs> did exactly did exactly that, exactly that just same thing. <laughs> I just love the just irony of Ferdinand it, like, scolding oh Rosemine against doing certain things mm-hmm. because he did it before. <laughs> just yeah. like, boy, you hypocrite. <laughs> right yeah oh my god yeah well, oh well i guess we <laughs> he that, gets a pass because Ferdinand he's Ferdinand. More ador- yeah i was about to say that made Ferdinand be more adorable mm, yes could he get more adorable yes he can <laughs> <laughs> all right <clears throat> before i run away with my feelings <laughs> let us return so um he also mentions the name of a certain quinta right and well this Quinta is the guy who died her. And Rosamine says, like, I don't know who this Quinta is, uh, which prompts uh, Erwoman to read her memories. <coughs> and Rosamine realizes that Ferdinand's true name is Quinta. And Erwoman tasks her with killing him in order to complete her book of Mestionora, to which, of course, she's just like, I'm not going to do that. I am not. And she, that's those are her uh, last parting words before she leaves the plaza. All right. If you want to complete your book, yep. just kill him. <laughs> no. Oh my god. If you want the book, kill Ferdinand. Yeah, that's not gonna Keep happen. Him with love. That's not gonna happen. She is because she, she is doing this to save Ferdinand. Like she's after the Gucci side. She's gonna marry into the royal family. She's gonna give them the Gucci side just to save Ferdinand. It makes absolutely no sense that she would kill him to get the rest of the book. Like no, not gonna happen. <laughs> oh my god! And like, also, just it. crazy. I like how I like how in this chapter we get half of the story of what the outside world looks like mm. because one now that Rosemary got uh, most of the of the book of knowledge, she knows that the country is essentially a giant magic circle that contains Evergreen. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yep. we now understand that uh, it's it's very important. And we'll get even more information about this in future volumes. Uh, believe you me, but yeah. we won't we That's won't venture. Yeah, we won't venture beyond I'm this so point. So excited mm-hmm. for these lore dumps that's gonna happen oh, yeah. later on. Lore dumps that are amazing. I love it. Understand? <laughs> yeah, like, I can actually have lore dump. No, understand? Now, if we're only we can get a lore dump, we can get a lore dump. <laughs> Why we are talking about uh, Lord Dumps, I already mentioned which one, which part is my favorite in several chapters back, uh, several points back, but this is my second favorite because of the Lord Dumps. All right, so yeah. Rosamine oh my God. gets Dumps are so good. Gutra's height. So that's one. Anybody else? Is this your, who else is this their favorite part? This is my favorite part because uh, like body it. horror. Oh yeah, lower for sure. Who else? Yeah, no, I mean, yeah, I, I definitely for, for enjoy me, this like, part a lot. Image. All right, we got four people, <laughs> five with me. <laughs> it's it's just so Finally, satisfying. It's like seven chapters ahead. Yeah, so it's so satisfying because all of this, all of this, for books like since we all knew about the Gucci side being lost, we were like, it's a mystery, and they've been like circling the things and jump through these hoops and do all these things and finally we get it we finally reach the point and all for Rosamine to be disappointed <laughs> with the book so this is also the first part where, 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 <laughs> sorry Patrick. this is also the first part where we get uh Rosamine saying you know what i don't mind making enemies of the gods just to save sir ferdinand Yes, let's stop. Oh, there. yeah. Yeah. All right. She so, so <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Rosemine actually has to make a decision between book and Ferdinand. And it's actually really like her brain was like, uh uh-uh, uh, no way am I going to get a book and replace Ferdinand. He's like my life. <laughs> well, we'll see. All right. So, character development. The character development. Character so, development. So far, so far anybody, totally who's her, anybody who's her anybody who's her family is going to rank above books at this point. Uh, she yeah. considers Ferdinand her family. 
before she was like yeah no family but you know she has grown since the very first book like we've seen that transition how she's learned to value other people she's basically become more human <laughs> yes um, i, I, yeah, I she's love grown in the movie. sense that she's seeing the, her family as a book that read themselves yeah patrick yep. I was just saying, I, I've really enjoyed her character growth. Mm -hmm, yes. So, so far for this part, we have five people who like this part. So it's a good number. All right. Let's return to the book. Um, oh, wait. Now we're 14. We are at... I'm back. <laughs> I'm back. You could do a poll for how many people like it. We could do a poll, but I, I'm busy right now <laughs> trying to juggle things and... Keep you guys reined in and in line and all these things these wonderful things we cannot be restrained i know we cannot be restrained <laughs> i know what have i gotten myself into oh my gosh back to us go we go <laughs> okay okay it's late over there in europe so okay let's let's go i'm back vincent needs oh welcome back man by the way hello hello vincent and <laughs> i'm it. here all the time welcome that's the beginning <laughs> i know but you're talking finally Okay. Yeah, Rosamine. because I wanted to say something about where Magpie was going on, and I don't want to drag it back. So. Okay. So. Why are you being so polite? <laughs> I am so glad. Polite. I am glad that you are here. And please speak. If I see that you're trying to speak, but Noemi's still speaking, then I will try to find a gap when she takes a breath. So that I can just bump you in. Honestly, you just need to me to <laughs> shut it. I will shut it. <laughs> Mute All right. her. Alright. Noemi, shut it. <laughs> no, don't be mean. Alright, so... I'm just joking. That <laughs> pup. Keep that guys. Alright, so I'm glad to see Vincent is here and everybody else is here. Uh, let's continue on. Back to reading. So Rosamine contacts Lizalita via Ordenas and asks her to contact the, the royal family in order to open the room to the furthest hall. She also requests uh, a cloak that fits an adult. Now, one thing that the outline missed is the fact that when she was receiving her information, her down downloading from the cloud, um, she saw some factoid about the the foundations and their locations and the duchy and how like it has to do with like the temple and the keys and she's like wait a second wait a second so but our uh, woman was like no stop thinking just let it flow so after she's done she has some time off to think about like mull back on on that information pops up her um butcher's height uh which Apparently, she forms into the shape of a tablet and like an iPad, tablet, e-reader, whatever. Kindle. Kindle. Amazing. Love it. And she starts to read the Gutter's Hide in order to read the portion about Duchy Foundations. And yes, indeed, this, she now realizes that there's there's danger afoot and she has to tell uh, Sylvester ASAP about it. Um, now, the door opens and it's night. And it's Sigiswald with Hildebrand, the retainers, Lisa Lira, Grisha, Cornelius, and Matthias. Now, after her retainers cover Rosamine, because remember, her clothes are in shambles. She doesn't even have shoes, proper shoes. So after her retainers cover her, Hildebrand is surprised and, at Rosamine's growth. And this growth. is the part where we use the soundboard for what we want to, to say. Can, can we do it? Oh, no, Someone's he's... already doing it, so. <laughs> All right, do me. it. Silence, everybody. That, that, that was me. <laughs> it's not me this time. <laughs> oh, no, oh, no, he's hot! We got lots we'll of people practice. doing it. <laughs> well, it is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I'm going to put the illustration from way that we use later on, but let's just talk a little bit about it. <clears throat> so because we can and because I want to. Um, oh, my God. The hill. And uh, and um, so just while being like, oh my god, right? such a beauty! I have right? seen. Oh my god! So we have here uh, the illustration. The simping begins. The simping begins. We have Rosamine again. She the, she's described as otherworldly beautiful. Number one. Mm -hmm. And we have both. Uh, <laughs> Well, we'll talk about this later, but uh, Sid as well, who was at first was like, do I really have to marry her? He's like blown away. <laughs> so
So here are the illustrations yeah. just because I love this part. And yeah, it's so, it gives such a mystical air. Like, it's just so, such a wonderful air about it. I love it. All right. <clears throat> so, where were we? All right. So, after that, um, once they return to Amphis Dormitory, her retainers explain that she has gone for an entire season, so it's been several months, and that the tournament has come and gone. She agrees to return to Ironfest the following morning after eating and resting. Now, normally she would not have any clothes ready, but thanks to Hartmut's insistence that Rosamine was growing, there were clothes from Brunhild left in the dormitory, and all of her clothing orders were halted. And thank you, Lisa She spent her spare time sewing underclothes for Rosamine. So she didn't have to recycle uh, <laughs> and reuse uh, Brunhild's undies. Thank goodness. Um, so everything goes by without any trouble. Everything went by without any trouble during her absence. Unfortunately, she did not, she did not win, of course, the first honor student award, the first student, first in place. Uh, nope, that Ortwin. Went to Ortwin. Yeah, Ortwin won it. Um, Rosamine is also a little sad that she was not able to support Matthias in finding someone to escort, which brings us to one of the um, illustrations that Ayla did. comics. Yeah, one of yeah, those illustrations. The, the end of novel comic was good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, let me share it with you guys. It, so there it, it is. Uh, a so funny. <laughs> colored by our friend, a little of something. <laughs> So he had to ask um, oddly, but of course we can all imagine how it went and we see how it went. It was really odd because he doesn't poor, have poor family. Guy. He was so ashamed. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. So she's, she feels sad that she wasn't able to take care of her children, I guess. Um, so... But you know, and Lawrence used Matthias' situation as a wake-up call to prepare as well for himself. Because I think Lawrence is, is younger than Matthias, so now Lawrence knows he has to find somebody. But Lawrence is more forward than Matthias, so I don't think he'll have any problem whatsoever. Um, oh, Lawrence is definitely a, a ladies' man. Yeah, he's he's yeah. more confident. I mean, he was able to read those those. Uh, <laughs> um, from the book, the romance those, uh... book, he was like. Lot. Yeah, loved it. <laughs> he recorded those things into a shoe mill. Uh, uh, and the Elvira whole time, like, how can you read that with such confidence? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you, you, I, I found it a little sad that you cut off the the name of the like, little mini comic is Cougar Escort. Oh yeah, I yeah. To, <laughs> I oh, no. to, I to, so it would fit. Yeah, but it's called Cougar Escort. That this is this is why you guys have to buy your own book. So it's not cut off in there. It's cut off here, but not in there. So <laughs> I forgot that title. For that yeah, comment. Cougar Escort. Um, though you know, it's not like it's not like Otterly is the one after him. So I I find it unfair that they call her a Cougar Escort, honestly, because mm -hmm. it would I be mean, it would be if she had been the one to do to do the the hunting mm -hmm. praying thing, like mm -hmm. going after the young. More accurate to say milf hunter. Oh. <laughs> Oh boy! Uh, PG thirteen, you guys. <laughs> I don't want to get in trouble. Oh. <laughs> but yeah, you're not wrong. Um, all right. So <clears throat> let's see. Rosamine is uncomfortable upon their re upon her return, as people's expression to see her new growth is not exactly positive. Like they look at her as if she were like some freak of nature, and that really hurts so, her feelings in a I, bit. I'm sorry. Jeez. Mm -hmm. I, I, so Rosemine constantly saw this as repulsion, whereas all the POVs viewing her from the other side is they're in awe of her. So <laughs> I, I think maybe her exactly. perception is a little skewed. Hmm. Yeah. Interesting. So maybe yeah, they were just checking her. This I, was, I would. Oh. Okay. Hmm? <laughs> Who yeah. was talking? Uh, oh. You go from interrupting each other to being completely silent. <laughs> Okay, Kadir <laughs> yeah, from the um, top. I just yeah, to... I, I was yeah. talking yeah. about... Oh my gosh. <laughs> Alright, Kadir and then Noemi. Okay, yeah, I just want to say in, like, I remember, like, in the web novel, like, this was written from a uh, Sigiswald's perspective. Yes. 
Sigilo's perspective, but there's a there's a side story later. There's a side story at the end. So oh, right. yeah, it's a Sigiswell POV. Uh, so what happens is that in the web novel, the Sigiswell POV that we have at the end, it occurs right after. So they just inserted it in there. So it goes yeah. like linearly, it, it makes sense. Cause after she disappears and after all these things, like it like the Sigiswell comes in. So he fills us in on what happened in the in like when she disappeared, what Harma did, what the people were saying, then and all that stuff. How he met up uh, with Ferdinand, all those things. It, it's. I'm pretty sure that that's that's where it was located. Like it was just chronological. Oh, so it's there. It's just at the end anyway, of the story. But... Mm -hmm. All right. <clears throat> so uh, I was, I was, I yes, you're <laughs> I was you know saying I mean? that. Um... <laughs> I would say that uh, Rosemind is horrifically bad at judging people's expressions, mm -hmm. especially when they're nobles and they know how to cover it. <laughs> Except when they're Ferdinand, apparently. She only knows how to read Ferdinand. And we all expect to, like, when we read into her, like, her emotions, we're all like, oh, yeah, she, this is definitely how the other person is feeling. When in reality, it's probably not. <laughs> so, yeah. 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 What's the Wouldn't negative of like transcripts? An unreliable narrator. Hmm. I I just think she's un, un she's not used to being the object of people's admiration. Yeah, I think that's what's, also it. What, what's the opposite of transferable skills? Where developing one skill greatly lowers other skills? Because I feel like that's what she did when learning how to read Ferdinand. <laughs> yeah. Again, when it comes to Mike. Ferdinand, he he just like messed up all of her common sense, her noble common sense. Yeah. It really yeah, because Ferdinand is like the worst person when it comes to like socializing. I don't think he understands how to socialize with people. Yeah. Her, oh, all he her siblings he called her out on that. The misanthrope. And he passed that on to <laughs> Rosamine, who yeah. basically yeah. understood nothing. So he's like double whammy for that. Wheelfried, Charlotte, and Melchior both all called out Rosamine, saying, "You're the weird one for taking after Ferdinand." Yeah, unfortunately, that's what happens when you have an um, eccentric genius as your mentor and the person that, that raises you. All right, foundational magic. Um, so, oh, one of the things that we also have is, is this where where she's, she and greets with Bonifacius and Bonifacius is the one that carries her or like, I don't know if he is, this, is this a part where he carries her? Because she can't yeah, walk that Yeah, this is, this is the part where Bonifacius is like, I'm more comfortable carrying you now because you're more adult-sized compared to when you were a kid because I couldn't <laughs> oh, feel you really? then. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so so I, I found a meme that was kind of like silly but cute. Basically, have you seen the meme of like, um, here I'm showing it right now. Uh, when, like trying to carry when, a feather versus carrying like a phone. Yeah, so like when 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 uh, Bonifacius calls Rosamine heavier and it's it's better for him, she's like, oh, that's so sweet. But when Damiel called her heavier, she oh, got yeah. upset. Put me down, please. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it's just, that's just how it works. Appropriate, inappropriate. Um, mm. I guess it all, it all, it just matters if you're the grandpa. <laughs> Damiel rolled a one on charisma. <laughs> Poor thing. So let's see what else. So okay, let's return to the foundational magic. So she goes to talk to Sylvester. Once that door is closed and after some comedic happenings, Rosamine reveals that the foundation is located under the temple and that the Bible's key can be used as a secondary means of accessing the foundation in case that an ob in the case that an ob dies before they can pass on the foundation to the next generation. Now each Bible key can open any tool Bible but the key itself is unique to each duchy. There's a small face stone on the color of the corresponding duchy. Rosamine suggests that Sylvester is responsible for protecting the temple and is now known as a path to the foundation. So, Sylvester orders Rosamine to go to the temple immediately in order to check the key. Because we know that there have been people in the back, they were bad actors, they were they messed with the Bible, they messed with the key, they ch you remember how they uh, dyed the key another another color like somebody they messed with the mana and all that stuff in the key yeah, Re yes. Re Re registered. Mm -hmm. the whole temple 
full situation mm-hmm. happened where the Bible was swapped, mm-hmm. the key was swapped mm-hmm. too. Yeah, Notice. we learn in this book that the key was swapped. It wasn't just it wasn't just like redyed. It was altogether swiped, not just swiped uh, with like a like something that would look like a magic tool that resembled a key. No, it was swiped with an actual key of another duchy's foundation, which is insane. <laughs> Like, what is this plan? Yeah, like, I know. what is Georgie doing? I, I love, I love that it is just one huge misdirection. I know, it's one huge misdirection, and a failed plan to cover up the real plan. Uh huh. Uh huh. And Georgine is, she's shown to be extremely smart in mm-hmm. this. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because we talked about this in one of the chitchats. Like, what, what, what's with this plot hole? Like, it's just too convenient. It's just too blah blah blah. But. I think one one of us, one of you guys, uh, said like no because if, like when worst comes to worst, like when everything exploded, they would show like oh, Aaronfest stole Aaron's back key. They are bad. This is a reason why we have to go invade them to get our key back and stuff like that. So it was just another excuse for Aaron's back to go in into into Aaronfest because they were gonna blame. This was mm-hmm. for multiple mm-hmm. plans. There there were many multiple plans, but it's just um shows the things oh georgine yeah. does things it's basically it's like you thwart one trap that leads you into the direction of another trap which if you survive that it will lead you into another trap mm-hmm. plans <laughs> within plans within and plans. as expected in of most an cases, evil it'll genius be, in most cases it would always be orange box word of over Aaron fist anyway. yeah because they're a major duchy too status mm-hmm. yeah Georgine Septon. so they were going to blame uh, Aaron fist for stealing the key so when Rosamund goes to the temple, uh, first off, she has to plan about getting measurements, so she deals with that. But once once she... Oh, and also her temple retainers, they seem to be actually like not freaked out, or in her estimation, like they are okay with her sudden growth. They actually see it as a positive thing. Again, this is oh, Rosamund's vision. She's kind of... Her perception is not quite there, as we have agreed. Um, Hartmut. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Yes, thank you to Hartmut, who Hartmut. was the, who's responsible for having brainwashed them and prepared them psychologically and emotionally, so they can be thankful and praiseful of her growth, rather than be like, "What?" So she has a more the, relaxing. The brainwashing atmosphere. will continue until morale improves. <laughs> yes, brainwashing for morale for sure. Now Rosamund announces that trouble is coming soon. Orders her attendants to be on guard checks the key, notices that it's light purple, has a tiny little face stone that has the Aaron back, and um, she comes to the realization that Georgine might not care about either duchy. She only wants revenge, which she can do so by simply destroying the foundation instead of taking it over. Now this is scary, because Georgine is not just there to... Um, this, uh, one thing is like take over the duchy and rule it with a fair hand and differently than her brother Sylvester, but if this is like an act of vengeance and wrath, then who knows what this woman is is after, right? Uh, so, one of the other memes that somewhere, oh jeez, I keep, I have so many memes. Dude, so I have like 37 memes for this volume, and I had to cut down on them too. <laughs> good but, memes. Good, good memes, lots of good memes, uh, but I can't find them now. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Anyway. Cut out, Magpie! You downloaded and these! You got ready! The yes, last night! You can do it! It's much harder to defend against an enemy that does not care about self-preservation. Hmm, for sure. Yep. Yeah, that is true. So, um... Well, I'm giving up on this, I guess, for now. <laughs> Alright, so no. Georgie... Yeah, I'll, I'll find it eventually. I, I don't know why it didn't transfer. Anyway, <clears throat> continuing on, we have Georgine. It's, it's just a stupid meme that's like, uh, Georgine is angry, up Aaron's, up Aaron, uh, Aaron's back gives her the, uh, gives her the keys to like, what she wants to become up, but she's like, I don't want to up, I want the Aaron Fest. Anyway, <clears throat> so, uh, let's see. She returns, anxiety and meeting. She returns to warn Sylvester immediately, but is told that they will have to meet the following day at dinner, so she's like, oh my god gosh like i can't believe i have to wait with this urgent information but she has to she has to go and do her clothes and oh my gosh she has to get measured 
Uh, but lo and behold, who does she see in the process of getting measured? Anybody remember? Julie! 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 Precious Julie! Julie got our angel! Yes. yes, and here we have another illustration um, of Tuli and Rosamine. So Tuli is now a big girl and she is now able to go to the nobles district because she has worked really hard as Karina's assistant. So she goes to measure Rosamine and um, obviously and she she's shocked. She's full of boobs. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, that... that well, um, although although, although this time Rosamine, Rosamine is definitely the bigger sister. <laughs> yeah. yeah, Tuli is throwing right into that. <laughs> Yep, uh, Tuli is uh, confronted with uh, what happened to the first wife. <laughs> She's confronted with all that growth. <laughs> yeah. uh, it's an enormous plot. Yeah, it's yeah. it's it's plot. <laughs> Someone in chat said it. it's like Rosamine is bigger than Brunhilde in like a specific way. Oh yes, yeah. yeah. Let us let us not forget that Brunhilde's clothes fit pretty well, except for the chest area, which was kind of tight. Hmm. What yeah. does that yeah. say? Just, <laughs> what just does a that imply? Mm -hmm. I'm reading the story for the plot. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> sure you are. Sure. <laughs> oh yeah, totally for the, the plot. There's, there's nothing nefarious going on here. It's a great plot, you mm, know? Mm, mm. Um and so there's Tuli. Oh, there was another meme. Man, it's so hard to get through these memes. Okay, here we go. <laughs> this is for you guys. Um this is from Kat Cadasterize, who is our amazing meme meme lord. Meme lady. <laughs> Exactly. Uh, yep. Meme person. So, yeah, meme person. All right. So, we have uh, after. So, okay. Rosamine is talking with her female retainers about her clothes and comes up with the idea of combining Brunhild's clothing designs with Aaron's back cloth and flower petal designs to make it more distinct, to which her retainers agree. They all meet with the Simsters. Tuli finally sees Rosamine after the events of the Academy. She is shocked. And that is the end of anxiety and meeting. Anything else about this chapter besides the plot? P L O T. <laughs> uh, not really. Okay. That's it's a pretty big plot. Point. That's a pretty it's big a plot. Pretty it's self-explanatory, <laughs> though. It's self-explanatory. <laughs> I'm still a bit gushed by the fact that she has something so critical to tell Sylvester. They're like, no, you have to go get dressed. I know. <laughs> I'm like, I mean, so literally the sky is about to fall. Yeah. But you must Beto look pretty. Like, that was a big talking point in part two. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Like, come on. Like, uh, I know, I know, I get it. Like, the duchy might fail, and but we still have to make sure that she gets her clothes. And Sylvester tells her to wait for, like, another day. Ugh, jeez. <laughs> I mean, so I mean she, cannot, she cannot go without clothes, so she had to wait. <laughs> I mean, you do strike a point, but she could just wear uh, Brunhild's clothes, right? No, she cannot. <laughs> yes. I know. It's she can't wear to do it. I know. Remember, I know. <laughs> in Aramfest, clothes <laughs> forever. Mm -hmm. In Aramfest, you must dress pretty to be telling the truth. If you dress ugly, you're telling lies. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's that, that is the new uh, canon. All right. Spoken like that, then. <laughs> Uh, let's see, who else do we have? Okay, so how to protect them. Rosamine meets with Sylvester and explains that their current key belongs to Aaron's back. Sylvester is worried and explains that having another, another duchess key could be used as an excuse to attack or harass Aaronfest. She suggests advancing her adoption process in order to get the authority necessary to stop Aaron's back, but Sylvester disagrees, stating that she should, become, she should not become a royal just to save one duchy. As Zent needs to protect all the duchies, and her mindset is not suited for this task. It's a good thing she's not going to be Zent, so he says, or he thinks. Um, Sylvester has a heart-to-heart -heart with her one last time. He says that he, she should never have had to take so much responsibility, and should have only had to spend her days making books and new inventions in the lower city. He tells her that she should pile all of her work onto others in order to secure a better life for himself. <laughs> and then I love that crazier who crazier I think it was crazy. I don't know what part crazy did and what parts listed, but I listed added, that. <laughs> like, the parts oh, there you go. Like he does. Oh <laughs> 
yeah that's his that's his mo and he's advising her to do the same um well yeah. sylvester you might be a precious himbo who tries but rosamine is uh she is the gremlin who does so she she's she's held to a uh, higher uh she has higher um capabilities and more responsibility and she has a sense of duty more than you do <laughs> all right <clears throat> anything else about this but chapter? also like sylvester is mm -hmm. trying to protect rosine yes, in his own way mm -hmm. it's so uh, like that's what sylvester's been doing this whole time he's yeah. like rosine i need to protect her she is someone that is very precious to us mm -hmm. she helps us a lot and uh the he he's been there for Rosemine this whole time, unlike certain people, um, Florencia, <laughs> um, and uh, has been Poor protecting. Her. Yeah, <laughs> Poor Florencia, we run her over several times just today, <laughs> and she's not. Uh, she doesn't even do bad things in this one. I think. Now there's no. people in the chat that say like they really they this made me love Sylvester. Deviant's purple hay says this made me love Sylvester. Yeah. Uh, I, I've always liked yeah. Sylvester for all his shortcomings. <laughs> Can I interject? Okay. Are you going to say I feel you like don't this is... love Sylvester? <laughs> Absolutely, I love Georgine. I was going to interject and say that this felt like this felt more like Sylvester was confessing that he piled a lot of stuff on her shoulders, mm -hmm. and he's just telling her right now because if he told her later when she's calm and knows what's going on she might be angry at him oh. but now this time he can pretend oh, he did, uh, uh, he's being a very sly noble oh he's doing it after she's getting gonna leave Aaron but she doesn't tell her while he's burdening her with work hey it makes sense uh <laughs> yeah oh, you got a point like there this. but it, since i am biased into i'm a sylvester apologist in a way uh and well, he's just a big man tries. child okay he's 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 fun <laughs> but i do appreciate how like she recognizes like she herself when she's talking talking here like she recognizes <laughs> how much sylvester does for her and she appreciates it sylvester the... sacrifices so much and, and I, I i love this part almost as much as her uh mother daughter moment with with elvira mm -hmm. just for the fact that that uh sylvester finally lets down his noble facade and he's like look i am pissed for you because they shouldn't be loading all this stuff on you you're you're just one girl and you're a child no less yeah they're they're, they're the royal family this should be their responsibility and that's the man that's been piling so much onto rosemond all this time well, honestly, True. he's been piling up stuff on Rosemine that Rosemine wants to do most of it, actually. And actually, that it's mostly true. to do with her printing industry mm. that he's been piling up work on her because temple. she wants to, yeah. to do it. She's making trends. That and, that and she's been the only person to successfully negotiate less work for herself from him. Now, yeah. we have to be fair, though. Like, all this stuff with the royals, he didn't put that on her. She put it on herself when she... she totally ignored their warnings not to get involved with the royals so all of that extra work just happened because she didn't listen to advice otherwise she would have just yeah. spent her days in the I royal mean, academy doing that's not stuff. entirely fair because <laughs> she encountered the royals in the royal academy and they did not prepare her properly or her attendants to handle the royals for her so <laughs> she just got hit they did try to tell her steer clear of them stop stop interacting with them yeah. yeah, I think that they still ended up interacting. With them. The, the dream times. screwed everybody yeah. over. She should have had those two years to like practice nobility, noble talk, understand, and sh it's the dream that screwed everybody over. It really did. Honestly, yeah, that that darn person who poisoned her. Yeah, it's all Elvira's fault for not being a good mom. Ah, no, don't you she dare talk that way about our mother <laughs> elvira she's a queen she deserves our respect yes elvira is the queen I, she is awesome she is you awesome. say that yeah. in front of a group of elvira stands <laughs> yeah <laughs> yes i support georgine your words do not hurt me you're about to be it's, muted right now it's not a fair it's not a fair fight unless the deck is completely stacked against you <laughs> back, on, back on track please uh, okay okay no. yes no. We're, 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 uh, discussing the, we're discussing the story, so it's still under. 
<laughs> All right, we are. We have a band who's called over band. So here it is. We are one, two hours and 39 minutes into the chat. Let's get going. I don't know how long this is going to take. We're in chapter 13 out of 21. Let's go. Two thirds of the way there. Hoo -hoo. Preparing for war. Rosamine suggests that. Oh, hold on a second. Wait. Hold on. Rosalind suggests that all members of the Archducal family start making magic tools similar to the ones that were used during the bride taking dinner match with Dunkelfelder. She also suggests using the commoner soldiers to attack with means other than mana, like throwing waste at them to force them to remove their silver cloth. <laughs> you know, it's just She's a menace. Stuff. She has to think outside the box, right? Uh, Rosamine <laughs> makes her <laughs> battle. Hmm. Nozomai makes her battle shoe mills with the help of both Clarissa and Harmut. Harmut suggests using the knights to make the simple brews and having all of the scholars focus on making the more complex magic tools. She enters the room in order to check the Book of Wisdom. She reaches out to grab a bag that contains the praise-filled magic tool when she notices that the bag has a false bottom. After opening the hidden pocket, she finds a paper covered face stone and a paper written by Ferdinand stating that the face stone is that of a man named, ooh, here it comes, Quinta. And asks that, and Wait, tasks her with I keeping it safe. Name. Right, where did we hear that name? Hmm. Where, where have I learned this name before? Hmm. hmm. So he tasks her with keeping it for him. <laughs> Which is weird because if you if you have somebody's name, why would you like give it away to somebody else? Like you're supposed to keep it with your yeah. life. So okay, but Ferdinand is being Ferdinand and relying on the fact that he always does all these un inexplic inexplicable things. So oh well. I, I remember reading this part and thinking, wait, did Ferdinand just give her his name? Yes, he did. <laughs> he did. Oh my gosh. I do have a question on that. Okay, what is your Didn't question? Didn't Ferdinand say his name was taken by Veronica? No, no. his name was no. father. Oh. No, he implied that he gave it to someone else. Mm -hmm. He wanted um, he said, to think it was Veronica, mm -hmm. but it wasn't. Yeah, he so, only said, you're just like your grandmother. She also asked for my name or she also demanded my name. But basically, he, he used words to like not say the truth but he also technically yeah. did not lie he, didn't lie. he just gave false he let her he let her assume yes yes yeah he, just had dumb he let her assume but originally what he was basically saying is that originally um his uh, father had his name this mm -hmm. is mm -hmm. oh. yeah. and then he just had it but was implying that he did that he had given it already to oh, a right. certain woman called veronica I don't right. think that's. I don't think that part was said in the light novel so far. Yeah, let's let's. Yeah. Oh, so, shoot, sorry. Let's go. Uh, now, she. They managed to. Okay, they managed to make three of them, uh, based on the document searching tool. So based on they managed to make three shoe mills, based on the stuff that Hersher uh, worked on, and Lizalita gave gave them names uh, one of them is adrid in order to keep them from constantly using mana they will have the guards hold face stones filled with mana who will activate them when an attack happens so they have the shoe mills they're del delightful little shoe mills they would they would never do you any harm of course right right adrid look at the combat shoe mill. look <laughs> at it look Aww. they're adorable Ooh, we all bunnies. know we all know that uh, for those of us, uh, for a lot of people, they're already like, oh, it's the Monty Python <laughs> uh, shoe mill or whatever. <laughs> so let me see. Oh, the Terminator shoe mill. Mm -hmm. uh, Vincent, there give us go. the death bunnies. Hmm? Oh, yeah. Death during, bunnies, the death bunnies. during the read along, Vincent was the death bunnies. Yes, indeed. Yeah. <laughs> but also, a, a dread was the name of a non-combat bunny. It was the only one who works in the library. Oh, Obviously, okay. we don't have a name. Mm, okay. So they, and a dread is the word for need, what I found really <laughs> funny. Mm. Yeah. So they are prepared... If you imagine who oh. named her. Uh-huh. You good? Oh. <clears throat> so... 
we have after that after they talk about all these preparations that they're gonna do for the um for defense there's a lot of stuff that they're gonna do but um next this short chapter called camille's baptism uh we see our favorite little um little boy who is now all grown up he's now seven years old and he's so, gonna yeah he's after, so this was one of my favorite parts and it, it came right before the actual baptismal uh mm -hmm. celebration it was when Fran was talking to Roy's mind and talking about how everything she did in the temple was Aww. she she did good for everybody and brought everybody up just by being there. Aww. Just pointing out his appreciation. Aww. Imagine Fran, who knows that Ferdinand has left and Rosamine is gonna leave. Like it's just so bittersweet for him. Uh, He's losing everyone. I yeah, know. he says something later about all his his masters leaving him. Yeah, leaving him behind. Oh, oh phrasing, phrasing. It's so heartbreaking. Yeah, you are absolutely one hundred percent right. Um, yeah, that's a good one. So I, that's a very good one. I, I totally forgot about it. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, by the way, I, 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 I was tearing up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, what was it, Naomi? The the fact that I said the face down that was a, uh, the face down thing with Ferdinand that was mentioned in part five volume nine so I, we're fine. Part five or part four? Part four volume nine. Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> I was about to say part you know five volume nine. We're not good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I I don't I yeah I at this point sometimes I don't know what's pre pub what's web novel what's so I'm calling you I was guys. like I'm pretty sure I'm holding Dave, the pre so gang. Uh, I'm I'm hoping that they can help me. Um, yeah, I had to rewrite oh, the book just to get my mind in the right place. Thank you, thank the, you. This deep into the into light novel, we we are prone to get stuff just absolutely mixed up. And light yeah. novel people, we love you, but please forgive us if we slip up. Really. <laughs> I did your up today, didn't you? I don't think we had any major slip ups this session. Good. Let's keep it that way. Knock on wood right now. Not everybody knock on wood. <laughs> I don't have to Yeah, we we definitely didn't have the <laughs> magpie give something up in spoilers. Alright, you guys, it's not just me. Not my rebellious me. side is like saying challenge exception. I had to delete something on our on the Discord voice chat though. I was like, you guys. Yeah. So all oh, right. God. <laughs> okay, so we have Camille's baptism. Rosamine asks Melchior if she can perform the commoner uh, baptism ceremony, and he agrees. She performs Camille's baptism and her last ceremony as the High Bishop before her move to the Sovereignty. She is happy that, although her family looked a little bit surprised at her growth, they were not put off. They were like pleased and proud, because re let's remember you guys, this little girl was about to die so many times and they and a, a lot of Aoife's babies they died either in infancy or before they were born so the odds were stacked against her and the fact that she made it so far and she grew up to her proper age imagine how how happy her parents feel at this point oh, so beautiful <laughs> i feel like it was a bit underway i feel like the book should have like put more into the fact that um they saw her adult ver like old grown-up version mm -hmm. this chapter should have been a side story yeah and, and this this so this spawned a line from rosemine that also had me tearing up where she's looking at her family and saying they're so far away so so far away oh yeah. boy it was so sad yeah. And also the way it was written, mm -hmm. it felt like it was written by someone like under deathbed or bleeding out. <laughs> I know. I mean, she she from her perspective, she's about to leave to the to to the sovereignty, so she, and she might like, never see the them connection again. might be permanently sure. severed. I mean, she is going to take them, but they're not going to be able to like she's they're going to be like crafts people. They're not going to be able to have the same ability to see each other or whatever. So oh, it's going to be different. Um, but she will have heart mode. <laughs> yes, she will Put have heart mode. Past, past messages and so on. Mm. Yeah. Now, a man who's aware. Mm -hmm. 
All right, so let me see if there were any memes for this one. Man, I have to scroll through this. I can't there's find any memes right now. But anyway, let us continue on. Um, the images, hmm? <laughs> What's up? The images were pretty. Yeah, the images were really pretty. <laughs> you guys did a great job. No, like actually, like the photo where everyone's surrounding Camille, like you just in the image, you actually see Rosemine's like longing face mm -hmm. of like. Oh, I wish I could be with them right now. Like it, that, like mm -hmm. it's just portraying her uh, feelings mm -hmm. perfectly. Moment, you know, yeah. like it really good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I'm just, so I'm just watching like one of the comments in in the ch in the chat. It's like uh, Aki Hana says, "Whoa, I legitimately, I legit those stuff." The live started 1 a.m. here, and it's now quarter to 4 a.m. <laughs> I told you, I, I was it you or Amaya? I told one of you guys, like, you know what? Probably when you wake up, the chit chat will still be going. And you guys, I sense a break because I need to refill my water. I need to get a snack. I don't know. I'm just, I don't know, you guys. We'll see. We'll see. I'm still good. You guys good? Or do you guys need a break? We cannot make breaks. Oh, that's, that's right. I forget. Fine. Europe Gang and and Babbitt. We don't want to keep you guys too 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 awake. So everybody's still fine. I'm still fine. So let us double go. speed. All right. <laughs> All right. Let's do this then. I hope you guys took. It. By the way, Europe, 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 and Africa Gang. I hope you guys took a nap. So let's go. Yeah, Matt, you're the only person that I stuck until. But we do still have two hours until prepub. Yes, yeah. that's right. Okay. Yeah. And it's just. Yeah, and it's just like you're the only person that has to constantly talk. The rest of us could just not talk and like get coffee or whatever. Jeez, I want to talk and get, I want to so, get coffee and chocolate and so you can yeah. you can go get yourself some tea or something and we can all fill up the, the empty space with. <laughs> no, uh, I, I'm okay right now. Mindless chatter. Maybe in about I, I don't know, know yeah. half an hour. I maybe can be Jordan's heart mode if you want. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it's just like uh, we <laughs> could just spend. We could spend the entire time making fun of French. If and if anything, I would leave yes. crazy since crazy is our senior member. Crazy is like senior among all of you, you guys. Did you guys know that? Crazy has been yeah. the longest member in this chat. So he is. And I would I leave. I would leave crazy in charge because one, he's the one that knows the outline inside and <laughs> backwards and forwards because he's one of the ones that made it, and also he's senior amongst you. And a zen. So I don't know, man. He's just old. So we can call him daddy. You can call him daddy. Yes, yeah, yeah, please, no. Please, if you guys please want. no. <laughs> that, that's his new title, daddy. Oh, shit. Crazy. <laughs> crazy. Okay, I'm sorry about this, crazy. I'm so sorry about this. I did not mean for the conversation. <laughs> oh, no, no. Oh, no. All right. <clears throat> <laughs> all right you guys, you guys are hilarious all right we <laughs> have to get going defense meeting <clears throat> rosamine makes further preparation for leaving with retainers before um the defense meeting in the afternoon during the meeting sylvester explains how he believes georgine plans to attack he also believes that she will attack before the next Archduke conference when Ferdinand will be married into Anne's back. So during around the time of spring prayer and a little bit after, so between that that window of time. Also, he just has like this gut instinct, which is interesting. Um, this is his belief. Like we'll talk more about this in future volumes about how he has like this kind of like instinct. <laughs> So, Sylvester and his magical gut. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> now, Sylvester's gonna defend the foundation uh, because he's the ob and it is his duty. Like, an ob that cannot defend his foundation is not suited to do ob stuff. Uh, it's not suited to be ob. Karsten and his knights will defend the city in general. Bonifacius and his knights will reinforce other provinces under attack. Florencia and Charlotte's guards will protect the castle. And Wilfried and his, uh, and his guard will guard the uh, noble's quarter. Rosamund's like, what am I gonna do? Uh, but, you know, since we don't know, since they don't know when exactly she's gonna leave for the sovereignty, they did not include her in this defense plan. So she's, well, she's like, well, am I just gonna like, you know, fiddle my, like twiddle my thumbs while everybody's doing things? So they're like, okay, just 
help us in defense if an attack happens around the central district. So she's like, cool. So uh, they also talk about the shoe mills. She tells them, yeah, we got these shoe mills to defend the temple. And soon after that, um, she hears... Uh, while she, while they're all at the meeting, she hears Ferdinand's voice in her head, and a bright rainbow light blinded her. Oh, oh my goodness! This part, you guys. Okay, 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 okay. And right, right. Okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> she just hears like Rosamine, and she's like, "What?" No, it was it was more like a panic, like Rosamine. Okay, can you do it since you've been reading Ferdinand? Rose can you do mine. it? Come Rosemine. Oh yeah, like that. Rosemine. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Daddy Crazy. <laughs> it's, it's, it's it's stuck. It's happening. <laughs> uh, just, look, just look at the YouTube chat. I'd I'd rather be called the Lord the Lord Master of Jurgen Schmidt. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Daddy. Uh, the yeah, chat. Just, the just chat. Look at, oh God, the YouTube chat is just wow. The chat. <laughs> I don't even want to look at the YouTube chat. loves it, so it's it's stuck. Your, oh your boy, title, your title it's is now stuck. Daddy Crazy. Daddy chat. <laughs> They've embraced it. <laughs> All right. Thank you for doing Ferdinand. Um, <laughs> crazy. Uh, anybody who wants to do Ferdinand uh, also can do it. And yeah, you can help. Yeah, me. Like, I believe I was just somebody else trying to be Rosa Mine. Please. Oh, Kadir also does it. So okay, good job, Kadir. Um, Telling that man right there. <laughs> Red Tempest is being <laughs> <laughs> doing his thing in chat. All right. <clears throat> Continuing on. Okay, yep. so let's talk about this. Noemi, are you ready to talk about this? Do you feel the excitement? I'm, I'm so... Yeah. I'm, I'm so excited. ready. I'm, I'm so, so, ready. So, so ready. I am so ready, you guys. Danger be held. Okay. So Rosamine finds herself in a manor replenishment hall with Ferdinand on the floor and Letizia running toward him. She tries to interact with them, but they cannot hear her and she cannot uh, touch anything. So Ferdinand gives Letizia three names, stone cocoons, and tells her to give them to Eustace. And she's, he's like, yeah, tell them to go. So basically it's an order. They apparently maybe had some kind of plan. Like if something happens, do this. I don't know. Anyway, let, after Letizia leaves, Rosamine sees Detland enter the, the hall. And Detland is upset that the poison didn't kill him instantly. She explains that Leonzio told her everything and that she would become zent with his help. She also, she also like, I hated this part, you guys, so much because Detland mocks his past, like something that Ferdinand is already so sensitive about. She mocks his past and rubs it, like, rubs it all over, like, just, ah, ah, I need to, yeah, like, she's, she's ah, like, why would I ever marry a creature such as you? Kill impulses have been activated <laughs> here. Magpie's about to poke her eyes out and... Ah! <laughs> anyway. Just getting ready oh, to I move. love that Lynn. I know. Um, so... Oh, I love... I know you do. Love that Lynn. So, Detlin reveals that... So cool. Yeah, when when Ferdinand's <laughs> like, you can't be a Zent because you're already an Ob, and she's like, well, <laughs> guess what? Joke's on you. I'm not the one that died the foundation. It was my sister. So I am primed and ready to take on the Zent role with Leonzio by my side. And you are gonna die, and therefore I will be able to marry him. So Ferdinand tries to use an exploding yep. magic tool, but it doesn't have much of an effect thanks to Detlin wearing a silver cloth. Now, Detlin, Detlin puts a piece of candy which contains an antidote and uses again a bag of powder on Ferdinand but it still doesn't kill him because he has Rosamine's charm. Uh, it just paralyzes him and she uses uh, stab sealing bracelets on him and places his hand on the replenishment circle in order to drain him of his mana. And basically like he closes his eyes and he's like, he like after all that's been happening, he just closes his eyes and like, okay, fine, whatever. Like kind of like tired, frustrated, disillusioned, just, he just like closes his eyes and gives up and i'm like no don't meanwhile rosamine is like oh my gosh she's like no she's like freaking out I, oh yeah. rosamine is basically watching a live snuff film of her best yes like, friend yes oh my gosh okay noemi you're cutting off because of your volume <laughs> just letting you know you're talking so loud that this court is cutting you off take a breath oh sorry and do it um, 
Is this is this better? Am I now more calm? Understood. Yes, you are doing better now. You were a little too excited earlier. Yeah. Mm. Okay, so I will try to keep my calm. Mm-hmm. Um. <laughs> oh my god, I love this word. part. It is one of my favorite. Surf and chat. Uh, I agree I, with you. I am. <laughs> the chat can say anything they want about that land. I will do not care. Um. <laughs> I, I have grown an attachment to this character just because I play her now, um, I, and I, I cannot remember, let it go. And I, I remember when we were reading this part, you scared everybody. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, I could do it all over yeah, again. Yeah, but not I right now. Very much happy <laughs> we don't to do want it. you to scare us again. <laughs> We've had enough Detland. <laughs> Honestly. <laughs> um, but you Honestly, do an excellent I would do it Detland. Any day ever. You do an excellent job. Well, thank talent. you. Yes, yes, you do. Anyway, uh, <laughs> this part is one of my favorite parts just because Detlin is in it. And also because we get to see her true face and her cruelty mm -hmm. and her actual thought process. Mm -hmm. And also the fact that she is clearly saying, <laughs> I prefer Leonzio over you because at least Leonzio loves me and shows me that he loves me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Girl, yeah. you literally um, fell for Ferdinand. You got seduced by yeah, him, what do you mean? Like, <laughs> well, for Ferdinand, really. Oh, jeez. And- But also, mm -hmm. like, um, the fact that, uh, that I don't- If I go back to just, like, the moments that I- The reason why I love this chapter so much is because it plays on our emotions a mm -hmm. lot about the situation, and it's- It did an amazing job sh uh, playing off our emotions and our love for these characters and our hatred for other characters, and- Mm -hmm. Really showing off um, her cruelty, mm -hmm. the uh, devious plan from Georgine, and putting in motion everything we're going to see later on. And yeah. it's really great. It's amazing. I, could, I couldn't have asked for a better chapter for Deadland. Yeah, and I love, you know, we always have like, I always complain when like, <laughs> you, have, you have like, okay, you guys know like the Scooby-Doo villain effect? Like they catch the villain and the villain spills everything, like every secret. He's, or like other movies where like the villain's like, yeah, you're gonna die, so I'm gonna tell you all of my, all of my evil plans and ha 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 ha. And Detlin is just like all the other villains. She spills every single one of Georgine's plans and all these things. Cartoon villain. Cartoon villain. Yeah, she's doing all the things. And it's amazing because, uh, Rosamine is listening to it all, of course, which is awesome and timely. Um, and basically, you guys, like, I have to, like, res mad respect the for Georgine. Window. Mad respect for Georgine, though. Like, the fact that so many people, like, like, Ferdinand was almost untouchable, but, like, she's the one that brought him, almost brought him down. Like, honestly, to bring down the Lord of Darkness like that, amazing. Lord of Evil, mm -hmm. Ferdinand has been brought down by another Lord of Evil, mm -hmm. Georgine. No one suspects the bimbo. Oh, that's right. Uh, is, Georgine's plan has been in motion for so long mm -hmm. that she had so many Plan Bs mm -hmm. and Cs and and F. And we'll like, talk she, more her, about those later, though. And another in a way, mm -hmm. that's why she's using serial numbers for her plans. <laughs> yeah. In a way, yeah. if you think yeah. about it. Mm -hmm. That Lynn is the best girl in the whole story because she's the only one who know, actually right? manages to stop Georgine. <laughs> we'll talk about that later. <laughs> later. Later. <laughs> yeah. But it's just pretty pretty interesting how um like everybody like everybody seems to have a plan. No one can tell me otherwise. So everybody has a plan in Georgine's machinations and I just have a feeling that the fact that she <laughs> That Detlin is like, oh well, this is like, who's gonna? Nobody's gonna get in because of these things. Like, like he's as good as dead. I like. I think this is the only flaw. The weakest link in Georgine's plans is her own daughter, which I love. I love so much. Oh. <laughs> um. Oh. So we'll Devin see what happens. Hmm? You're cutting Air. off, Noemi. Air. No, I mean, I think you're. you're I think Dylan is such an airhead. She's like, la 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 la. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. such the airhead of Dylan. Yeah, we should have a picture oh, next to the word Hello? two of Dylan. 
I think that Lean is the true saint of Aronfest. She's the one who protects <laughs> Aronfest. Oh my gosh. Well, that's taking a little too far. <laughs> but okay, oh, if you want. That <laughs> The gods created and, it like I was because saying, they uh, hated Georgine. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll see. So, back to the... Anything else about this chapter you guys want to talk about? Like, just about the vision, like how... Uh, I already talked about how I wanted to murder <laughs> uh, Detlin at this point. And I know uh, we talked about Detlin, but anything <laughs> outside of outside of Detlin uh, in this chapter? I wonder anything exactly how long... Huh? I wonder exactly how long Rosamine was just standing there, like, in the vision. Was it just, like, was she just standing still because she was stunned? Or was she just standing still, unresponsive the entire duration of the vision in real time? Who knows? Also, I, I how long was time. the vision? Hmm? For it's in real time because she was experiencing in real time. There is a short yep. story. There is a short story. I don't know if it's going to come up in future volumes in the pre-pubs or if it's a... Uh, original story but be on the lookout for it like if it's like for a short story or a story extra but it's from sylvester point of view and everybody who is watching rosamine during the meeting while she's having her vision or she receives the will like it tells us how how it happens so um be on the lookout for that i'm not gonna give details about it because i don't know if it's gonna happen in the future volume or if it's We'll talk about it I later. I think we're well past that because Ferdinand has already been rescued. Will. Shh. Because we would have had it in pre pub if it was Magpie. Yeah. We would have had it in pre pub. Kadir. <laughs> Not certain. Okay. Oh. Uh, I just wanted to point out that um, she, Deadline just went in there for one job only <laughs> to make she, sure Freddy's <laughs> dead. She had one and job. And it's like she spent so much time and he's still alive. I mean, that girl, I mean, at this point, if you asked her to like breathe air, I think she would suffocate. <laughs> <laughs> so Deadline is in. I think that's my favorite Deadline ins insult. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I think she has a device, a, a magic tool, but it's like. Um, beef in, beef out, beef in, beef out. <laughs> Thomas, Thomas, hold yes. on a second, hold on a second. We do remember who actually is going is guilty of this, so do not be so harsh because Rosamine is the one that <laughs> needed to be reminded to breathe out. Uh, remember when? Yeah, oh yeah, I forgot the, about that. <laughs> yeah, with the like, a, like, like, stop it, you fool! Like, calm yourself, breathe in, and she breathed in, and she she kept breathing in and breathing out, but she was waiting for she him to breathe, breathe out. But like, <laughs> yeah, with like the Brunhilda marriage proposal. Yeah, so don't yeah. be so harsh, <laughs> but it makes sense. Like, oh goodness gracious, what does this say about our precious gremlin? <laughs> All right. <clears throat> uh, precious gremlin gets overwhelmed by emotions. Yeah, that's what. Happened. Honestly, Unlike if I had just, to, if, it's, it's like knowing that your father's gonna marry your best friend, like that kind of age gap, kind of like, or maybe like a friend, like your high school classmate, or like your yeah. college classmate, not high school classmate. Well, kind of high school classmate because she uh, Brunhild is still underage, so damn. She's still in the academy. <laughs> She's still in the academy at the time. <laughs> <laughs> she's in her last year though i believe yeah that's true all right when she's a still senior academy dang all right so oh my gosh i'm still at this slide okay i still ha i'm still showing uh that one okay so the, yeah you're still showing yeah, that i know Georgine. damn you must really like Georgine. i bet navi was very happy all right temptation uh, when rosamine comes back from what she saw she tells sylvester what happened to ferdinand Boniface just tells her to give up, give up on him. Rescuing him from another Duchess replenishment hall is impossible. Rosamine reacts badly to this, saying that she was only joining the royal family to save Ferdinand. She makes her conviction clear and asks if it were possible, would they help to save to save him. Would they help her to save him. Wilfred is the first to agree with her, which is surprising to us all, stating that, well, she's not even part of their defense plan, so she should be able to do what she wants. However, her flying to another duchy with only her retainers is not safe. And as she's joining the, fa the royal family soon, she also needs to be protected. They also need a good enough excuse to invade Aaron's back. 
Rosamine gives a good enough reason, yes, stating that as Ehrensback is planning to depose the current royal family, it is her responsibility as a future royal to dispose of a rebellion in the making. Rosamine asks Sylvester if he can contact up Dunkelfelger, to which he says he can, but is she sure she wants to involve other duchies? So we have Dunkelfelger, and uh, this is actually one of my favorite illustrations in the book because it's the first time that I feel, well, it's not maybe not the first time, but it's like, she looks so beautiful here. Like she's, she's yeah. so pretty. She's so pretty. Like, oh my God. Well, she wasn't so pretty in the Thule one, where she actually looks grown up. But like in this one, like she just looks more like she's for wearing, a certain reason. Yeah, she's yeah, yeah. She's wearing uh grown-up clothes here and she looks like it's she's in her full majesty of like grown-up Rosamine, which I love. Uh so we have of course uh Daddy Dunkelfelger, he's like, Wow! And you know that <laughs> somebody else is gonna be the same. His son, I bet, is gonna be like, Wow! Oh my oh, gosh. Oh no, she's hot. <laughs> oh, no. That's she's right. hot. Yes, yes. Oh, that's a lot. Heart will be even more broken. Oh man, yeah. No, <laughs> just oh, that's a lot. Oh no! Oh no! He's hot. <laughs> okay, calm down. The yeah. best part is that they kept their, their tradition of uh, every year playing uh, treasure stealing Dieter. Mm-hmm. Yep. Mm-hmm. So, let me see, somebody, who messaged me? You should turn it. I think it's uh, Liz. Oh. oh, I see, I didn't, sorry, no, uh, somebody else messaged me. Thank you, Nabi, for the oh. thing. I'll, I'll do it next time. Because uh, <laughs> um, I, I, I can't figure it out right now. All right. <clears throat> Such pretty pictures. Yes, we have pretty pictures. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Uh, she looks so nice. Yes. I know, right? <laughs> I'm just waiting to show up now i'm just like <laughs> yours is gonna show up soon yeah all right so mm -mm. yeah clothes it's see facial oh. expression gillen paris says see sylvester was right clothes are important um, i know right <laughs> yeah. clothes are important Fine. yeah Fine. i just want to say i just love how just like um kind yet smug her face looks oh yeah <laughs> this is all oh, right this is putting all of her noble training at work. Everything is here. Like, she's just like, I will invite you to a game of dinner. Not just any game of dinner, a true game of dinner. Um, like, she's inviting him to take tea, right? <laughs> He's, oh my God. She was, ro she was born in the wrong duchy, my guy. <laughs> so I love this person because- through and through, it's so funny. Like, Okay, uh, I love this part because Ab Dunkelfelger was like, "We we screwed up royally by not getting you into Dunkelfelger." Oh and yes. Then she, she, then she drops a big bomb. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What about the, just like outside terrorists? Oh yeah. Well, then the that, fact that the that fact she that, can. Oh yeah. So first, the, the fact that she can mm -hmm. teleport into the uh, yeah. the country gate. Yeah. <laughs> she she. Uh, she basically is like, yeah, meet me at the country gate. I will be there. And only the Zents can do that, you guys. So he's like, oh! <laughs> so, yeah, is like, oh, I'm supporting you now. Another thing. The way I, I love Sylvester's exasperation is like, god damn, you really know how to motivate people. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because she can like do all the Zen stuff. She, she technically you learned from Venno. <laughs> I mean, oh, don't more than, more than follow her because they recognize her as Zen. Mm -hmm. I mean, she's the missing thing, so maybe she should. Yeah, this is my her. favorite part, by the way. The ki the conversation between Optical Felger and Rosemine. Oh yes, <laughs> this is also one uh, of my I like, favorite. I like I like when she's like, so I have to bribe you. <laughs> like like. <laughs> I, I need, you need more reason to help me during the invasion. Oh, and there's the emotional. Well, I didn't, didn't want to have to do this. The but. emotional damage. Ow! <laughs> right. The emotional All right. damage. So, Liz, are you also for this part? Are you also uh, putting yourself down as one of your favorites? Okay, there's two. So, Is only two? Who else? Okay, three. 
Who else? Of course. I really liked it too. Okay. Of course I'm putting it too. Me awesome. Too. Okay, we have five people. Wow. Uh, and anything with Dungo Fog is always a treat. That is always a treat. Dungle Are you also down for this one, uh, Babbit? <laughs> yeah, I'd say so. Okay. Thomas Did 70 on the things. chat. I see you glowing. Thank you so much $2. for your support. Yay! Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thomas, you should just join us over here. <laughs> at this point, the amount of money point, you're spending on at this, at this point, Thomas, <laughs> you should just you should just join Kofi and do it directly through Kofi, Thomas, and you can just join it, us anytime you want. And for me, it, it for me it took a few months of donating before I actually just decided to like fucking join the Discord. Yeah. <laughs> well, it, the invitation Come is open, us. Thomas. Anytime you, you want. <laughs> but meanwhile, yeah, no how about you go a bunch of hearts from me? Thank you for your support. Lots of hearts. Lots of hearts. There, I'm. I'm. Is Lots that a term beautiful. called love bombing? But love, love bombing is a bad term. But anyway, there it is. That's me. Uh, thank you for. <laughs> yeah, join the the death Join the Ferdinand <laughs> Join um, the Ferdinand. Yes. Uh, Simping. That yes. Wrote, uh, don't forget to also go to uh, uh, to, to Magpie's Twitter to get notifications or put uh, click the notification bell to get notifications of when we go live. Yes. Join the barrel. Because or else you will miss the read-alongs, guys. <laughs> Don't want to miss those. Everybody, please like and subscribe and smash that like button. Oh, yes. Join the like, subscribe and smash the like button. And you guys do are not so forget cool. to click on the Insert, you guys insert are so outro cool. copy pasta. I, I, don't even, I don't even, like, do this for myself. <laughs> you guys are doing it. Thank you. <laughs> Um, I, I, I love how I love how out, your supporters uh, are complete sellout. And you're the only one who's not. <laughs> I, I know. Like, I, I, like I swear, if you, if you manage to get ads on your site, on your YouTube or sponsorship, your supporters will just go like, support them, do this, do a full <laughs> ad campaign running. Yeah. Um, also, don't guys. forget to go check out Night Eyes uh, um, store. Because she has amazing designs, uh, bookworm designs, and uh, I'm actually wearing the currently the uh, oh, Aaron yeah. Fest the Legend Aaron since She's the most modest. <laughs> Thank you. Now, <laughs> yeah. uh, someone just donated. I know. It, someone just donated. Plamen. It's not about the money. Plamen, thank yeah, you so much for your support. Hey, thank you. I'm making a point, but uh, uh, can we have a design of a switcher uh, with Rosmine logo on the front and nothing on the back? Uh, yeah, just DM me and I'll do whatever, I'll do what I can. Not whatever, because my art skills are not as good as, say, Alos is. But I can try to do what, what, uh, just send me the details. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you again, Plamen, for your support. Thomas, anybody who wants to support this channel, you guys are superstars in my book. <laughs> All right. Don't forget um, and to out back. Okay, Flames. we're at three hours and seventeen minutes. We're doing great, gang. <laughs> oh goodness! Let's do oh, this. And <laughs> only hour and a half before the. Not pickup. me. <laughs> oh, not me. No, Georgine is not gonna be sent. Stop it. <laughs> you and your simping. Jo well, jo Georgine doesn't you know want what? to be. You know what? You guys, you guys can say all kinds of blasphemies and I will still like you and love you for <laughs> for doing it via super chat. So even this so, blasphemy oh, oh. like Georgine should be zen, I'm still giving you hearts for it. So thank you, Navi, for your support. Um, okay. Best of luck with that. Kadir, also, darling, thank you so much for your support. My finger is going to get tired from the hearts, but doesn't matter. I will use another hand to continue to give you guys lots of love. <laughs> Maybe get an auto clicker. Probably. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, yeah. Now, hmm? now we need to go back. Otherwise, I'm sweating the chat to join us. Oh, what? What part do we need to go back to? I where where were we? But which part? Well, right now we are at temptation. Wait, temptation? Uncle Felder. Yeah. Oh yes, emotional damage, right, you guys. Done. Emotional damage. So, what was it? Who was saying? Like, <laughs> what, like she's like trying to like Crazy. convince him, convince him. Like, come on, like you can do this. But the moment like he, she says like, yo, I didn't want to say this, but like, 
we have to rescue Ferdinand. and he's gonna die and he and it's your fault because we sent fault. him there he's like oh dang <laughs> our honor is at stake uh oh my gosh patrick patrick how could you but okay <laughs> eggy sensei All is of you. Can, we, queen. can we just confirm that in this ditter match ferdinand uh, is the bride yeah, oh my yeah. God. yeah, it feels like that. <laughs> Everybody wants to marry Ferdinand. Dunkel Felger wants to marry him. I'm yeah. sure that they could if they would. Myra would... wants to marry him. Now, okay, <laughs> someone make fan art of Rosamine Princess carrying Ferdinand. <laughs> uh, yes, we need this. Someone, someone make this fan art. Uh, <laughs> yeah, somebody. You get nothing or, for it. Or, or somebody, but do it. <laughs> yeah, somebody commission Alos to do it. <laughs> All right, <clears throat> maybe I'll do it one day. I don't know. I'll try it right now in uh, mid journey. Mm. Oh, mid journey. That's Oops. true. But wait, if, uh, let's talk about AI later. All right. So uh, basically she is tempting everybody because she wants mm -hmm. to go and save her Ferdinand, her family, her teacher, her doctor, her treasure, right? He's Ferdinand is everybody's treasure. I'm glad everybody is on the same page um luckily uh dunkel felger is on board after some negotiations some talk especially um especially in faster than stifer breeze in the chapter they finally nailed down all the all the details mm. rosamine wants to use dunkel felger volunteers as a diversion in order to reach the replenishment hall as quickly as possible Rescuing Ferdinand is the winning condition. Ab Dunkelfelger will not act without the royal family's approval, which Sylvester will take care of. He also tells her that involving other duchies will mean that she will have to share credit for the victory, to which Rosamine is willing to cede all the credit as well as Ernsbeck itself. But Ab Dunkelfelger does not want to deal with the territory that rebelled against the royal um, family. Remember, we have the lesson from uh, Eisenreich from like way, way like hundreds of years before. And what happened to the people of Eisenreich after they rebelled? They got in some serious trouble. So nobody in their right mind would want to take over a duchy that was like full of traitors. So, yep. Yeah, we'll see. No one wants it. <laughs> Not even Dunkelfelger. And they already have enough trouble trying to deal with their own huge territory. Uh, remember, stock. Yeah, they took half of worker stock. So they already are struggling themselves. Uh, so it's kind of sad that a lot of this trouble started because the current emperor isn't actually Zen, oh, yeah. and it shoved yeah. so much trouble onto like all the lot greater duchies, and they're like having to deal up, pick up the uh, incompetency of the royal family. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, yeah, basically. No one will want to touch Dungle Felger with a ten foot pole. Oh yeah, I don't know. I wouldn't. I mean, not. I mean, Aaron's back. Aaron's back. Oh yeah, <laughs> <laughs> Dungle. Felger. Yeah, sure. I got it though. Um, so yeah, ultimately though, they, they're going to, they're going to do it. So, uh, let's see, where was I? Oh, Eustace and Eckhart arrive at the dormitory and ask for permission to meet with the Ob, which cements the situation as truth in Sylvester's eyes. Like, up to this point, Sylvester was like, maybe there's some hope that she just was delusional and she had a fever dream while she was awake. I don't know. But no, the fact that they got a message that they're on the, on, on, the Royal Academy, they want to they want to enter. That means that, yeah, it's true. What she saw was true and there's trouble afoot. So he's like, dang it. Um, so off he goes. Meanwhile, Rosamine has to prepare and rest before they go. And that's where the narrative for uh, Rosamine ends. But lo and behold, you guys, we have some really, really, really good um, short stories and epilogue oh my goodness you guys epilogue oh okay. my god so many <laughs> all right you good. guys i have i have a lot to say about the epilogue and rosamine's disappearance and sage's world story and charlotte's oh, story yeah. that's four chapters so how about we take a 15 minute break so people can do the things i also need to do things uh i need to get water <laughs> i'm like super dry um and also i need to get a snack just a quick snack so let's do a 15 minute break. Um, I'll mute it for about, I don't know, the first five minutes and then we can chat a little while we do the things. I don't know. Uh, is that okay with everybody? Go to the yeah. loo yeah, that's, and that's take some water, 15 minutes. So 12.23 my time, eh, around 12.40 or something. All right, see you guys in a bit. 
Uh, don't go away. And thank you for joining us. We will be here soon. We'll be back soon.
That's built, into, yeah. that's built into GitHub already. So if you use GitHub, Even you with GitHub code 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 code. and you can have that pretty much like review your codes, fix errors, all the fly, find like bugs and stuff or potential. Pro- like you, you don't even um, know how scary I can be, really. I, I think like AI is going to absolutely shine as an aid to these sort of creative yeah, the potential and is crazy rather than yeah because. 
it's gonna be a very long while before they can fully replace anybody because there's but just people... the, the, the biggest problem with these ai models is that even the people making them don't fully understand what's going on under the hood yeah yeah no no, so uh, no most people don't but th there are very 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 like smart computer science no, who it, exactly it, understand it, what is going on underneath the hood it's the, the same, same way as like, like our like, or, no you go look it's because like the current version of chat gpt or the, like the latest version of gpt 4 has somewhere in a couple trillion parameters going on oh sorry i'm just guys. gonna node base the uh, the live stream can hey, guys. guys sorry uh, we're live again I'm live stream. <laughs> oh oh sorry <laughs> no, no no i had no idea until i checked the obs i was like oh look um sorry about that <clears throat> So um, <laughs> we, we did miss something. But that is very and... interesting information. We I will talk about it you later. You did miss the fact that we were planning a D and D set. We're we're starting to talk about D and D, but with bookworm. <laughs> oh wow! Yeah. Good luck with that. It sounds yeah. fun. So it's like we started off with like Shumel Power Rangers. <laughs> then it's just like how do we turn the setting into a D and D campaign? And then it's just like AI art. <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's amazing yeah. well let me know how that works i'm not really um i've never played dnd so i don't know how that works but yeah. i hope that uh, it works out i think you guys have a good team going like you, think you got it going you can do it yeah. i believe in you guys yes yes i mean you, 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 you yeah. i even, I even, made, a, I even made a special. gaming voice channel for you guys and has anybody been gaming at the gaming voice yes. channel? yes Nobody. Me, yeah. Has when anybody been spoiler chatting at the spoiler chat channel? No. Oh, we had any spoilers. How about the stream oh, party? I haven't seen anybody yes, stream party at the stream yes. party. We're all we're very ready. lethargic. The moment we enter a channel, that is pretty much where we're gonna set up home, <laughs> live and die. Alright. Yeah. Yep. Should I just like I'll, I'll just <laughs> leave them up there? I'll just leave them up there. It's fine. All right, everybody. Oh, it's it's, like, like, it's, it's not a waste up. of resources or anything. It's no reason. So we, we need, we need when if we start in one channel, it's okay. But when some guys come, come also in the channel, and when it's diverse again, and you need a second one. Yeah. Yes, that's true. All right, the everybody. names are obligatory. You could also Four name in channel one, channel two, channel three, channel six, if you want to. <laughs> We are back. Yes, yes, we are back. So I My actually God. was taking um, was taking some tea and water, and I just went through like all the memes that I have. So uh, if you were paying attention to the stream, you saw all the memes that I have. So in case I miss one or two, bless you, by the way. Uh, I think it was Noemi who sneezed. Bless you, darling. Um, yeah. Uh, then uh, then you saw them all. <laughs> okay. Yep. So, did we did we miss something in the lead up to the to the uh, epilogue? Because I don't remember what, us saying something about a certain teacher getting fired. Oh well, this is yes, just yes. Walt POV. Yeah. That's a just Walt POV though. But yeah, it's also mentioned there too. I thought so. they told. Yeah, I thought they told Rosemary. Oh, okay. Well, I, it wasn't. It escaped my notice. I had it firmly in my head that it was in the Sutures world, but uh, like, you guys want to talk about it? Talk about it by all means. I mean, we we can wait for the Sigis world POV. There's a lot of stuff yeah, to talk I about in the Sigis world POV. We can just talk about it right now since it's been brought up. <laughs> well, I want to talk about something right now because I was absent for okay. the last hour. So tell us everything, um, Fergie. No, it's just since you know now that we're live and I can talk to the friendlies. Uh, but yeah, during the, the discussion when she was like planning on how to protect the temple and she's just like, oh yeah, I want to make shumels based off the Super Sentais. And I'm just like, what? Mine was a pan of the Power Rangers when she was a child or <laughs> Urano, I should say. And it's, I don't know, just that little line I wanted to highlight and, you know. Yeah. Just... Or at least at some point, like when I was growing up, Power Rangers were everywhere. Like, I didn't watch them, yeah. but they were everywhere. So... <laughs> Um, it's it was a another hint thing. of your age. Mm. Interesting. <laughs> another hint of your age, back back. Oh, there you go. You guys already know my age. I'm 59. Do you mean we're <laughs> not all 30 somethings yeah. here? <laughs> no, 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 not everybody here not. is 30 something. There's there's Grandma. all kinds of various things. I am everybody's I'm auntie. I'm everybody's I am auntie. Big. Grandma. I'm pretty Grandma. sure I'm, I'm, only I'm older than all of you guys combined. I'm no, older than all of you guys. I don't I am you. Daddy crazy. Lies. 
<laughs> you guys are all oldies compared to me and yes, my brain. Yes. So yes, you and, and Jihyo are the youngest ones. Me and Jihyo are like the babies of this channel. We're like, haha. Yes. Wait, how old are you? <laughs> not I'm 18 yet. They're not 18 yet. Yeah. Let's oh. No, yeah. I'm 20. Jihyo's underage. All right, you guys, I think it is 1240. And before we disclose any more personal information and irrelevant stuff for this chit chat, you can see you guys, this is what we, this is the mischief we get on to uh, join or not join. This is what we have <laughs> to offer. Um, okay. So <clears throat> where were we? So thank you for sharing that about the Super Sentai Fergie. I always wonder like, well, um, what what other colors like why did she why did she like what other colors would she want to do like she was never really given a choice as to what she wanted <laughs> like she wanted pandas she got true mills she wanted super sentai colors she got pastel colors so at this well, we point, already got the black and white rangers with schwartz and weiss and now we got a green ranger with her little like i don't know uh card Adrian. catalog equivalent Adrian. It, yeah and then, and then now we're gonna get what a uh, red and a blue one or what's going on it's cream aqua and pink so those okay. are those are the three colors um, we should better wait for the discussion a bit a bit longer because we almost get the proper mech almost oh uh -huh. well, super sentai <laughs> and mech a bit of, a little bit later hmm. yes like if no. any point in the story i felt like they almost jumped the shark it was here because they're just like oh what are we gonna do oh let's just make shumo mechs what <laughs> yeah just no problem let's just do it <laughs> no lead up no nothing it's, it's i can just search through my god book it's cool we got the instructions somewhere safe in here mm -hmm. all right so with that without any further ado unless there's something else from previous chapters that we miss we're gonna talk about the epilogue which is a leticia point of view anything else at all it is so time. many, but we don't have time. We all keep saying we don't have time, and you haven't said much more than that. Vincent, yeah, girl. tell me, what is no. in your heart? Open Except your that. heart to us, please. No, my heart is closed. Four hours here. <laughs> um, nothing? Nothing? Okay, fine. Epilogue, the Leticia point of view. Now, Roswitha informs Leticia that the that the Lanzanave envoys are requesting for the knight to reconsider his decision to not accept a princess while Detlin and Ferdinand are at the interduchy tournament. Leticia becomes acquainted with the Lanzanave envoys. Leonzio gives Leticia sweets shaped like face stones and string toy tubes. Georgine suggests... Oh, mm -hmm. oh outline. <laughs> there we go. Georgian suggests that the gifts are given small chalices at the end of at the start of spring. Uh, usually, what they have during spring prayer, the priests fly out. You know, the people from the temple fly out to the gifts and distribute them. But now she's like, no, nah, we'll give the chalices directly to the gifts while they're still in the city. So like that should take care of like spring prayer in a way. But um, no, because Ferdinand thinks that they could be used maliciously if they're like. The chances could be used maliciously if, like that, there's no responsibility. So anyway, due to everything happening, Ferdinand has less time to tutor Leticia, so he simply leaves her with assignments. And honestly, Leticia feels demoralized, like it's just being burdened with stuff, hardly able to go out. Life is boring. She only has her attendants to talk to. Um, it's just uh, a terrible time for her. As a child, she just doesn't feel like working, I guess. I don't blame her much. Now, Roswitha, at some point though, Roswitha is like, okay, I'll go talk to Ferdinand about your workload. So she goes, but at, but she doesn't return. Like at some point she, she just takes off and goes missing. And <laughs> Leticia, yeah, I know, little by little, Leticia starts getting anxious and more anxious because Roswitha has been missing for like two days. And let's, let's remember this, you guys. Uh, the head attendant for, especially for a child like, like, um, Leticia, is like the closest to a mother figure, especially since she came from all the way from German Shell. So this is not the duchy she was born in. Her, she had to yeah. be separated from mm -hmm. her real mother. Yeah, and even so, her, her yeah. blood relative, her grandmother has already passed. So, you know what I mean? So like, 
yeah, the Chizia basically her um, that the Rajota her attendant was everything to her, and uh, basically just miss. She's been there every single time that the Chizia needed her, and now that she's missing, it is bringing on a bout of anxiety mm -hmm. because she's being separated from the person that she mm -hmm. uh, has always trusted and has been with her since the beginning. Yeah, her taker. Does anyone her else catch the parallels here? Oh, tell us, tell yeah, us. Actually, uh, <laughs> yeah. Was my mm -hmm. yeah. So sad. Yeah. This is definitely something that Ferdinand should uh, empathize with. In a way, in a way, I want to say that too, because like he was very cold, like in his flat, like later on, he flat out says like, give up on her. Like, oh, dude, <laughs> this is not Rosamine. And even if it were Rosamine, she would never have taken that sitting down. She would have been, or whatever. She would have felt like, no, we're going to go save, go on a rampage, maybe start, you know, crushing things or people to get your way. <laughs> I don't know. Um, yeah. It's just if only Letizia was Rosemine because <sighs> you know, with her childlike mindset, she's mm -hmm. just like, oh, okay, the adults are right, I need to follow the like mine would not have taken that lying down, obviously. <laughs> oh, yeah, but Rosemine has initiative, uh huh. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. the other thing that kind of scares me though, mm -hmm. and I don't know if it's like just you know, like my head theory or whatever, but like that nightmare she had <gasps> was that a nightmare? Was you that know, honestly a nightmare? We don't know. I was wondering the same thing. I was wondering if we, it was a, a, a We can assume that it that it was the same thing that happened to Rosemary. We can assume yeah, that. Yeah, was it a I will? Think, I think it was a will. I think it was a will. Though we never re we talked about this during one of the live reads or the chit chats and we were like we didn't come to a conclusion. I think it was a will, honestly. I'm pretty sure it was a will. Can... Yeah. So But she like it happened in the middle of the night, you know, she was probably like Ordinons just, just keep coming to her, repeating mm -hmm. like three times and then just dropping in her lap. Meanwhile, she's tied up to a chair, like screaming her head off. Mm -hmm. Like, and then maybe, I don't, I don't maybe know. that was like the point where late at night her captures, her captors came and she realized that she was in some serious trouble. And she was like, no, I have to like somebody save me. Cause like, I, I think I kind of feel like. <sighs> like that monthly was, like, shot her off. I'm trying to sleep. Yeah. Yeah. Huh? Let's put this as a poll in the chat. Let's see what <laughs> the chat thinks about. Okay, let's do a poll. Yeah. yeah. Start a poll. Was this was a nightmare? Nightmare? Or a will? Well, oh, just will and nightmare. There we go. All right, start the poll. The poll is starting. Let me know what you guys think. Oh, look. I'm pretty sure it was a will. <laughs> So because like wow, it's, it's pretty traumatic, it's almost everything. unanimous right now. Yeah. So let, let's let's let us let us just uh, see what what the chat people are. It's not actually you know there's seventy nine. There's there's some there's some wiggle room. It could be. It could not be. Now, um, so let's see. Where was I? <laughs> I lost my place in the thingies. Ferdinand. Rasputa, yeah. So Rasputa has not come back after she left to talk to Sergius. So, growing ever more anxious, Leticia asks to meet with Ferdinand in order to ask for assistance in finding Rasputa. Ferdinand agrees to meet with her in the manor replenishment hall. You know, the wait is really difficult on poor Leticia. But, you know, she has to wait. Can't do anything but wait. Meanwhile, on her way there, Leoncio and Detland are sitting, you know, lazing around. It's funny because Leticia is very harshly critical of them, like in her mind, uh, during this whole POV. Uh, except, except at a particular point where she accepts what they get, what they say, like without criticism. But at this point, when she comes across, uh, stumbles across them. Uh, or stumbles upon them, I guess, on her way to the replenishment hall. She's like, oh, you guys should be working. Like, <laughs> like Detlin shouldn't be like lazing around. Like, while she's lazing around, Ferdinand has to work, and that affects me. So anyway, so they give her sweets, which she eats along with one of her retainers. But she notices that the sweets taste different. Leoncio also gives her a tube again, uh, you know, suggesting that, hey, you could use this to convince Ferdinand it worked once, so why not again? It could probably work again. Um, and we not, we learn from later on, from or based on her, based on her on her point of view later on, or later on we know that uh, when 
she was struck basically the candy was struck yeah. and it was it was like um like the what's it called Antidote. the antidote so it had the antidote and, and yeah, it was struck her, so. her, her internal monologue just just screamed she was uh she was drugged and mm -hmm. and this was mm -hmm. not her actual she yeah. was influenced by 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 them mm -hmm. definitely yep. She yeah. was drugged and basically hypnotized. Yeah, basically. Cause I she... wasn't sure, honestly. Well, I think it. I like, think I, it I was... get the antidote, but mm -hmm. it just like her childish actions almost just seemed like a child action, you know? Like, I thought Trug was supposed to be something that was burnt in a fireplace and had a sweet smell and all of that. Maybe they have it like different ways. See, I, I also was weed kind of, can, kind of the same be smoked way. Or turned into edible. Both. I, yeah, I'm I mean, edible, just, right? <laughs> um, I mean, it. Just like a certain other plant that we know. Yeah. Of. Now, Fergie, yeah. I, I, I was actually of the same mind as you. I was like, nah, she wasn't drugged because I didn't see any fire. I didn't see it. But like later, when in this same chapter, when Rosamond's amulet uh, um, reacts, like the light or like kind of like some the the effect of the amulet spreads not just to Ferdinand but also yeah, to it, her, it clears, and it, it clears, clears her mind. Her mind. Also, so, also yeah. there was a part where uh, where Leonzo was first introduced, where he's talking to uh, Detland, mm -hmm. where he, I don't know if it was some magical tool or, or something else that he was wearing on his person that gave off a sweet scent. Mm, and no, there was a back to oh, fire. Detland's getting Detland's getting a drug right now. <laughs> yeah, that was part whatever. Yeah. yeah, I remember that one. <laughs> fire in that one that was there a fire? basically i don't i don't think that was part of the fire she mm -hmm. she only smelled it when she got close to him yeah. or he had a sweet smelling scent to him but yeah, yeah probably there's different ways of of trugging someone so unfortunately our poor dear darling she got she got Affected I by think this. It, I think that the face stone that she ate had both the antidote for the poison they mm -hmm. used i think so yeah and, and yeah. also drug yeah and, yeah like, yeah yeah, they needed her alive. That's why she didn't die from the uh, poison. All right, yeah. so I ended the poll uh, because we couldn't get any more of the people's chats while it was going. Um, so, Will, 73 people think that what Leticia saw was a will. 73%. And the nightmare people, 26%. There were two people, 42 people voting. Uh, thank you for the 42 people for voting. Always, always happy to have you guys interact. <clears throat> so, thanks, uh, Chad. You're awesome. <laughs> Thank you, Chad. Yay! Thing. So it's decided. It was a will. <laughs> um, now, Scarlet nineteen eighty seven says, "But why send the will to Letizia and not to Sergius, her son?" Hmm, that's a valid. It could point. be because of uh, because a will isn't specifically sent to the person closest. To like, you. by bloodline mm -hmm. basically said the person that you are thinking about in that moment mm -hmm. yeah so if Rosa was thinking about like protecting and like thinking about Letizia it would have gone to Letizia just like how it's, it's, Rosemary Rosemary thought about Lutz and went but, to Lutz this this debate is kind of why I'm not entirely sure myself about whether it is a will or if it's just a nightmare I I, okay. I, I love it though it's, it's a great it's a great debate because here's the thing, you know, Rosworth's entire life basically re revolves around Letizia. So it's not very far-fetched for of her to think of her lady. Also, if there's anybody... Especially who... since her son is a supergrown man. Mm -hmm. Also, if there's anybody with enough influence to go and abrogate for her to save her, it would be Ros it would be Letizia, the future Ob, rather than her son, who's just a guard knight at this point. So the one to, who would be able to pull the strings necessary would be her lady, Letizia. So While I agree, I don't think it's necessarily a conscious thought when someone sends a will. It's like an uh, involuntary response. They're hmm. just like, ah, yeah. I'm dying. Yeah, like, yeah. like when uh, Ferdinand was like, ruined mine. It's not that he necessarily trusted her more, but... <clears throat> He's, that was the person he was thinking about when that happened. Hmm. Well, yeah. the, like his uh, the charm went off and stuff, and, and he know, was like, "Oh, it's Rosamine's charm." So he calls Rosamine. Maybe all the shippers disagree. Yeah, yeah that's what it seems like. <laughs> but also, they had a promise and, and with Rosamine. It sounds like we'll you're talking him. through a cloth or something. Oh, I am. I feel mm -hmm. like it is more something more precious. It's like the person you care about the most. Do I still sound bad? 
No, you're no, fine. You're better now. I can sound better. better now. All right. Um, wow, and it was it was very accurate actually. It, my mic is was resting on my uh, hoodie. I am wearing my Aramfest hoodie, by the way. So <laughs> yeah, it was cloth. All right. So again, this is one of those 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 discussions that I guess we won't get an answer to until we uh, ask maybe Kasuki Sensei if there's a fan book or whatever. We'll see. I don't know. I I honestly haven't seen this. I've read plenty of um spoil like fan books of like future volumes, but I haven't actually got an answer to this question. So I'll let you guys know if I ever come across it. <laughs> or you guys can wait for the fan book if it ever comes up. Um all right. So we have Ross with the and let's see. Okay. So Ferdinand, let me go back to the outline. So Ferdinand listens to uh, to Leticia's request in the replenishment hall, but he says that she should give up on Roswitha <laughs> again, Ferdinand. It's for good reasons. Uh, yeah, with good reasons. He looked Cold. into it and she is alive because the ordinances still fly, but the fl they fly into several locked rooms, which they don't have access to. Like they would need to have permissions of like, you know, security level eight or something i don't know uh, <laughs> in order to access it um so when he tries to take the tube he's like just give me the tube so we can start start praying and dedicating mana Letizia is like no and she uses it like leonzi told her to pulls the pulls a string and the tube spreads a white powder into the air which turns out to be <gasps> poison Instant death not poison. Just any poison. Not just instant death. any poison. That's right. So it's instant mm -hmm. poison. It's really it's surprising he's still alive actually because of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's vicious stuff. It's terrible stuff. Um, so a bright light envelops the room for a moment before Leticia runs to Ferdinand and he gives her his name stones, uh, the name stones he carries, and tells her to give them to Eustus and with the instructions go. Yeah. Now during this, yeah. we know that Rosamine is seeing all this happen, uh, but she doesn't see what happened after Letizia left. So here we get like this point of view. When she leaves the replenishment hall and she gives the stones to Eustace, Eckhart begins to question her when, uh, and he looks like really scary, like threatening. Enough that her own retainers, they're like starting to get uh, like, starting to position themselves defensively and i found this <laughs> this meme that i love because i absolutely love murder puppy um oh murder puppy oh, Eckhart, yes. yeah. murder puppy eckhart oh where is that so let me see there we go <laughs> murder puppy uh Eck eckhart he was like really like about to like get out the truth from her or <laughs> i don't know execute her <laughs> <laughs> no, and you just is like Eckhart. I love the passion, but now is not the time. Now is not the time. Yeah. So that's right the last... now. We need to go and mm -hmm. warn them and do the action. So that's the last we see for now. We do know that they made it to Aramfest. So that was going to. I mean, talking to Sylvester, not to Aramfest, but to the Royal Academy to talk to Sylvester and to send a message to Sylvester. That much they were able to do. So whatever the go meant uh it means that they actually managed to do it successfully hopefully so yeah. that we don't see anything of them and we won't talk about them wait until next volume yes <laughs> it's a good one next volume we're gonna get all the answers we want yes next <laughs> so um let's see where are we so yeah uh, Eckhart being a menace to society again <laughs> of course <laughs> as he should as he should for He's real. always a when Ferdinand gets injured or anything happens to Ferdinand. Eckhart goes, I'm a murder puppy now. I, he, I he will just, murder everyone. Goes from zero to eleven. <laughs> you know what that he reminds me no of? Hero. What? Uh, this this copy pasta of uh, essentially uh, uh this is my precious mean if anything were to happen to him, I would kill everyone and then myself. Oh yes. <laughs> oh yeah. God. I remember that one. Yep, that's him. For real very accurate now um because you do know My that if he were to like do something to that's basically asking for death they're gonna like slaughter you right there her attendance and he's also raising 
raising his sword against an Archduke candidate. So that's like really, really, really. Do you really want to go down this route, Eckhart? <laughs> All right. So. I like, it's, Eckhart is a menace. He's like, a menace. He will murder anyone without can, any question. Can we have an Eckhart tangent, you guys? Can you give me an Eckhart tangent? Can you let me have this moment for I Eckhart think, tangent? Oh, yeah, go ahead. Alright, alright. Eckhart tangent. I'm sorry. It I'm would be hypocritical <laughs> to deny you a tangent. I'm sorry, you guys. You know what? With that said, uh, no, you can't have this tangent. Well, okay, I'm gonna mute you. <laughs> 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 no 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 i'm just saying like you guys i don't know if we've talked about this before but or i'm gonna talk about it again just uh, the extent of eckhart's menaceness menace menacity whatever how how much of a menace he is so you guys know that wilfried <laughs> ferdinand went to the temple eckhart had no lord Veronica's like, well, Wilfried needs needs as um a guard knight. Eckhart be guard knight. Eckhart's like, huh, you just killed my wife and child. Huh, you just sent my lord to the temple. Huh, you need somebody to guard your grandchild. Oh yes, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna become <laughs> the guard knight and then kill you. That was his thought process. Thankfully. Yep. Thankfully, there was Karsted who prevented that from happening. And thankfully, you guys, there was um, Lamprecht, Lamprecht. Lamprecht uh, who does not get enough credit for having stepped up as volunteer. Uh, <laughs> you stepped up as... Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. He really put the bullet. Mm -hmm. He really did, because otherwise Eckhart would have done horrible things and according to kasuki sensei eckhart would have uh ended up his actions would have ended up with the whole um execution of the linkbergs all of his family would have like oh, been yeah. gone all of them and dang Almost so maybe basically that <laughs> what was that patrick that almost makes me wonder if that was part of veronica's plan oh, oh man oh my god I don't know, man. Who knows? I mean, she's she's almost as devious as Georgine. Hmm. Yeah, but like she's as devious as Georgine in specific ways. Like Georgine actually is smart and actually plotted everything. Veronica, like to keep my power mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. control over Esther. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Yeah. Like so they have oh, used her intellect in different ways. <laughs> yeah. I kind of feel though that Veronica got a little too cocky and overconfident. So, yeah, because she she's got in her way her mm -hmm. whole like life mm -hmm. pretty much every time she's been uh, Aaron Fest, she got that her way. A, that might be a family trait getting overconfident. <laughs> yeah, Veronica probably. is yeah. her own worst enemy. Yeah, yeah. Well, so th that was my little Eckhart tangent. Thank you for letting me have it. Just just, just needed to put that out. <laughs> In case you guys didn't know, that's how bad he is. And <laughs> it's okay, the host is allowed to tangent. <laughs> and yeah. I also wonder, I think there was a point where he also had like murderous intent toward the, the, what he called the waste of space royal family. Like at some point he yeah. wanted to, <laughs> when he knew that they were going to send Ferdinand over to Aaron's back, he got so angry that he, his, his murderous impulses also came out. To the forefront so i mean i yeah. can't really blame him because yeah. the royal family did screw over ferdinand pretty bad mm -hmm. oh they definitely screwed him over yeah so all right okay so that part of the way is out because i need we needed that because we're getting to some really heavy stuff so continuing on oh, yeah my favorite you know we're getting to my favorite I, part i'm, I'm yes. sorry patrick it, it, it's almost like him and Angelica are a match made in heaven. I know, right? Yeah. They're made for each other. <laughs> so uh, cruel that they separated by fate. I know, fate. I know. Uh, well, well, we'll see. I dare not say any more. Yeah, probably Traugut will man up and he will... I think there's promise in Traugut. Really? Traugut? Traugut? 
fine. Oh, Boniface is gonna find Ilya. himself. Fine. Boniface is gonna find himself with a girl bride. Then she. There you go. <laughs> What's oh, how dare you What's disrespect her, lady and gentlemen? <laughs> I know. <laughs> What's I don't know. Let's just let her be a professional boss girl who doesn't doesn't get married. Just let her be happy. There we go. Now, uh, back to this. So. Da -da 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 -da. A bright light and bell ups, we did that. Okay, so Tetlin enters the room, like once she deals with Ferdinand, we know what happened inside the, the replenishment hall. Once she enters, once she exits the room and she goes with Leonzio, after Eustace and Eckhart leave, Leonzio asks Leticia if she used the tube, which prompts him to declare that she murdered Ferdinand. Tetlin enters the replenishment hall to check if Ferdinand is dead. Leonzio then uses a tube just like the one Letizia used, and everyone in the room, except for Letizia, her retainer for seal, and Detlin's entourage instantly turn into face stones after inhaling the poison, and oh my gosh, you guys. Can you just imagine? Uh -huh. Yeah, okay, let's talk Wait. about that. <laughs> Can you Ain't just imagine that. standing there and just being like, and then he just pops the thing and just hear, clunk, 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 on the because like loads of face dolls are falling! <laughs> yeah, so dark, you guys. And the illustration so that goes with it... Trauma. The illustration that goes with it, like, just her seeing... Uh, with this chapter in general, just her seeing, like, people she's, she knew just in the blink of an eye turn into face stones. And we already know that face stones are, like, the equivalent of, like, corpses, almost. I don't know. Really traumatizing. I think that's a genius move by the author, by the way. <laughs> yeah. Of, yeah. Without making it too graphic, but the full yes. emotional impact of it. So, yeah. Oh my god. The beautiful it's coloring. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so... This image is so traumatizing because mm -hmm. of how uh, it was made and basically... Uh, like, the way that they made Letizia so small mm -hmm. in the image compared to Edlind and Leoncio in the background, it's... Mm -hmm. It hits hard. It does. With the fact that she literally just saw everyone she loved. Yeah, everyone she the, cared about, except for that one retainer, mm -hmm. like, mm -hmm. just and the blood become face down. Oh yeah, and the blood splatters. Ooh, yeah. Oh Which, yeah, my the blood splatter. Blood splatters. Credit to all of those illustrators <laughs> who had to painstakingly color their blood. <laughs> Good on you guys. Honestly, it wasn't they that did hard a great compared job. to uh, the, <laughs> It wasn't that hard compared to uh, the uh, other one. <laughs> The, the fucking tablets killed me with this background of that one. Meeting cramps was the worst. <laughs> and I, and, and I, ha I helped you out with uh, which tablet was which color. Yeah. Oh my gosh, that was so confusing. <laughs> good job, you guys. You did really good. All of you. So, no, Emmy, I, I, I love that you, you changed their, their hair colors so that they can be deviated from each other. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Yes, I did. Uh, I made sure that Letizia and Detlin have different hair color because they are described as different hair colors. Hmm. Detlin is a uh, more of a yellowish blonde, while Letizia has always been a platinum blonde. And so it's important. Yeah. Leonzio is like a yeah. Benno brown. <laughs> yeah, no, Leonzio like, is considered um, a dirty, Ethna? dirty blonde. Uh, we have a word for it in French that's called chaltain. Which is specifically, you have brown streaks with, uh, you have brown and, uh, and, uh, and, uh, blonde streaks together, mixed together. So they, it, you can see the streaks of blonde and brown in the hair. We call well, it in I'm English, in Spanish, rayitos. <laughs> wow. Rayitos. So yeah, each of their hair colors mm -hmm. is very uh, different, but really cool. Mm -hmm. And so, harder to make, too. Yeah. So... Deadland returns. She is upset that Ferdinand is not dead, <laughs> but says he will be soon. She tells Letizia that she is at fault for Ferdinand's death. Letizia is taken. Oh yeah, uh, when, when she's like, "You murdered my fiance." Ugh, yeah, you will be punished oh my by God. death. My favorite line. My favorite line in this whole chapter. No, is just no, the fact you scary little girl. You <laughs> stop, stop that. <laughs> 
<laughs> so, like, I really love this chapter. Okay, you don't understand. It's so pretty. I don't so, understand. Um, you like it a little too I much. I don't understand. <laughs> I don't understand. I'm worried about you. <laughs> You're thinking no, about like, like acting I... too far, darling. <laughs> <laughs> that, like, the method actor. was just <laughs> you're traumatizing <laughs> everyone. <laughs> now I'm no, like a monster for feeding nothing. <laughs> so, <laughs> Leticia is taken to a while she cackles maniacally. Uh, Leticia is taken <laughs> to a hall with a lot of locked doors. Leonzio enters a room from where she could hear like soft like groans and stuff like that. Um, and then suddenly the sound stopped after Leonzio entered the room and she is like like thrown into a room Leonzio returns <laughs> with a face stone which he like drops on her lap and he explains that now both Leticia and Roslitha can go to Lanzanate together and this causes oh, Leticia oh, so yeah. much grief that she passes out with Detlin's laughter ringing in her ears. Oh my god. That, that was just <laughs> killing Because not only yeah, did she watch her, her retainers, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. not only did she watch her retainers get turned into face stones, but her mother figure, her mm -hmm. head attendant, mm -hmm. dropped in her lap as a face stone. That was... Oh my god. Yeah. <laughs> that was like putting the severed head of some child's mother in the lap. Yeah, it's awful. And Noemi, stop laughing, it's damn it. It's not like she did that. Okay. She literally did it. Muting yes, Detlin. and Noemi laughing I'm like she's... Detlin for a minute. Detlin. <laughs> Detlin. Noemi has been muted for a minute. She just needs to calm down a little. <laughs> Breathe, darling. <laughs> so... <clears throat> uh, <laughs> And now you're but it's so yeah. nice that we can be together again. <laughs> that that's that's no no. I, I think it's wrong. I think it's so wrong, you guys. Um, especially because we know that she's a child and she's bound to she's bound to be super scarred for life because of this. I don't know. It's just very very horrible. Okay, I think a minute has passed. She, Let's bring in. She our... might have the PTSD like like mine did when uh, has happened. I'm just gonna chill here until I get unmuted. You are. Just... You have been unmuted. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back. All right. So this is again. Like by, by the way, thank you uh, again for giving me ammunition against you for next. Time. <laughs> You're welcome. Uh, it wouldn't this be it wouldn't be I, fun if, 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 if it wouldn't be fun <laughs> if we anyway didn't. all right uh, so my favorite line in this whole chapter mm -hmm. I need to say it okay, okay say it it's Natalie coming out of the of the thing and going you're such a liar to Leonzio just like <laughs> like she's pissed that Leonzio lied to her mm -hmm. and also also after that just looks at Letizia and be like you killed him <laughs> but as the next Zen as the next Zent, I will forgive you, and I will just send you to Lanzanave. Mm -hmm. Like, is that thing so So much absurdity it's going on in there. And, and, and but also, yeah. I mean, she's sending her to Lanzanave to get basically abused for the oh. rest of her life. No, 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 no. It, it, it was not according dotted to Leon, in the text. No, she got doted by a man, and we all know what it means. We know what yep, doted is. Has a has a very no, she's gonna get doted on. Oh. Quote, unquote, he has a very uh, I would describe it as that. flower offerings, honestly, but hey. Yes, definitely flower offerings. Definitely flower offerings. And, ugh, ugh. You guys, I, I, I that... throw up. I throw up inside my mouth already. Just she's such a pretty say... little child. She doesn't deserve this. Mm, Plamen. You know? I agree, she doesn't. And you laugh. Well, because it's funny as hell. <laughs> Plamen. <laughs> 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 fucking irony that is, is great. That is what you call cognitive dissonance. I'll say. Plamen. There's too much in our character. Guys, you say guys. That my niece is five years old, and uh, I told my sister to give those books to my niece. And after chapters like this, I'm worried that my sister will punch me in the sensitive areas. <laughs> well, ah, she would understand. The sensitive areas. Talk about noble <laughs> euphemisms. <laughs> Too much sensitive area. But I must, I must go to Numi's defense. Um, 
one coping mechanisms of dark shit is to laugh about it. This oh, is yeah, why you well, make jokes that, at the fair, but I'm not eye of that death. Me. So. Yeah, <laughs> be scared of me. Yeah, Mark. I'm scared of you, yes. <laughs> yes. Done and done. Right. I think everyone's scared of you, Noemi. I'm scared You're for being, you. <laughs> Alright. So, um... Let's see, anything else about this chapter you guys want to talk about? Um, yeah. honestly, I think it's really sad how they- It's it's really sad how they just throw Rosita at her feet. Because yeah. that that is actually what the image is picturing is them just throwing Rosita at the Tizia's feet mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. um, being like, "Ha ha!" <laughs> I, I also Deal with love it. the description of of her PTSD clicking in because she describes it as she can't hear anymore. She has a ringing in her ears, and a lot of soldiers with PTSD will describe something very similar. Mm. Yep. I can agree with that one. Um, Leticia is going to have horrific PTSD afterwards of just uh, losing everyone she loves again. And like, she has basically lost everything she's ever had now. Yeah. She's lost Honestly, Prudence, yeah. who was her support yeah. base. She mm -hmm. lost I'm Rosita. She's only has one attendant that cares about her left. And that's mm -hmm. only because that one attendant had to uh, test to, to for poison, because or else she would also be gone. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Kadir? And uh, yeah, and it's just like I would actually be upset with the author if they didn't give like Letizia PTSD because she Yeah. That's some traumatizing oh. stuff, yeah. No, yeah. don't worry that it'll be expanded upon. <laughs> Later. Yeah. Um But yeah, still I, 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 I think she cool. already gave that PTSD to Rosemine. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Also, let's, talk about, let's talk about let's talk about um Stop let's talk about the the oh, when she, when she was gotten when when she yelled out the warning to Strahl and the other the other yeah. guard. So just as just as they were um so okay so Eustace and Eckhart ran for it and then some of her attendant some of her guard knights went after them and then when um when she was captured by Leonzio and Detlin, she was being dragged to the rooms um, where they were going to lock her up. Uh, they came back and she, before, like, she warned them, like, first off, like, there's, go away, run away because they have this powder and cover yourself because they're going to kill you. So luckily she was able to get that message out because they were able to run away. Um, so in this case, I you have just a have to... question. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do they know that Eustace and, and Eckhart are uh, name sworn to Ferdinand? I don't think that's something that you that people usually advertise. Um, no, I don't think they. No, unless, you're unless yeah. you're heart yeah, mutt. Unless you're heart you don't yeah, get that's out loud. Yeah, that's also. It was it was kind of bugging me that they didn't notice that. Oh yeah, Eustace and Eckhart are still alive. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that, that makes sense now. Yeah. Also, Sigiswald in his point of view says like no, like usually nobles would mm -hmm. never say something mm -hmm. like that. They would never like disclose something so personal. Um, yes. Yeah. Unless their name is Hartmut. <laughs> yeah, he's a special case in it every respect. <laughs> oh my god like this chapter was uh, something else honestly mm -hmm. it is traumatizing to be a child like because like as you at the beginning of a chapter you can start feeling more and more um pressure and more anxiety build up to the point where it just explodes mm. where she just realizes she is doomed Mm. This is she has basic because she will blame herself for the rest of her life if for Ferdinand sure. ends up. We don't know. Dying. We don't know. If Ferdinand yeah. ends up dying, she will blame herself for it. And she, even if, <laughs> sorry, I'm sick. This, this um, chapter is beautiful. <laughs> and how dark it is. Mm. Yeah, I love this chapter. Actually, like it is probably one of my favorite chapters because it was done so well so because like it represents the fear the torture mm -hmm. and everything in it actually you guys i remember when this is this in the web novel if you go to the original page they do make sure to put a content warning um they made sure to like say like yes. this has some some sensitive information um sensitive uh content so, you know, it, it was pretty dark, and it, it makes sense. It was very dark. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
yeah so also it is probably one of my favorite drawings i did ever <laughs> at this point oh shoot I haven't, I, haven't been cha- I haven't been changing the drawings oh shoot <laughs> sorry uh they got stuck uh yeah so one any other <laughs> thoughts about this chapter uh anybody who wants who says this is their favorite chapter i mean i Other like the extra me? mocking of ferdinand in the chapter it's like oh, oh, yeah, you're yeah. not you're not Ferdinand. dead after two times so die by mana mm. uh, <laughs> die by mana <laughs> so okay so anybody want to say that this is one of their favorites nobody yes me. i do i do yeah. me so one so patrick it, it's just because it's so dark that it's, it's good no, it, yeah, yeah. Right, we got two people two people okay okay this sense. feels like more like a setup chapter for me. Just like this chapter is exists to like make a different chapter feel even better. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, okay, Magma, you have to share this meme. What meme? <laughs> the one that Red Tempest just uh, put into voice chat. Uh, oh no, what is it? Uh, uh, let me try. I don't know if I can do this. It's just. What is this meme? It's just <laughs> hard for me to. <laughs> <laughs> it's scary reading this chapter. <laughs> Be scared uh, of me. Let's see. Oh. I'm gonna try. Oh. I can't. I can't guarantee it. It's gonna. Let me see. Crossing <laughs> fingers, unless it totally. I will die there simultaneously with Madeline. Okay. <laughs> this is the best I can do, and it says "rar." <laughs> um, unfortunately, I can't. I can't scale it enough. So sorry. Or maybe I can. Oh, there we go. There we go. Oh my god, is it me as a baby kitten with the word raw? <laughs> yes. <on it>? <laughs> yes. <laughs> this All is right. adorable. Yes. Ah, okay. <clears throat> so, moving on. <laughs> I'm a menace to society. You are a menace to yes, society. I kept it out of my lady. The first one to get in. I lure people in with my cuteness, and then after that, I I uh, push them down. Just like a cat. One at a time. <laughs> All right, let us continue on. <laughs> yes, you're adorable. Rosamine's disappearance and return as Sigiswald point of view. Rosamine tells Sigiswald <laughs> that she will go to the second floor to donate mana. So this is this is the, <laughs> the story from the other side, where the magic tool shoemills are directing her. He hears some surprise cries from the second floor, then silence. Like imagine just suddenly hear like, oh my god, and then just like shh. <laughs> just, just imagine suddenly it. just throws a mind <laughs> and people and yelling my name. Huh? Patrick? The description, the silence was deafening. <laughs> yeah, because we have a magic tool that's deafen sounds. That is true. There's uh, some noise deafening sounds. Now, Hartman walks down <laughs> and asks Sigiswell for permission to let Rosamine read, which she takes to mean that something has happened, but he does not want to say what it was in such a public place. Sigiswald agrees and takes Hartman with him to perform the final checks on the furthest hall. During their walk to the furthest hall, Sigiswald and Hartman use a sound blocking magic tool to talk about what happened. Rosamine disappeared when she offered mana, and the two shoemills said only that she was with Gramps now. Sigiswald agrees to keep this a secret to everyone except for the king for one week, just to see what happens. Hopefully she returns by then. However, after a week passes, Rosamine has not returned. The royal family has a meeting to discuss what to do next. Turns out that Eglantine... Oh, so we now know what's been happening behind the scenes, okay? That's some very important information. Uh, yeah. Eglantine was glowing very important. because she was pregnant at, and now she's had a baby. And so I suspected this when, when uh, Rosamine went to that Archduke candidate course and she described Eglantina as being particularly beautiful oh I yeah mean, I, I expected that she would a, mm-hmm. this is such the glowing is such a indicator of oh it's pregnant <laughs> it's like each story it's like oh the woman is glowing you're pregnant <laughs> <laughs> I don't know any other context of this phrasing Really? Uh, you except gotta, that's except, true. except yeah. literally glowing. Except literally glowing. <laughs> like she's literally glowing. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but every any or every cigar is like okay, pregnant. <laughs> she's just glistening in the sunlight, you know. Mm-hmm. She's pregnant. <laughs> she's beauty and she's grace. All right. So a week passes. <laughs> a week passes. 
we they have a family meeting the royal family meeting <laughs> we learned that rosamine has been has been pregnant or was pregnant um rosamine which, is pregnant sorry. oh my god oh my gosh. we learned <laughs> no. that eglantine this, was, this, sorry. this this is not <laughs> the epilogue <laughs> eglantine <laughs> was pregnant at the time rosamine had finished circling the shrines excuse me <clears throat> which was yeah and also that reason why uh, basically when she danced mm -hmm. uh the every the the she oh wasn't able the to God circle gave her mana mm -hmm. back because the baby was in danger because uh she was giving too much mana yeah so basically that's, uh, the, that's reason the reason why, why she couldn't become like do all the ritual and they had to rely on rosamine was that she's pregnant and since they need the good retreat as soon as possible she would have had to wait at least until her baby was born uh, so exactly divide. so uh, i don't understand why people got so mad we are mad and we shall <laughs> remain mad <laughs> <laughs> it's a divine pregnancy test. <laughs> Speaking of which, there was a uh, what was it? There was a meme. I showed it before while I was doing the quick meme roundup. Uh, man, why do I have to have so many freaking memes out here? Okay, here we go. Uh, there it is. There's a meme for you all. So apparently, while she was pregnant, uh, Nahilash, the Sigiswald first wife, was was having to take over like her her mana giving responsibilities. But he never once mentions Adolphine, or maybe if he did, it was some passing. Because basically, he was like, "Oh yeah, Nahilash had to pick up the slack. Nahilash did. Our firstborn was born. Our our my first son was born, and she had to like like do all this for Eglantine. But like, dude." Adolphine, hello! Like, where's our precious being Adolphine? How dare yeah, you? I know. I I, re I resent that greatly. Um, <laughs> I uh, resent to just walk so much for disrespecting Adolphine. Mm -hmm, right. So, um, uh, right now, um, Eglantine has already given birth, but her pregnancy has put a great strain on the royal family due to having less people to supply mana. Uh, it seems that no one has noticed that Rosamond has disappeared. Everyone from other duchies take the news that she's simply sick as truth. Except... <laughs> except for Frau Alarm! <laughs> a screeching picture. Of course. Of course. Uh, she's like, no, she's she has died, she has climbed, she has ascended the heights or something like that. Um, yeah. So she's basically. I think I wrote it differently. I think I wrote a certain structure. I did. I, I know you you put it very vague, but I was like, we can't afford the vagueness. We have to put this. I know. I I had to do it. Sorry. <laughs> I know what your intent was. Sorry. Um. What was that? What was I? I'm lost. I am lost. I got lost. Oh well. Um, the royal family decides. No, I, I had a meme of of uh, what's oh. her face, but I lost it. Oh well. So. Oh, no. Yeah, yeah. It's sad. We lost a meme. We lost a meme. Though, if you go back to the intermission, I I showed all the memes, so you should find it there. The royal family uh, decides that if Rosamine does not return by the time of the late noble dedication ceremony, they will talk with Erinfus to see what they will say. Rosamine does not return by that time, and a meeting is scheduled. During the meeting, Sigiswald asks why Aramfest is not worried about Rosamine's disappearance, and here we get this hilarious scene. Again, we get it from two points of view. Uh, this one, Sigiswald, and then Charlotte, which we will know later. Basically, oh, yeah. <laughs> Wilfried responds that they have been preparing for Rosamine to be taken away for months, so her disappearance does not affect them that much. He also... <laughs> I, I love Charlotte's point of view on this one. I know! He basically is like indirectly like like being offensive. <laughs> like, uh, yeah, she's giving offense. I don't think offense. he even realizes that he's doing that. He d so Wilfred doesn't realize <laughs> that he's being <laughs> rude. <laughs> and Sid as well doesn't realize that there could be, it could be like tantamount to being rudeness. So it's like, I keep saying this, clown to clown, clown communication. To clown. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, we should have had it. I should, well... He is so lucky that it wasn't Anastasia. Guys, right. My so said, lucky it wasn't Anastasia. Was hmm? Guys, my guys brother Rosemary it was pregnant earlier. Who's the father? Adelor? <laughs> <laughs> oh no! They did mix mana after all. Oh. You guys are being lewd. Stop it. <laughs> no. <I refuse>. uh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> good point. Now. <clears throat> 
So, uh, Sages will takes it as criticism, the, almost, almost takes it as criticism in the royal family, but he's beginning to doubt how well he can read Erebus people. After all, Erebus people are really weird. Um, and also, to help kind of smooth things over, Hartmut speaks up immediately. And, you know, doing as Hartmut does, states that the reason they are not worried is because he can feel Lady Rosamine's mana growing and she's alive and it's basically kind of gross, but it works to divert attention. <laughs> um, so just what next asks Wilfried how he feels about his engagement being cancelled. Again, Wilfried, uh, he responds that he was unsuited to being Rosamine's husband and that Sid just is a much better fit. <laughs> Finally, he suggests that Sigiswell prepare charms for uh, for Rosamine as soon as he can because she has a plenty and he has to get started soon, of course. Uh, Sigiswell uh, basically thanks him by giving him a cup of tea. Next. Um, so crisis averted, poor Charlotte sweated a thousand bullets there. We'll see in the next, in her point of view. Uh, Sigiswell Finally, uh, towards the end of the interdutchy tournament, because Rosamine didn't appear even then, he visits the Royal Academy um, Library on the day after the graduation ceremony, only to find that what? Ferdinand was there. And um, yeah, that Ferdinand was there. And um, the, uh, what, what was it? Oh my gosh, I lost that. Anyway. Uh, da -da -da -da. Only to find Ferdinand is standing on the second floor, muttering about Rosamine always ruining his plans. And Sigiswald receives word at, after many days, or after some time, that Rosamine arrived. And, um, and upon seeing her, Sigiswald goes into a mental monologue about her new appearance and agrees to postponing any meetings to later as she urgently needs to talk to Ob Ehrenfest. All right. Anything about this chapter you guys want to mention, point out, talk about? There's plenty. Sigiswald is definitely a himbo. <laughs> but not not as adorable as as Sylvester. 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 Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah he's, not adorable he's, enough. He's the himbo who doesn't try. <laughs> oh my god, bro. <laughs> yes. Wait, 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 wait. He <laughs> had gone with Rosemine to the library. Uh, and to give her permission, and, and was on, on Rosamund's side to let she get mana for the library. So look, just doing the barest work. minimum he, does not he mean he's trying. trying. He's trying. Of course he's trying, otherwise he would do nothing. <laughs> um, I don't know, he... I don't know, he's just not at the same level of the himbo who tries Sylvester. Because Sylvester, at least, he... He earned Rosamund's good opinion. Whereas, um... <laughs> I mean, so just well, not everybody so just can well be a Sylvester. <laughs> How much you want to bet he's going to try harder now that Rosemine's grown up? Oh, yeah, well, yeah, simp. Um, it's, a little, it's a little late. It's a little late, yeah. Um, also, there is the, um, the illustration about this one. We have, we have little... What's his face? <laughs> What's Hildebrand. His name? Hildebrand. I'm sorry, you guys. My brain is shutting Thank down. Yeah, I, I think go, since going since nine o'clock has been doing things to my brain now, you guys. <laughs> yeah, we are we are nearly finished. <laughs> we are nearly finished, though. Um, Aren't we going to talk uh, about what type, what the chat Wilfred is? Because when Rosemind became a grown-up sexy lady, he still, <laughs> yeah, I still see that you are a child inside. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but He's also with the guy that goes for the outer look. Yeah, also Wilfred and Rosemine. It was never about Wilfred not good enough for Rosemine. It was Wilfred was was not a not match for Ferdinand, basically. Yeah, basically. yeah, pretty much. I guess. So it, it was not possible for him to be a man worthy of Rosemine, and this was not good for his ego. Hmm. And I, 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 I would also imagine, I would also imagine with Fritz what would really struggle with it. Yeah, um, I, I guess we we can give Wilfried some credit, some credit, not a lot, but some credit. At least he's not shallow, in that sense. 
Yeah. Also, I found it interesting how every higher duchy is talking like really aggressive to the prince, to the princess and stuff, like Dunkelfelder. And in the higher duchy, it's like, oh no, do what he says and calm down. And now Wilfred is doing exactly what Rosamund did, and it's like, oh god, no, why are you doing that? <laughs> <laughs> and everybody is wondering. But he, he doesn't do it on purpose, but he still <laughs> like talks. They were, he, he talks they were freaking out when Rosemine did it too. <laughs> yeah, I mean, see, with um, with uh, Dunkelfelder, where the knights came and um, dest destroyed the Ditter match, like it was not nice what he did to the prince. <laughs> it's like you are knights, uh, do knights fall, and we want to be there and stuff. Not how you should approach royalty. <laughs> yeah. Except. I think, I think this royalty is getting used to like being disrespected and they're kind of like <laughs> they have no other choice than to just As let it should. slide yeah because they, well, they first off the king was like the son of he was going to be a vassal then he has no good to hide then his sons are losers they have no mana <laughs> honestly like they they yeah they have yeah, they but, got a tough but also, I, I disagree they don't know anything other than take nails <laughs> wait what was it Patrick? only behind I disagree. Hildebrand is not a loser. <laughs> All right, he's not but a also, loser. Also, only, the, only, the, the, only the high duchies are doing that, so maybe that is the proper etiquette? <laughs> maybe. The low ones doesn't do it. I don't know. So, um, so basically... One of the things that I wanted to also point out is during all this conversation about Rosamine and how weird she is, like Sigiswell at one point, he's like, am I really going to marry this girl? Uh, he has like, he's beginning to have his doubts. Like he's like, I don't know, man. Like, I don't know. But then the moment he sees her change beauty, like he almost goes poetic, like her tapered fingertips and her long lustrous hair and all of these things. Um, he's like, yeah. he is uh, praising Rosemine again. Uh huh. Yeah. I wish we we had this. Oh no, no he's hot. <laughs> um. Yeah. So. We, I, I also wish we had a Hildebrand point of view. Um, I'm interested to know what he, what he might have to say. Uh, though I did find a really cute, um, a really cute meme. Uh, it goes from, I used to like lollies. I'm more into One Sans now. <laughs> oh, and, and it's Rosemine when she was little compared to Rosemine. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. adult. Yeah. So I, I still want to see Hildebrand calling her mommy. Oh. <laughs> I don't know. Oh. I do not. I do not know how Magdalena would take it. <laughs> Magdalena would not take it well. Oh, Magdalena would ditter, and she would lose, of course. Oh, Magdalena would flip her shit. <laughs> 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 She's already not really happy with Hildebrand's obsession with Rosemite. Don't make it worse. <laughs> oh man, yeah. So uh, we have that. Anything else that I that I. Uh, missed or that i forgot about this chapter or that you guys want to um there is one final thing if you guys still have anything there's one final thing i want to talk about it is um the uh, the ferdinand part where ferdinand uh it's in the upstairs with the Mr. statue and sigiswald finds yeah. him there it's like a ferdinand point of view I am hoping that Troll City translates it because it's not in one of the it's not in one of the fan fan books or in one of the um, short story collections. As far as I know, it's like purchase privilege. So do check it out if it comes out. If it doesn't come out, I'll do something with the gang and we'll just have to wing it. Oh, yeah. It's a really, really, really good chapter. It's for the next point of view during the whole introductory tournament. So we won't talk about and that for now, but be on the lookout for that. Yes, Patrick. Oh, yes. Was... Hmm? Fine. What? What? I was just gonna say that part about him saying Rosebine always foiling his plans. Yes, it's it's basically that talking about that. Uh, we kind of already have a gist of what he wants, and basically knowing everything, he basically I think wants to went to go get his scooter's hide or whatever or something. I don't know. He wanted three hundred pieces Again. of high quality magic paper. He wants 
can make a copy of it. it was yeah. Such. And, and now, and much. now we know she not took the quality. rest of his book. Maximum quality. Maximum quality. Yes, she took the maximum. rest of his book. <laughs> so who knows? Like, ah, we need that. We need that translated. I have a, like a MTL thing that somebody gave me, um, but I'm looking forward to Troll City somehow releasing it if they haven't already. We'll see. I have to. Yeah. I have to check it out. If if you guys know. Anyway, about my it, mm, What's up? I have one more thing. What's up? So, um, you, you know how, like, uh, Sigiswald heard him go, you always spoil my plans, Magpie? Uh -huh. mm -hmm. uh, Magpie. <laughs> Magpie. <laughs> yeah, Magpie, you always spoil our plans. Rosemite. Yeah. Magpie is ruining our plans. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Um, basically, Dai is just incriminating him more and more to the royal family. Like, hmm. he's not helping his case. <laughs> yeah, it makes sense, though. Yeah. Also... Um, yeah, because he's like, well, what? Oh, wait, actually, luckily, I don't think Sid just well connected the dots, though. Like, like, he was that close. He was that close to connecting the dots. Like, the statue was there. The statue with the Mestio Nora was there. Uh, the shoe mills took him, took her upstairs and he still didn't connect the dots as to as to what what the tool was. So I'm like, Sid is wild. <laughs> Sid is wild, my dude. <laughs> It, canonically, Sigiswald is terrible at Pictionary. <laughs> oh, yeah. Also, you guys, I wanted to point out the fact that Rosamine uh, did her tablets. Um, shows her ta her book. It's not a book. It's a tablet. So there's this little uh, meme. <laughs> but it was hilarious. It's uh, from taken from the manga of Spy Family. And we have um, Rosamine showing off her, her Gucci side, I guess, in a way. She's like, oh no, I just dropped a super cool picture of my new book. Gosh, I'm so clumsy. So she did that for um, Dunkelfelder, and I forgot to bring it up. Um, somebody pinged me. Who pinged An me? Anya is best girl. Anya is best girl. <laughs> I spelled your name wrong again. I'm sorry, Noemi. <laughs> Um, yeah, sorry about sorry that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so anything sorry, else about sorry. this chapter um, that we need to do? Besides Fraulam getting fired and Rosamine surviving <laughs> and returning. No? Okay. So I think we can kind of continue on. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Last almost there. Believe, right? so, no, second to last. Well, oh my there. god, we're so close. Uh, the Royal Academy, <laughs> the Royal Academy without my sister, a Charlotte point of view. Mm. Nothing happens. Next one. Yeah, the chapter, <laughs> <laughs> the chapter starts right after lunch on the day of the Archduke, Arch Noble candidate dedication ritual. Rosamond's retainers return with the news of her disappearance. Hartmut, of course, in his crazy way. Everyone is ordered into silence on, on the matter, thanks to Hartmut's disciplinary action. It, all, it is all contained. A, a few days later, Hersher arrives asking about Rosamine and her research regarding the joint research with Ironspack. They decide to tell Hersher the truth, fill her in, and she keeps the secret as long as they give her the materials and uh, necessary to create the magic tool for the library. Hanalor, poor dear, uh, she's a, such a precious girl, sends a letter asking for when they can meet to exchange books and is told that Rosamine is still sick and cannot participate yet. After 10 days, Paula wonders aloud if Rosamine is truly okay. And <laughs> I, I love this part because Wilfred is like, no, Charlotte! Or maybe it's the other <laughs> way around. I don't know, somebody says it and then Harwood's like, oh, right. yes! Harwood goes crazy. <laughs> He, asks, he says that he can feel her growing by the day. And the other Rosamine's, Rosamine's other name swans, they also agree. Uh, but they don't, they don't quite say that. They don't quite agree that it has to mean that she's growing physically. But Hartmut insists that she's growing physically. An invitation from the royal family arrives. And they go and basically they have the meeting that they had with Sigiswald. Um, uh, or in the Sigiswald point of view. But in this case, we're seeing it all from Charlotte. And she is suffering. She just, she can't believe the what's happening. It's so bad in her point of view. Um, but luckily, they they 
they get through all right. Uh, meanwhile, Lady Jean Tianen uh, was promised an invitation into a library committee from Rosamine and is asking about it. However, she's refused again on the grounds that Rosamine is sick and she cannot participate. Time passes, Rosamine is still not back. During the interdutchy tournament, um, they, they cannot talk to Ferdinand. They can't say what's going on, but they hope that because they were unable to give um, the food and all the stuff that Rosamine usually like sends him, that he'll take a hint that something is up. Um, yeah. There's just... Oops, sorry, sorry. Yeah, there's just so much going on um, and so many eyes on them that they cannot tell Ferdinand what is going on. Um, yep. Yeah, unfortunately. This is a time when they really need some, like, secret uh, secret um, communications, but no. <laughs> Sylvester, meanwhile, during this, this time, Brunhild graduates. Sylvester escorts her. Wilfred is unhappy, but, you know, he has to suck it up. He scolded in private for it. Uh, Amphis receives word at last, at long last, that Rosamond has returned. Charlotte is excited to see Rosamine again, but is shocked at just how beautiful she looks. She almost looks like a being from another world. And let me just show you, there was me. <laughs> People went crazy for this. I went crazy for it. It was hilarious. Um, oh, God, yeah. <laughs> let me just... <laughs> uh, I can actually read it. Uh, it says, <laughs> Rosamine's dazzling hair, long and dark as night, swayed majestically as she looked around the room with uncertain eyes. She was now taller than me and seemed so much like an adult that I doubted anyone would use the word adorable to describe her ever again. A sigh escaped me. I was struck with the urge to admire her refined, almost sculpturesque beauty from every angle, from now until the end of time. <laughs> And at this point, we found out. Oh no, he's hot! Another, another one joins the cult. <laughs> another one. Make at that, this, how many at that this point, we found out that siblings could simp for siblings. <laughs> Apparently. Oh yep. my goodness. Apparently. Very scary story one. <laughs> yeah, so there's. Are we going to say something like step sister? Oh my gosh. Oh my god! <laughs> oh, we have to, oh, oh, we have to, oh, consider sister. consider all the <laughs> jokes have been said. Consider that all of the possibilities for all of the stepbrother, stepsister jokes have been heard. They're in our heads because we're filthy minded like that. Okay. <laughs> because of the last <laughs> Because we are. We are <laughs> like that. The degeneracy. All right. Um, by the way, another another illustration here. Uh, this one shows all the siblings we have. Um, uh, oh, and another thing, she's like super starstruck, but then she like snaps back into reality because she sees Wilfried and Rosamine converse regularly. Uh, she sees that Wilfried, like somebody said, he props to him for not treating her like so for not becoming a simp and being like, wow, like falling over himself when he sees Rosamine. Um, so I guess that's that's the minimum, I guess. I'm to see. Yeah, and so let me see. And then this one. Uh, any any yeah. other thing about I, this? I any other thing about this mm -hmm. chapter that you guys want to point out that I absolutely missed? Uh, the, 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 oh no, she's hot again with Charlotte. Like oh my you god, the, Charlotte. You missed, you missed the boys' room, <laughs> the boys' storm. The boy storm. Oh, I basically yes. was the um, Hartmut's Hartmut's discipline. I, yeah. I just I just put it in a sentence. But talk yeah. about that. Talk about the boy storm. Tell me all about it. All I can say yeah. is I really enjoyed doing his voice for that section. <laughs> some so some boys were speculating about rumors from the what 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 was it? Of the and school the... mysterious and the vanishing of mm. students of Rosemine and oh, stuff. Oh, yes, yes. There's... And had think it... yeah. yeah, so. And had to catch it them, and <laughs> now they need to memorize all of the heroic deeds <laughs> Rosemine did, and yes. just need to pray. And they got to Wilfred with it, was so, nope, mm -hmm. let's have to do it. Mm hmm. So we pointed out that, so basically everybody's saying like, oh, she misbehaved and the gods punished her just like the student from the 20 legends of the 
Royal Academy. Oh, yeah. There was a misbehaving student and he got punished. He got like, he basically vanished by the gods. So they're like, ah, oh, maybe that's what happened. And then Hartmut's like, no, repent and pray. <laughs> and so they're like, Wilfred, do something about this maniac. And Wilfred is like, no, like you are in this. Not my for, problem. Not my problem. But I was saying like, dude, like Wilfred just lets, leaves it on the, um, <laughs> like somebody else. Who is the, who is the archducal candidate here? It's not Hartmut. Uh, but okay, whatever. Wilfried will be Wilfried. I also think Wilfried just doesn't want to deal with Hartmut at he's, all. He's just Wilfried should have known better. Well, he could have. He could have probably stopped it before it got that far. Uh, you know, they should have known better back then. Yeah. Wilfried, mm -hmm. Wilfried just told basically, okay, this is now your punishment. <laughs> Basically. And any other, yeah. any other Archduke candidate was also in agreement. Mm -hmm. It was like, oh yeah, I cannot, I cannot now, why Wilfred is not doing something. But she also was doing nothing. Uh, yeah, I guess. I guess. You got a point. Alright, oh, but it, this was the boys' level. She can't go up to the boys' level. She can still yeah. punish the boys. You don't need to be in their rooms to be punished. I, I think it's just except the case maybe of... you need. No, you I, don't I need. I think it's lose. It's just lose. It's a real case. <laughs> it's Depends a real on case. Kind of okay, hold on a knowing... second. Hold on a second. Babbit. It's a rare case of Wolfrey knowing that this is the best way to punish them. <laughs> Leave them to Hartmut. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, All right, fair he knows the right person cool. for the right job in this case. Mm. Um, Vincent? Father punishment would be cruel. <laughs> I mean, you have to do all this stuff for Hartmut and then another punishment. <laughs> all right, all right. Um, so, yes. Uh, anything else besides this chapter that I, I missed? No, it's pretty much. It's now. It's time Next for the. Time it's time talk. for the glorious lore chapter that I oh ever. Oh my lord. gosh, lore! You got it's that right. It's more than a. It's like a page it of stuff, a full page of it's lore. It's a page and a half. Yeah, basically, almost. Yeah. A lot of new info. Their hopes and dreams, the Leonzio point of view, and you guys were at one fifty-two p.m. Oh, <laughs> By the way, we have officially broken the record. We have officially broken the record, dudes. I am, yeah, estoy viendo visco ahorita. You're not cut it short. Like we're gonna have to, cut, we're gonna have to cut into. I am the, not, uh, gonna, cut short, I'm not gonna cut it short. I'm not gonna cut it short. Prepub has an issue. Prepub, I'll just, leave. I'll just start highlighting while we're doing this. <laughs> This is by far one of my like most favorite chapters. Yeah, so we're gonna we're gonna delve deep into this. Well, probably not trash tier deep, but uh, we are gonna talk about this because it's important. Um, okay, let's do this. You guys ready? Let's do this, homies. Yep. All right, their hopes and dreams, which is a lame ass title for this stupid people. I hate it, but okay. More like their ambitions and greeds. All right. <laughs> onions. <laughs> that, yeah. Delin orders her retainers to lock away Letizia and her retainer. Leonzi believes that this situation is the best for Le Letizia. She will be treated well in Lanzanab and will have many suitors in his perspective. Oh my gosh. Not just suitors. Yeah. This is like, I don't think this is suitors. This is full on flower taking. Okay. Um, oh, yeah. If, 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 if if we're going if we're gonna go by what they do in the Adelgisa villa i'm sure it'll just be flower taking um so in mm -hmm. so he says oh well in comparison to her living like trapped uh in, in a, like a white tower or executed um under under deadland it's better that she goes to L lanzone where she'll be treated well well whatever like to be treated that way so anyway his next course of action is to loot all of the face stones and magic tools from both letizia and Ferdinand's rooms and the northern and western buildings to send to lanzanave like just the sheer gall and the audacity they're literally just going around like going la -di -da. they're gonna get all the stuff all the valuables from from Ferdinand and letizia that's terrible they're awful yeah 
Yeah. All the corpses. And not they're only that... They're going on a face stone hunt. Right, not only that, yeah, Patrick, they're gonna go on what they call a face stone hunt. They're not... They don't say we're gonna go ambush innocence. No, they say we're gonna go on a face stone hunt because people are basically face stones. If you remove the if they if you dehumanize your victims they just become objects and you can do the things yeah, I mean, but i mean danke feather did the same like all it's, it's, it's every day it's a dinner it's game it's not war it's a dinner game no 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 this okay but uh, 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 there's so much wrong with that logic it's not it's false equivalency <laughs> no no no, no. <laughs> i'm sorry you wrong <laughs> don't make it right it's just a game but okay so, so it, it is a game war mm. It what? has been the art of war since humanity became a thing because if you de if you demonize or dehumanize your enemy, it's easier to fight mm -hmm. them. Yeah. Yep. So that's what's happening here. He calls, we're going to go on a face stone hunt as if they were hunting babies like shoe mills or whatever. No, these are people. Anyway, so uh, can you guys tell that I'm ranting and raving? <laughs> yeah, that's enough yes, has a messed up culture for sure. That is not a bad thing in this context. You're <laughs> renting. <laughs> All right. Imagine hunting stones. That's really, really. They do nothing with stones. They're just lying there. Uh, yeah, I guess that's basically what's going to happen with all this, all the belongings in Ferdinand and Letizia's chambers. Really extreme game of marbles. Hmm. Uh, extreme game of marbles. <laughs> all right. So Detlin wants to inform her mother of the success of the operation from her side but leon's just like yo wait a second ferdinand is still alive and she's like yeah well he's gonna be dead eventually and also i don't want my mom to scold me for not having completed the job so she just went ahead and told uh georgine that ferdinand was dead i'm sure that's not gonna come uh, back and bite uh, her in the butt um i'm sure no, no. Mm -hmm. uh. yeah so um Leoncio and Detland leave in separate carriages because, of course, modesty. Uh, one of the things, though, that struck me is like Detland's like, let's go back to our villa. I was like, what? Our villa? Like, what? Oh my gosh. Like, this girl, <laughs> she cares about. Oh gosh. Uh... Anyway, basically, already considers herself a like a couple with Leoncio and the, the villa where the Lanzunavians reside is her house as well which is how she treats the place like leonzio notices like when he arrives to the villa that basically they're treated as guests like uh what's it called um detland and her people they just order them about and do the things as if it was their house and they're like yo this is supposed to be lanzanave's villa but oh well haha -ha. mm, let's see yep yeah. now we well he is well he has some time apart from her he's like oh how long must i continue to do this farce he finds dealing with her exhausting he deserves it and more all of the envoys in erin's back are planning an all-out attack on any noble okay so this is the face stone hunt um lancelot's main powers no here we get a whole bunch of lore while he's um, thinking, Lanzanev's main powers are split between three houses. Anybody want to explain this? Because I need to take a break. Uh, my mouth is dry. Uh, who wants to take over and read this stuff or explain the house situation? Uh, one second. We Let me scroll down to it. Let's find it. Yeah. Uh, which one were you at? The house situation? Yep. Lanzanev's main powers. Ah, oh, I remember it, but I can't explain. But I can't remember enough. Where to explain is that it. one line? I can't find it. Um, Lanzanev's oh, main powers are split oh, between three houses: Coralie, Shen Sentis, and Lower yeah. Lear. You got I can it? see it. Yeah, I can read it. Yeah. All right. So, there are both the name. The they are both the names of flowers and the the names of rooms within the Adogiza villa. There, there is supposed to be a princess from each house oh. in the villa who is who would sire children until their son was chosen to receive a stop and become the next king of Lazanave. Princess was sent to every generation to keep their bloodline from thickening it with too much urgency of blood. Nianzio's grandfather, uh, King Ciferdo, 
from House Coralie has married his daughter to the next king, King Gustavio, from the law from House Lowerly. Their union was lo a loveless one, and his second wife from House Chantieri was both more loved and gained more influence, lowering House Corelli's influence. So basically, Led Zanave, after that, um, uh, Led Zanave has made uh, technical advances in the world because they do not have a lot of mana. So, uh, the influence of the royal family has been diminishing as a result of the common people not needing mana to live. House Coralie wishes to regain power by having a new king born from Coralie Princess. So they went to, to Diego Giza Villa to uh, repent, and but the current royal family have not accepted any princesses since the civil war. We, as the audience, know it is because the Zent is not a true Zent mm -hmm. ruling at the moment. Mm -hmm. So, because it's not a real Zent, he doesn't want to uh, have anything contest his lineage and his ruling. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Lanzanev has no choice uh, other than waiting for a change in power in Jürgen Smith. So, two years ago, Lanzanev received a letter from an envoy asking if the current king has a rela relationship with the sovereign knight's commander. They did not know who the message was referring to, so they decided they needed to make contact to find out. After much deliberation, Leonzio was chosen to go to go and secure an avenue for more Feystone to open the villa and establish a connection with Georgine or the sovereign command nice commander. All right, thank you. So we'll we'll stop here and we will talk about this political situation. Thanks, Naomi. Um, basically, it's pretty self-explanatory. We have factions in Lanzanave. We have uh, power plays. We have kings and all this thing going on. Um, and of course, we learn uh, as that it's all connected to um, the princesses of Adogiza. And we know in this chapter what it is that Leonzio wants so much. Uh, anybody can remember what are some things that Leonzio is like just foaming at the mouth to get? Uh, face down. A strap. A strap. A strap. A strap. He wants to be a wizard. A strap. Face stones. People to bring over in general. Yeah. And he, he basically wants to bring flop. back the the prestige of Coralie House, which is his house. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. He yeah. wanted his younger sister to be a uh, part of the villa too. Ugh. Yep. Jeez, to want that for your sister, that's just messed up, dude. Ugh, mm -hmm. oh, well, I guess it's I guess just like uh uh Gillen Paris says, uh Lanzanov has a messed up culture, so I guess to them mm -hmm. being quote unquote doted on is a good thing, but it's just gross. Mm -hmm. Uh <laughs> One, I think there's just like a cognitive like disconnect between like what it means for her sister to be in his position. Mm -hmm. Yeah, probably. And it's just like a second, and it's just like a second thing because of just like what it means for like people who manage to reproduce. It's like I'm not surprised that culture develops, and also just hearing all the lore, mm -hmm. all I feel is just like a strong sense of pity for like Leonzio. Really? Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. Please elaborate. Just, just because he's so misguided, I know. No, so, not misguided because he was born into such a fucked situation. <laughs> yeah, I guess. For me, I feel like I feel like. And also, his only hope is to just like bond with Deadland. Oh. <laughs> hey, fate worse than death, if you ask me. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, it is so bad to have to be uh, with that land every single day. Yeah, yeah, he has to like play kind, seduce, and just like basically l link his public image with that land. So basically, he's getting a taste of what Ferdinand has had to do for the past year and a half. Yeah, I feel. Oh, I don't works. feel sorry for him. I don't feel sorry for him. Everyone, <laughs> everyone knows Ferdinand is forced to. Lanzia is Ferdinand. forced to pretend like he wants her. <laughs> poor Ferdinand. Yeah, how much he has suffered. And Lanzia is doing it <laughs> all just <laughs> back in her power. Yeah. What? We don't need your simping right now. Yeah. This is not yeah, simping. Also, this is basic human. But also, decision. it's just like, oh man, it's just go ahead like, and simp. The fact, that he, the fact that their entire country is just like without any divine presence is also just like what? Mm -hmm. 
So, yeah. So, yeah. A country is basically a mm -hmm. uh, land. It doesn't need mana to it function, doesn't. which is really fun. It's weird how we see it mm -hmm. because we don't know what lands the name has. Because I, th I'm pretty sure at some point it was mentioned. They mentioned some certain gadgets that they have, and I'm like, whoa, wait, how advanced is lands the name? Yeah, we don't know. Yeah. They mentioned a communication device in there. Yeah. Like they were fascinated yeah. over the face stones, but they're just like, yeah, we wouldn't be able to communicate, but we have our own ways that don't mm -hmm. work here. Why doesn't it work here? Is it because you need to like set up uh, like uh, telegram sort of networks? And why is it a network? I don't know. We don't radio? know. Yeah, we don't and know. Maybe mana, and maybe and, and a mana interferes with it. Or maybe it just needs yeah, electricity. I, I figured maybe, I figured maybe just like, um, Rosamine is just like one isekai person, but mm. maybe the and it's like they implied that the world has a history of uh, isekai people, and that maybe that explains Lanzanov's situation maybe. because Lanzanov had their own like isekai people. Maybe it's not it's not outside of the realm of possibility. We don't know. Uh, that's one of the things that I wish. Uh, well, for several reasons, I wish Pasuki Sensei would just paint a more broader picture or more details about Lanzanov. We know that the. <laughs> that the native people of Lanzanave are darker skinned, but that's mm -hmm. basically all we get. And I don't know, we get sugar from there, so we oh. can kind of like guess, uh, okay, so if they get sugar from this country, then they're kind of like climate, <laughs> sub, uh, tropical, subtropical climate. Well, yeah, we, yeah, we it's kind know. of, I don't know, yeah, it's just the implications that like, it's basically like, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I was gonna say it's kind of implied that it's based off of people. like India or mm. the Caribbean. Mm -hmm. Yeah, one of the West in ah. West Indies, East Indies. Who knows? Yeah, we'll see. Yeah. Um. I was mm -hmm. I was reading the, the wiki and, and I found history. something funny. Hold on a second. Uh, <laughs> yeah, go ahead, um, Vincent. Go Vincent. So I, was, I, wanna... I, I was reading the wiki about Lanzanaf and I and I have now read the name from the first king of Lanzanaf and the name translates to pool hardness. Pool pool darkness? Me, what? Pool full hardness. Pool full hardy. Oh full hardy. Yeah yeah I I I full hardy. Sorry. Oh that's a translation <laughs> to be full hardy? <laughs> yeah, because his name is Tolkien Height, and it, I found it really funny because the whole country is like exactly like the king. <laughs> For sure. Yeah, if, all if, of these, if you all speak these multiple things. languages, the names are not subtle. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah. Uh, Sometimes not. sounds like the girl is supposed to be super fucking nice. Like it's not a joke. Gentile. You're telling me the guy whose name Jean is Foolhardy? Basically means like, nice. Yeah. <laughs> a, a foolhardy yeah, king. Like a, a sovereign uh, priest is called religion. A real <laughs> religion. Yeah. Are they telling me that a king who made a, a country in a place where there's no magic that requires magic was foolhardy? <laughs> that... Yep. Yep. That would have so Oh, jeez. <laughs> so that's another little bit of lore. Thank you for sharing that uh, with us ignorant uh, people. <laughs> um, it it kind of reminds me of Akira Toriyama's way of naming characters in Dragon Ball. I mean, <laughs> in Vegeta, oh, Akarot, Vegeta. Oh. And then Bibbidi oh, Babbidi Boo. That too. Mm. I mean, d d doesn't Gohan just mean to eat? Gohan? Gohan is rice, rice? or it could be a, a meal. Yeah. Wow. yeah. Hmm. All right, you guys. Oh, well, let's. Get... let's... We're let's... almost done, you guys. We're <laughs> almost done. We're almost done. So. <clears throat> Um, Leoncio arrives at the Lanzanave Envoy Estate and is met by Alsteed. Mm. Alsteed, yeah. Uh-huh, Alsteed. Uh, who is Stetland's sister and the actual Ob. She is only doing what she's told by her steps, by her mother and her sister. Now we learn that she's total. she's a totally different animal than Detland. She is more like, I kind of feel like she's the typical middle child or at least the child who was, who was brought up by a narcissistic parent. Like she is, yes. she is exactly a textbook case. Uh, I kind of feel sorry for her though. So, but she's it's doing this. It's bad what happens to her. It's, uh, she, I believe she was one of the old, she was the oldest of all of the three siblings. Mm. Two. So, so, 
Uh, we don't know what's going to happen in the future. But right now, what we do know now is that she is married to a guy who was used to be an okay. Archduke candidate, but now he was demoted to Archnoble. So she hopes that once she becomes Ob, he will be again uh, raised to Archducal candidate. And um, she also has a child. So she's doing all these things, you know, for the betterment of her family. So... It's like, a really cute baby. <laughs> I'm joking. I don't know. We don't know that. We haven't seen it. We haven't seen it. No, I just, no I'm just. i guessing babies are always cute, so... They're not. <laughs> they really are not. Um, <laughs> they are horrible, Magma. As, well, as long as you're the, not the one taking care of them, sure. Yeah. Exactly. As long as you're not your kid. <laughs> look, that. look. There's babies that are just not cute. They're ugly. <laughs> And oh, we are, no, we are forced to call really them cute. I'm sorry. I, I, no. <laughs> Some <laughs> looks like flesh reasons. <laughs> All right. Let's continue. Continue. Um, so anyway. Before we get to I know. Another tangent. So Alstead opens the, Alstead or whatever, opens the door to the teleporter. Oh, but then. Um, oh. Oh, but then we learned that they were going to, they were going to execute their plan way earlier than this. But because the Zent uh, adopted some girl who, wa who like, they were going to give the villa to, all their plans got delayed. So, I mean, they couldn't transport while there were workers, some people going in and out. And so uh, the fact that Rosamine Gremlin <laughs> did her thing, that just pushed all of their devious plans by a season yeah. or so. That's amazing. I love it. It's so funny You're because cool uh, basically this isn't always, this isn't only just uh, Rosemind's fault. This is Sigiswald thinking that Rosemind wants to be close to Ferdinand and since Ferdinand has a connection to a Diadogiza villa, he's like, well, since she likes Ferdinand so much, I might as well give her the Aldogiza villa as a nice way to be like, okay, here's a connection to your um, uh, Ferdinand and everything. But also, um, it's very funny how Detlin was like, why didn't you start earlier? There's people waiting for us, like, at her sister, like, being mad that her sister didn't start earlier. Hmm. When there's one rule that her mother only said is always wait until Detlin is there because we don't want people noticing that Detlin isn't the um. <laughs> wait, um, I have one thing about like that uh, Citrus Vault and Adel Giza thing is like mm -hmm. <coughs> Citrus you. Vault only did that because that was, yeah, thanks. Mm -hmm. Citrus Vault only did that because that was the only available Adel Giza mm -hmm. that did not require the Grotros Height to make yes. available. Yes, yes. So there are other villas. There are other villas. No, there but wasn't. They were the, all taken. There are other villas. The ones that are available are taken, and there are some shut villas, but they need the good side to open them. So that's yeah. why they ha they have a housing shortage because unless they have the good side, they can't open all the other villas that are around. Yeah, um, I remember. I remember just like. I don't know if I was a part of it, but there was an argument like saying it's like Sitch's Walt is so bad because he basically sent Rosa into the whorehouse. Yeah, <laughs> we talked about this in part five, volume five, I think, or so. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 And we went and to didn't even know that. But we didn't <laughs> even know that. And we only knew about the fact that he innocently did that because of a fan book release, uh, which is in Japanese. I think it was fan book eight or seven or whatever. It's basically yeah. com like stuff that has just come up lately. So since then so i uh, rendering our entire argument moot um so yeah it happens you guys and uh, if you guys are upset that we have just cleared out these things because of a face of a fan book uh, content that hasn't been um translated i'm sorry but facts are facts and it doesn't spoil um, any any story i assume that points. before the before I even heard about like the fan book mm. yeah like most yeah. Uh, most fan book stuff doesn't really it, it it it's usually information that isn't revealed in the night level, yeah. so it's not usually a loss in terms yeah. of spoilers. Yeah, I know. It's I, just sometimes I've gotten like people who say like talking about untranslated fan book material is considered spoilers. But in my in this it's in not. this in this chat, it's not in my in my no. Discord server, it's not. As long as it doesn't ruin like, any it, plot points, it's not. So it is and is in in and it is. Yeah, I mean, for me, like I'm not gonna like say spoiler. Uh, not for these. If it explains plot points that are all, that already have come and gone, it's not really a spoiler. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. 
Oh, I see the chat got stuck at Irene, who said, I agree, they're an ugly baby. See, nobody has, has contested that statement. <laughs> you see, no one, uh, no one disagrees with that. No us. one disagrees. Uh, I'm glad. Exactly. I agree with that full hard. <laughs> uh, all right, so we're almost done, you guys. So we get the appearance of King Gervasio, who enters and Graublut, that traitor, that snake, that eel, that overglow. Anyway, <clears throat> he kneels <laughs> towards him. The guy that should have died him. years ago. Uh -huh. Leonzir is confused about this, and Rablut welcomes Gervasio as his lord and apologizes for not being able to save Valamarine. We don't know Valamarine. You guys can like talk about it in the chat, but we're not gonna talk about this because yeah. Um, but mm. we, most likely not. It's a princess from a previous generation, just because Rablut yeah. had a job at at the Adelgisa palace at some point. So that's that's as much as we can tell. Mm -hmm. I would have to take a guess and uh, Valamarie is was a Coralie princess from the previous generation. Probably. Yeah. I I guess it was his mother. Maybe. Who knows? We'll see. We don't know. We'll see. Now, Rablut was a guard knight in the Adelgisa villa and pointed out as the reason Gervasio came to power, uh, Gervasio orders Rablut to take him to the villa and Rablut agrees. And who knows what's going to happen once they reach the other side. We will have to wait for the next volume. Maybe. <laughs> a lot of stuff is happening behind the scenes and this is just one, one chapter that describes the uh the greed and the aspirations of these peoples so yeah, yeah. that is the end of the, the volume more. you guys except one more thing one more thing we have to talk about the comics because aloes did such an amazing oh. job so we're gonna go and look at the comics you guys hmm. let's see <clears throat> uh <laughs> by the way while i go into the comics any thoughts about this chapter it was funny how uh, Raul kneeled in front of the Lanzanife King. Mm -hmm. It's built up Lord his character to uh, that he's not just some ass, but rather he's following the one that he thinks is the rightful king. Mm -hmm. Yeah. A, a lot yeah. of things don't make sense. It doesn't make sense because he's supposed he's like the the head card knight of the king of Jürgenspiel, and he's yeah, but kneeling. He's, he's been yeah, so it's so suspicious. messed up. Yeah, it's so messed no, no, up. He's been so suspicious early on, and like this, this answers a lot of that. Mm -hmm. It makes sense. He's like uh, younger Schmidt uh, Matahari. Matahari. Yeah, he's a double What's agent, that? basically. Oh. Oh yeah. Huh. Oh yeah. So, uh, one thing I think kind of like is how in the afterward they clarify uh, the locations of the cover, you know, because we got to talk about the library earlier mm -hmm, and how mm -hmm. like she kind of saw that. But I like the uh, little depiction of the furthest hall at night in the moonlight there. Yeah, I like that's one of this is one of my favorite covers ever. Um, I mean, part five, volume five, it was also like a really good one. Just the colors are so beautiful. And and we get that Rosamine figurine for those of us who ordered that extremely expensive figurine. Uh, we get the small Rosamine. Uh, that's that's awesome. Yeah. Uh, she's so beautiful in there. Um, honestly though, you guys have to I have to say though, like talking back to the cover, it's the first time I saw the cover, I knew this was this book was gonna be Rosamine's growing up. And when I saw it, I was like, that's it? That's how much she grew? Like, she looks the same! <laughs> I was expecting, she like... Grew, she grew a head taller. She looks different! She, yeah, she, oh, she's not. <laughs> she just grew, like, a very, very little. That's, that was my you're missing. You're missing Eiffel plot. <laughs> she is a very short, okay? Do she's not, a short lady. Yeah, do not mention plot to me. Because <laughs> I know what you're thinking. The I plot know. is important, my guy. <laughs> the plot makes it important. The cover um, betrays how painful it was, though. Because we just look at her and she's just like, Oh, look, new rose mine. Mm -hmm, Yay. Mm -hmm. But meanwhile, she's just like, Oh, God, make it stop, please. Ouch. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> my skull is in a weird shape now. Oh, shoot. Yeah, for sure. Um, and also funny how like throughout after sh after her grad her change, 
um i think i mentioned it too much but the book says like she has trouble coordinating like she stumbles she's dragging she falls she trips she can't even eat properly like she has to eat in her room just so she doesn't like show people that she can't has no hand-eye coordination like she hasn't gotten used to her new body so <laughs> that's also and that's an why uh... when you grow a whole head taller like yeah. especially like even teenagers like you have a hard time adjusting because mm -hmm. as i did sports a lot as a teenager and uh basically every time i would have a growth sport i would suddenly have to relearn how to do all of my figure skating jumps because i could no longer Dang. jump correctly it would Dang. fall oh. constantly how we so yeah no it like it is a real thing like you completely lose co coordination because your body because it's muscle memory yeah. doing sports and stuff like that and if especially when you grow so suddenly like rosemine did you would completely lose the sense of where is the height how high am i compared to the floor what where, where is my feet how do my hands work compared to the distance of my body like you have to relearn all of these things yeah you 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 you, you lose your seven <laughs> cents <laughs> yeah yeah so let's talk about the 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 comic books at the end they're super adorable the first yeah. one is a comfy life with my family we have hartmut he's well he's being hartmut um he's uh, being hartmut yeah uh, uh, who wants to read it uh babbit do you want to read it babbit babbit can you babbit babbit oh, hi yeah sorry <laughs> <laughs> Poor Babbit, we woke you up. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Do you want to read the little comic with Hartmut? That's showing. Uh, no, okay. I can't be too loud. <laughs> All right, I'll read it. So, a country life with my family. Ah, oh, another day in which Lady Rosamine uh, continues to grow slowly but surely. And meanwhile, Lisa, Lita, and Grisha are looking at him, and they're like, this is kind of gross. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Don't call him gross. He's wholesome. <laughs> okay, he's kind of gross. Yeah, he is. The this is really one. gross. Mm -hmm. right. A little. So basically, it's a running gag, I guess, in the comic. Uh, another one where it's like consideration. This is um, uh, Muriela, and let's see. Okay. So Lady Elvira is striving to ensure that all will advance, that all advanced copies will uh, reach you as soon as possible. And Rosamine's like, mother, she's so happy. Uh, Wilfried is like, Hartmut didn't want to deprive you of a rare opportunity to read at your leisure. And Rosamine's like, oh, Hartmut. And then <laughs> Rosamine's like, even though he's being as considerate as mother, I just don't feel the same joy. <laughs> and the final panel, He's like, because he's weird and annoying, right? And meanwhile, Hartmut is, well, being kind of gross. Even now. Uh-huh, read it. Blunder. Oh, <laughs> did you read it? Because you cut off. <laughs> I think oh, you... sorry. Mm. Even it... now, the charm I received from Lady Rosemine shines with divine splendor. Yeah, because he's weird and annoying. He's being weird. <laughs> yep. Yep. So beautifully colored, of course. Uh, then we have, of course, the the one that we talked about earlier, the orderly. What was it? Cougar. Cougar, Cougar escort. escort. Cougar. Cougar escort. Uh, you know, Matthias, you have to have more confidence in yourself. I mean, what would Grausom say if he knew that his son was like so like shy? I don't know. I don't. Well, if he was still. Alive. Do I lose? I know it. <laughs> right. So come on. Um, Matthias, you can Holy do it. Is Hartmut's mother? Yeah, Arnelie's it... Hartmut's mother. <laughs> so that's going to be that's, interesting. That's extra awkward. I know, it's going to be interesting and awkward. Um, now that I think about it, uh, when I think... Oh, never mind. I think that's from later on. Yeah, so that's a cute one. He's having a really hard time getting getting her to... get Asking her. And finally, it is <laughs> Rosamine being Rosamine. Um, if this were a mountain of books, ah, I'd be so happy. So this is when she's receiving her wisdom. And then she's like, wait, no, then I'd end up being crushed to death again. Oh, wait, no. Is that a different one? Oh, no, 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 no. I read yeah. it from the Downloading wrong side. Yeah. Downloading with Sinora's wisdom. And then a woman is saying, do not resist, accept it all. 
And then she's like, oh, but I want actual books, not just their knowledge. If this were a mountain of books, I'd be so happy. And again, you get flashbacks of when she <laughs> when she got crushed to death no, in I her Japanese know. life. Yeah. Uh, and meanwhile, uh, Ergo is like, quiet down and accept Mr. Yonora's wisdom. <laughs> so yeah, um, accept the wisdom. Everybody, that is the end of this uh the content of this chit chat of this of this volume sorry you guys um so yeah everybody we made it we finished it in less than six what? hours <laughs> yes <What? laughs> five hours and 30 and uh, 25 minutes i mean if you cut if you cut the uh, 10 15 minutes of break that we had in between i mean it's I oh, yeah the break is for the break is for problem yes <laughs> The fact that you, the, the fact that Europe Gang is still with us, you guys are yeah. superstars. Yes, <laughs> but we did this early in the morning. I got up, I got up at four in the morning, no. you guys, for your sake, because <laughs> I needed to get work done and I needed to finish setting up all these illustrations, all these memes, and do the things. Um, and also because I couldn't sleep. You did well. <laughs> I will My follow you on coffee if I could. Thank you, thank you. What's up, Naomi? We have a winner for the prediction. Who? Ed Taste! Ed Taste! What does he win? Uh, just the fact that he won the, the closest bet. All right. Dragon right. I All right. will write him a love poem. Oh! Yeah, he got five hours. He wrote five hours, and the other closest one was six hours. <laughs> <laughs> So the he, other one is 16 hours, 18 hours, 9 hours, <laughs> <laughs> 4 hours and 2 minutes was another one. Mm -hmm. We had 2 hours and 45 minutes as another one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so yeah, like uh, it was uh, pretty varied. <laughs> Some people are delusional, clearly. Surprising. <laughs> <laughs> so 24 not, hours. Not be, yeah. Nobby said 18 hours for context. Um okay so that's one of those people so speaking of like <laughs> delusional no that's not speaking of something i didn't want to pass this opportunity to just acknowledge um since vincent said that he would write uh ed taste a love poem i do want to say though that we do have some gifted writers in our midst um we had vincent wrote For vincent vincent wrote an introduction uh, to uh, to me <laughs> and Navi went on to finish it off so I want to show it off to you guys since we can and I know I said I would never stream it but here it is <laughs> let's see if it After works I streamed it for everyone here um, everyone you'll have a quality of it now I wonder Save if this it. will work okay <clears throat> here we go everyone Oh, Presenting, is... first of her name, Shield of the Kingdom, Captain and Founder of the Royal Library, Aegis of Knowledge, Wielder of the Discord, Banhammer, the ever-enduring Commander-in-Chief of every Night Legion of Academia, Defender of Peace, heir to the most ancient, noble and honorable House of Ferdinand, direct descendant of the revered Mestianora, wisdom made flesh, face of retribution, first sword of the monarchy, she who does not kneel, mother of freedom, empress of stories, the great chattering okay. magpie. <laughs> All right. Wow. Thank okay, you. we did. Good. We got it. Yay. <laughs> uh, thank you, Babbitt. Thank you, Navi. Thank you, all of you guys, for your creative endeavors. And <laughs> I know, I, I know, I always say like, oh, we're gonna limit the the soundboard, but I have a ton of fun with you guys uh, doing the things. Um, as long as you we don't. We did it at the right time, you know. <laughs> yeah. Um, so anyway, people in YouTube, thank you so much for joining us for this uh, chit chat. Goodness gracious, it took a long time, but I think it was worth it. Prepa people, this is our record. Mm -hmm. Prepa people, you are absolutely free to go and read prepub. Uh, I am going to go and take a long <laughs> nap. Uh, and yeah. Um, <laughs> 
Thank you guys. Again to the Kofi members on the screen. Um, those who have this asterisk, they're my precious Zentir members. Thank you for your support as always. And yeah, um, be on the lookout for further read-alongs uh, for part part five, volume eight read-alongs once. And two months, guys, two months. Oh gosh, that's gonna be the chit chat though. <laughs> no, but the read-alongs. <laughs> they'll be sometime next oh, week, I guess. Yeah. Or next should, week or starting this week? I don't know. Or should we skip volume eight's read-alongs? We should just take a break. What do you guys think? No. <laughs> no. Why don't, why don't you just release the pre-pub ones like week by week? Oh, the week um, by week ones. <laughs> oh, like uh, that I should uh, that I should show all the pre-pub ones that we've done. Yeah, like just re I, I don't know, just like recycle the content or something like that. I guess I could. Well, the pre-pub are made private. It's just that there we I like to read alongs and so on. So the the thing you, about you the could also do. We could also do Rita Runs with funny voices. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's, that's saying. So the thing about the the prepub, so instead of recording a chit chat with just light novel, is that there's a lot of people who are light novel only that want to participate either on the chat or on the voice chat. And they can't because they're if we just take material from the prepub chit chats, then we basically leave them out in the cold. So I want to be as inclusive as possible. Um, that's why we are recording this long chit chat, even though we really did do like eight separate pre pub chit chats earlier during like this book's five and a half release. hours. Yeah, so actually, yep. yeah, and these were like two hours each, right? Those were two hours each, but uh, there's also like a whole hour that's just dedicated to reading. Mm hmm, mm hmm. So, uh, more. So, so like, if you want to, if you want to have more bookworm stuff, I highly suggest you to link, uh, to click on the notification once subscribe, click on the notification and follow me on X, so you know exactly when we have. Um, actually, yeah, actually, we do our prepub, re uh, prepub chit chats fairly <laughs> regular. It's on Tuesdays. Every Tuesday we have a prepub chit chat, so you don't really need to be notified, but. It helps me a lot, you guys, when you click like on the on any any video you watch, if you subscribe, if you comment, really, it helps me so much. You have no idea. Um, so please do so and you will earn my love, I guess. You don't need to earn my love, but still, I don't know what else to say. You guys, I am <laughs> I'm getting delusional and dizzy from <laughs> tiredness. <laughs> all right I know. Oh, that is it's, a, it's a me problem i know it's a me problem i am a freaking like shy introvert so this 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 takes a lot of energy out of my battery okay oh, oh, this is energy so this is social energy and i'm like i'm melting in my chair right now <laughs> again everybody be scared of me rawr <laughs> right um <laughs> so be scared mm -hmm. uh yeah. We need to, since it's mine day and it's already been released, we need to do Quaff's prayer. Oh, okay. Oh, Time to do oh, Quaff prayer crazy, then. Crazy. crazy. crazy oh, God. <laughs> What's crazy? We need something to to basically <laughs> lock for donations. Crazy, can you like, do I, the, I think the chat should donate for the prayer. Crazy, can you please like do the prayer? <laughs> oh. Uh, oh, Quaff of Jane Novel Club, who praise gives us thousands upon thousands of words to consume. We give our prayers and gratitude to thee, and do take part on the chapters so graciously provided. <laughs> Send prayers to the God. Beautiful. So, <laughs> so all of the free pub peeps, get out of here and go read. I guess. Um, <laughs> Out of interest, Already has there. anybody has any, anybody tagged him and I show the prayer? I'm not gonna show I him. I don't know. I I, I can't. Well, I don't have I, Twitter, so I don't know. I, I I even if I had, well, I do have Twitter, but even if I could, I wouldn't. I'm too shy to do so. You guys, I no, I couldn't. I could never. <laughs> so, I could never do. That. I could well, never. He is a perfect human being. We can never torture him like this. <laughs> 
All right, you guys. I think it's the end of our chit chat. We're we're going on about randomness now, and let's leave the randomness the for the uh, Discord voice chat. You guys, we'll just probably end up talking about AIs and I don't yeah, know what else. <laughs> yeah. You guys, it's yeah. Been we need that. Mm? Mm. Uh, Oh, it's been so much fun. Uh, thank you so much for sticking with us throughout like this whole long, almost six hour, five and a half hour chit chat. It was, I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, we tried to keep on topic, but it's, sometimes it's just impossible. Um, to all the artists that did, um, that colored, uh, thank you so much. Uh, we have, of course, um, Alos, a little of something. We have Chianstas, uh, Chianstas 666, David Ochavillo, Noemi, and Rodrigo Igarza of Rayworks. I'm going to leave their links for those that have socials. I'm going to leave their links on the description. So you're going to have to add go, mine. Yes, please go and support them. Send me the stuff, girl. All right, I will everybody. send you. All right. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us. Say goodbye, gang. Bye. Bye, Bye gang. Bye until Bye. next time.